Good morning and welcome to day two of the Somerset National Champion and Champion Triples here at the Nino Bowling Club in the Indoor Complex in Wellington. In front of you there you will see the matches of which we are covering this morning. Our feature match this morning is the Wollstone Park of Canterbury up against Buckland of the County's Manukau Centre and Tyree of Dunedin up against Hara Park of Taranaki. And we'll then move on to the uh, Carlton Cornwall playing Martinborough and the Queenstown match versus Havelock North. And then, of course, this afternoon we move into the men's, the completion of men's section play here. And then, of course, into all the post section play here at 9 uh, tomorrow. So there's the, uh, you'll see there's the ladder. You'll see we've already got the qualifiers, a couple of qualifiers. Those being the Wellington side of Nina de Munich and Joe Edwards, the de Munich of Wellington, the Victoria Club, Joe Edwards from the Nelson Club, they've already qualified for post-section. Sitting on two wins is the Onirahi side, the team from Wollstone Park, who we're, we're uh, cover, covering this morning. Also, also on two wins is the uh, Carlton Cornwall side, they're unbeaten, and, that, and also that of the Waihopi side from uh, down south, deep down in Invercargill. Now, needing games to win, of course, well, most of these teams now, of course, they're really out of contention. Uh, I just want to go back to the... I want to see who we are. They've only got one win. I mean, my apologies, just read that wrong. So, of course, they won't be qualifying for post-section play. So the two games that we're covering this morning are those, of course, 
these other ones here we're looking at now, like Zatania Wheeler, Barbara Archer from uh, uh, from Dunedin, who they need it. Uh, they played 2 1 1. They, they really need to win to uh, to stay alive. So important for these, these sides. And of course, the Queenstown side and the Taranaki side. That they unfortunately they they can't make their way through into post-action play. So, all on for the Canterbury uh, side from Wollstone today, uh, and from the Buckland team from uh, County's Manukau Centre, along with the Barbara Archer skip t side from uh, uh, Tyree Upper Goon Christian Stamper of Taranaki. With me, I've got Dave Hewitt, and Dave will be bringing you bring all this live action throughout the day of both women's and men's. And let's hope that we uh, we have a good well, well certainly not going to have a rain interrupted day here, are we at uh, the indoor complex at nine a? And first end is underway, and we'll be covering both of you. You'll see on the split screen there's both of these games that we'll be covering. I'll hear through the mic in a moment. Who's who's uh, Mic'd up about what's what's going on, and the Tyree Hara Park game. Skip's now just uh, playing their their first end, and to me it looks like the Barbara Archer side. Silence in the meadows. May have been one two, Hara Park. I just need to check as well with that uh, Taranaki side from uh, the Hara Park side because uh, let's check who's actually, I think they've moved that team around, the playing order of that team. But we'll try and get hold of Steve Beal and we'll check that. So in the uh, Wollstone Park match, they have, uh, it's Wollstone Park who've got to wait. Wollstone Park side of Debbie Sanson skipping Debbie Salt at number two. Jackie Sutton leading up against the County's Manus car side. Diane Main skipping Kath Mitchie at number two Good and ballers. Liz Prattley the leading. And here is Wollstone Park scoring a two to open their account. On the backhand is the County's Manuka lead. I don't know what's going on down there. There's so, Wollstone Park. Oh, there lead Jackie Sutton. Just runs lower the jack as the, the bowl of the Buckland Bolt. Now the Wollstone Park number two. Debbie Salt with the blue bowls. These run sheets are quite handy, aren't they, David? Not very handy. And good morning, Kevin. As long as the information's right on them. <laughs> I uh, will check that Taranaki team, well, the Hara Park side, no, just just for my own mind to make sure that I, that uh, we've that, got that we've got that right. It, so, of course, Barbara Archer skipping a very very well known name, of course, uh, in the Tyree Club, and husband David, who's uh, represented uh, the Needham Centre for a number of years, has been president at Tyree, hard working. Uh, Hard-working man there at Tyree was uh, duly awarded his life membership uh, last week at the annual general meeting, and uh, I know, uh, you know well everyone around the, the bowling fraternity uh, all know uh, David Archer, and of course had a, his late brother Kevin, uh, very very prominent players uh, in the, in the Dunedin Centre, and uh, it's uh, always an honour, isn't it? To, uh, really, day to when one's accorded life membership for you, the work you've done, and it's a, a duly rewarded honour, isn't it? It is. And congratulations from me to Dave. 
He's uh, one of nature's gentlemen, is uh, David. We're one down to this one. And always, <coughs> always up for a bit of a social hour. <laughs> All part of it, isn't it? Absolutely. Gene Young, the number two for Barbara Archer. After Tyree scored a one on the first end, very, very, Gene, always, every time you get a Tyree, always makes you so welcome and uh, loves the bowls. And, you know, just, uh, well, Tyree is, uh, funny enough, is, is the club where we really started uh, all of the live streaming, actually. It was a very, Tamara and myself was the very Tyree headquarters for the Nationals, was the place of where we... <coughs> of uh, where we started the first live streaming and and Tyree always so uh, always so accommodating to you when you, you're there a very hospitable club and of course Bob Gibson the green Rob Gibson the greenkeeper there uh, you know, really nice track, iconic in the greenkeepers world and very very I think it's a first class club down there in Dunedin on and off the green so on the backhand is the number two, Gene Young, with the black bowls. You don't see very many black bowls. Don't see too many now. <laughs> yeah, they are a bit of a... So, here is the Gene Young bowl. Just going to go just out on the outside of the head, and it's the Hara Park side who are holding shot as we play in two of 15, of course, two-hour time limit. And as the skips change over and we look at now this the Wollstone Park v Buckland game from uh, Pukekohe. From, uh, Buckland's a little wee club just on the outskirts of uh, Pukekohe. The grass green there literally on the on the, on the southern aspects of just, just moving out through the middle of Pukekohe. And very, very nice little, uh, no, I'm not going to call it a country club at all, but it just sits on the outskirts of the growing Pukekohe. It's literally becoming a city now. Absolutely, isn't it? It's certainly spreading into the farm and oh, it is. There, there's, there's houses, just there's subdivisions of of quite significant sizes going up uh, regularly, all the time. They're going up uh, and on the outskirts. Of course, there's been the debate uh, for quite some time on that as well, Dave. Is that that you know that's meant that the loss of a number of that of that. Uh, Farmland that of uh, you know the growing lands of uh, Pukekohe, well known for yeah. the vegetables etc. that are grown in the market gardens there in Pukekohe. A lot of those have been golfed up or sold off. But you know, families who have been there for a, Indian families who have been there a long, long time have um, cashed up, yep. sold to developers, and, and uh, no, this uh, it's certainly it's a changing, it's, it's a changing area. Barbara Archer there, that, that looked, I don't know what shot that really was because you needed to, to draw the shot, needed to be outside. And we were talking about this uh, yesterday, about this steering of the bowl to get to, you know, to get to a position. And Christian Stamper, well-known name in Taranaki, looks to be on a good line, this bowl. As it comes down in towards the head, and this is going to count, I'd say, and will count. And by goodness, it's it. Three different colours. There, there is. All got black. They've all got black, black on them, haven't they? Yep. Uh, and, and I just wonder, Dave, of, of I'm talking about the Tyree team here. You know, are you complicating your, yourself by playing that hand, or are you better? to just follow where the Christian mm. stamper came from, where if you don't get the right target, you're still going to get reduction, aren't you? Yes. <coughs> Probably more confident on the hand they've tried. So? Although this is only the second hand, they may have found that one hand was more confident for them. A cool the well, lens. second shot, would, would I would say, if we write on what we think about the board, uh, would be handy, but the bowl hasn't come into hasn't come view. Into view. So, you know, I'd, well, that's three, isn't it? Yep. And indication is, of course, that is a three. 
looked like a three that they took out. It did, just the yes, way... Yes, so here's the signal. It, it, just the how those bowls, three. The, those bowls were situated to all. Wollstown Park versus Buckland. And, of course, you know, this is the game, of course, the Canterbury side. Wollstown, um, you know, they, they, uh, they certainly want this game to, uh, to qualify. And... The Wollstone Park Club has about uh, 60 members. And I personally, I've never been to Wollstone no, Park. No, have I. I've been to what was the old Wollstone Club, which is about to go under a real change there, a big development there. Many years ago, I went to the Wollstone Working Men's Club when we used to go to indoor bowls nationals. And that was a huge facility. They had a national league soccer club and... Correct, brass band. They had, yeah. the, the, you know, they had every, about every, seventy acres of land. They, well, so the, so what was the old Wollstone Bowling Club? Is at the back? It was at the back of there, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, we had. In fact, I remember it very. I remember it vividly because uh, the, the, the year I played down in the fours were won by uh, Morgan Moffat. And, uh, Morgan Moffat won the fours down there. It's a prominent and, name in the past. Wasn't yeah, it? <laughs> and. Uh, so the Wollstone Club uh, sort of wound up, and although it was aligned sort of to the Workingmen's Club. But not so what's happened now. The Canterbury Bowling Club have received their, their earthquake payout, I suppose you could yep. call it, or the insurance payout. And they're now moving to where the Wollstone Club used to be. And they're building a brand new complex there at Wollstone, which will most likely, every chance, will uh, encompass an indoor complex as well. Yep. And uh, I had Tom Taroa with me in one of the games we were doing. might have been the Bowls 3-5, actually. And it, it's a big development uh, going on. And the Earthworks is, is underway, has started. And what an absolute asset that, uh, that, that will be to have a multi-surface you know, a, a multi -surface yep. environment. Uh, and sure, it's going to be a few couple of years before it's completed. But, uh, yes, it's uh, underway. As I've said a couple of times this weekend in the broadcast, this facility is a great facility for Wellington. And if Canterbury are getting one like it, you're certainly, you're certainly richly rewarded. Oh, it's, it, absolutely. And, you know, we, um, you know, facilities now going forward, you know, with, with, it just helps you to have those multiple sort of conditions or surfaces because... Adverse weather and you know it just. Now, did you see Bowling Chance? They, have, they put that score up on that board down there for that Dunedin match. Yes, they have. I can see it there now. I think that the. No, I can't. There's a, there's a conversation in the middle of the rink. And so going down towards the board now. We should better see it in but a moment. And that's telling me. It's 4-0, but it wasn't Tyree that scored, was it? No, I thought it was Hara Park. So Who's did I. Well, we'll just see when the skips change over, who plays the first bowl, Dave, and that will, that will confirm it, won't it? And that's, that's, well... They were certainly the black disc bowls that scored, and according to our sheet, that should be uh, Hara Park. Well, Tyree played the last bowl there. So that being the case, we're going to see the Taranaki side mm. play the first bowl. There we go. So, 4 0 it is to the uh, Taranaki side, Hara Park side, who, of course, they can't qualify. No. Nope. <laughs> um, Two all in the Wollstone Buckland match. Also out in front of us here on the on the mat is the Taranaki skip from Hara Park. I, oh, oh bowls going wrong everywhere. Bias. I it's think that's the one. second time I've seen someone run across there this morning. Bowls going everywhere out there. <laughs> I just question, one of the things about playing on carpet, they said a bit of a dump there with the delivery of the bowl. 
There's no question, is there, on this, these surfaces, if you do that... Much, much more noticeable on these surfaces, because yeah. you hear them go bang as well. And you lose your weight and pretty quickly. your weight goes off immediately. Yeah, very quickly, doesn't it? So here's Barbara Archer, the Tyree player, on the mat, on her backhand. Looks to be down on the head, trying to encourage it into the shot bowl. Needing to get to the jack, not going to do so. It's definitely a black bowl, which is sitting... Almost right on the jack. Sitting locked on the top of the jack. And the Wollstone Park match. We'll just look at that scoreboard down in front of us here. And, and they're just changing that. It's an interesting way to throw the kitty. <laughs> interesting. And most times you see people deliver the kitty the same as the bowl. That was stand on the mat and... Legs apart and throw the kitty down from that there. That was it. Yeah, most interesting. So, Barbara Archer trying to get a tap onto the bowl, really, on her backhand. Trying to turn the bowl, her bowl, onto the shot bowl. Gets a movement of the jack. Is it going to come back far enough? No, it won't. That'll be a one on the way through to the uh, Taranaki side, to the Yahara Park side. And they've jumped away now to a 5-0 lead, and it is Buckland leading 3-2. And it's Buckland from County's Manukau over at Wollstone Park. And I see the lead for the Canterbury side, Jackie Sutton. Yes, that sounds right there, about purple bowl. So we've got that... We're I think we're right there now. Yep. Yep, and so. leading against her is Liz Prattley. I I just wonder. It's the white bowl, so... Yeah, I, 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 look, I don't know, but there was uh, a Liz Prattley that played for New Zealand. OK. In uh, years gone by from, uh, I think... From South Canterbury, but I, I'm only, you know, yeah. I've, I've got no idea. But I just there was a, a Liz Prattley that played in the era in the nineties. Uh, so on the backhand is Jackie Sutton, the Wollstone Park lead, got the bowl out on a nice arc, and. Will Julie be reward as it just creeps its way back towards the jack, go. touches, gets a touch on the jack, goes off the centre line, but you know, got the bowl away too. Oh no, the county's Manukau lady. It's Liz Prettley from County's Manukau, not yep. from yeah. So uh, I was going to say she's moved a long way. Yes, yeah, absolutely, way. mate. It, absolutely. So. On the backhand, trying to get past. Doesn't do so. So. Good opening bowls in the Hara Park Tyree match where, you know, his bowls are pretty much in the lead, of course, for the Tyree side. And Beth Brown was uh, featured very prominently in the, in the recent singles. She was... Uh, up at Hastings? Yeah, absolutely. She was there when the bells were ringing at the, at, at the finish. On the forehand, runner up to Tony Wheeler. Got a good bowl here, has the Tyree lead, just going to go by, sitting behind, the, sitting behind the jack, playing down in front of us here, but it would be the bowl in behind the head that is shot. As we see the Hara Park, number two, Alice Smales. That always coming back now. We'll just go by. The Hara Park, Tyree ends seem to be settling down much quicker than the other game. Which if you have a look at the screens. Yes, they do. They do. <coughs> and uh, when you do have those, uh, what I would call, wider scattered heads, it does become challenging. It does. <laughs> to uh, commentate and Jean Young's watching her bowl very closely 
as it breaks towards the head, is it going to get all the way in? No, it won't, because that particular head is uh, right outside our window he here. Just out for two along, and it's definitely the, you can see the white disc bowl, definitely was shot, was shot, and well played there from the Wilson part. Player to the Hara Park player. One down. You heard the call from the skip from Barbara Archer. On the backhand is the number two, Gene Young. See that expression on the face, really riding. Yeah. Just Look. before we started this morning, Kevin Jean approached me and asked me how my surname was spelt because she's got brothers and sisters called Hewitt. Oh, really? But we couldn't find a link. The surnames are spelt the same, but. Um, We'd have to go a long way back probably to find a crossover. Well, she's definitely drawn the shot for uh, her Tyree team. And you're right what you're saying. What I would sort of say, the, the scatter gun, because it is different between the Canterbury, Wollstone Park side and Counties Manukau from Buckland. They're sort of completely different head structures, aren't they? Yep. So, of course, today we have got... A couple of rounds of the women's section play and then we will be through into post section play and of course remembering we have already got two teams that have qualified in the women's that being the Nelson uh, side of Joe Edwards they've qualified as have the Wellington side uh, from uh, Victoria pa from Victoria with the skip Nina de Munich and Pretty good side that was inside. It's, it's very handy, yeah. And it's interesting, Kevin, that we commentated on those two sides that have qualified first game yesterday. Yeah, morning. Yesterday, yes, that's right. So, looking closely is well. If you're looking at the camera from our angle here, they look to have uh, definitely got the shot, haven't they? The Tyree team, it would it would appear. A lot of talking going on. There. A, lot of, a lot of alternatives being there's given. A lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of descriptions going on there. So, here's one thing I've got to say about here: when you're, um, when I play in here, I find it very difficult, unless the skip's actually looking up at me, or the, or the number three or whatever. To ah, hear what's good going ball on. here. It's a big long rink, and you've got to yell to be heard. At yeah, the other it's, end. it's just that. Uh, you can't be quietly spoken to. So the Hara Park side leading 5-0, pondering now on the mat, on the backhand. This is the Taranaki skip. And the we're on getting confused, my friend, is they're not black bowls, are they? They're not a black bowl, no. And I just wonder whether they've Possibly swung the team around a, 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 a wee bit. Well, this has got potential breaking towards the jack, has it not? And we'll get the jack and hand it. Well, we'll see there what the story is then now. It's interesting because they're out, they could have turned their team around, Kevin. It, absolutely. Uh, and because the other point, why I, I make the point, um, there is some. Um, there is some black bowls already up there. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, I it's interesting what happens when you turn your team around. We were talking last night during the commentary about the Taranaki Open. Yes. And I was saying that we went this year as a team and we struck two teams the last game on Wednesday and the last game on Thursday and they'd both just missed qualifying and they turned their teams around and had their lead skipping. And both of them beat us by one to stop us qualifying. <laughs> yeah, great tournament at the Taranaki Open, of course. Yep. Some very fond memories. And it was another one to the Taranaki side. Now, let's just see whether this... Who plays what colours over here? Absolutely. And to me, that's Christian Stamper, because I reckon she's going to be playing with black bowls. Yep.
and uh, certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Good weight, Lou. Does. Five nil now. The Taranaki side from Hara Park leading over the Tyree side three apiece. Mind you, it could also be our our secretary putting the wrong colours beside the bowls. <coughs> We'll check up with Mr. Beale shortly. <coughs> so, Harapak leading 6 0. Six shots in both games. One 6 0, the other well, three. Three apiece, correct. And you're right about the heads, though. Uh, as <coughs> That uh, there's certainly a, a, a difference, isn't there? Mm. So, Beth Brown knows he's not out wide enough. You held up all right, Beth. As we said yesterday, there's still, if they come under that centre line, they run away about a metre as. Just Immediately, don't they? Mm. Your weight was good there. So you heard the call, the weight was fine and I think our prediction might be right. <laughs> right so it's interesting. Dave is with these matches so far compared to what we saw like in so many of the matches yesterday that um, consistency to, to build heads a uh, good, good bowl here from the Taranaki number two Alice Mails but still still going by by that meeting it's imperative yep. now for the for the uh, Tyree side of course who need this game to, to win that they start Getting some bowls on the head, three apiece. Wollstone Park uh, versus Buckley. Remember, Wollstone Park had two wins uh, yesterday. And uh, Barbara just likes this bowl as it breaks in towards the head. And one would think that shot. And then indicating there, I'm saying, is uh, Pauline Kennedy to her number two, Alice Mails, just to take a bit of weight off or look to be how far is it going to come back towards the centre line we're certainly out on that wider side and there's plenty of room to draw isn't it Adrian? absolutely it well it looks like it on the screen doesn't it i just and again we're going underneath and about a meter across i i, I just deep breath you can see you can see that on the mat that uh jean young certainly she's really got determination to Endeavour to draw the shot and coming in between the bowls now and going to sit in behind the jack as they change over and just no one's building heads are they? Not Well they're trying to build heads but they're well spread aren't they? Well they certainly are, look at the rink next door to the Wollstone yeah. Park mm -hmm. Buckland match and you've got you know uh, one's got exactly the same haven't they and uh, you know six apiece Six nil, five ends, playing in five. Well, you know, really, you've got to start scoring soon, don't you? You do. And getting a little run on as well. So, and maybe it's an indication, Kevin. We did those two games yesterday morning, and they were pretty tight games. And both of those two teams that won them have now qualified. They have. Now, with the red bowls, which on my sheet says it's Pauline Kennedy. Paul Kennedy. How's, for, how's the weight going to run? No, not going to run enough here. Now, it's imperative for uh, Barbara Archer that they get a couple of shots on this end to open to open their account. And because the problem which is happening here for the for the uh, Dunedin side, 
trying to get into the head is a bit of a challenge, isn't it, with those those front bowls, Bob, and, and just looked as though Barbara Archer set that out on the wide wide path. How far those are going to come back? Working hard to get back, but well, got applause. It's always interesting, Kevin, when there's a bowl in the draw line, and your skip tells you to go round it. How often you hit it? Oh, it's and like, if you're aiming at it, you wouldn't get within a ball's rule. No, absolutely not. So, on the mat, picking, looking for the colour of bowls. Well, that's There's wrong. another one going another the wrong, one wrong way. They're going everywhere this morning. Wrong. That's three wrong biases <laughs> in, what, half an hour? <laughs> They're everywhere. Does my bowl count? Yep. Uh, well, there's an indication there for the Otago Dunedin side. So if Barbara Archer now just to draw inside her own accounts and, and opens her account, gives them, would give them three shots, which is just want to get underway, don't you? That's, yep, you that's, do. that's the key thing for three the three. Would be really handy for them at this stage. Well, it needs to slide it's all the way down cleanly. There it goes. And how, just a matter of how far low. Yeah, it's getting the From this angle, it counts. It certainly does. So we'll see. Down goes yeah, the, the one. And that, if that's the ca case, one would think it was three, correct? And it is it's three. It's three. So here we heard through, heard through the mic. Then I'm sure I heard. It was uh, four to the the, the Tyree. to the Tyrega. Now, quickly around the boards here, and we've got Oriwa, uh, the Oriwa side up against Havelock North. Five ends gone, and it's Oriwa who are leading 11-3, 11-3. Queenstown up against uh, Martinborough, and five ends gone, and it is Queenstown who are leading seven shots to uh, seven shots to three, seven three to Queenstown. Mount Monganui versus a Waihopo, and it is the Waihopo side who are leading by six shots to three. Patararu up against Carlton Cornwall, four ends gone there, and it is two apiece. And in the Parapararumi game up against uh, the Victoria side from Wellington, it is the uh, Wellingtonians who are leading their Kapiti Coast uh, counterparts by five shots to four. Now we're just getting Steve be able to get us some clarification on uh, Hara Park, Hara Hara Park playing order. Yeah, and oh, good opening Park, bowl yeah. here though from the uh, the uh, Barbara Archer side. Hara Park leading six four after six ends, but you, know, you score all of a sudden. Bit of you momentum. come on, you get a score, and you come on to touch. Good opening bowl to follow it up. So very, you know, very, you know, very quickly, Dave, and it's, it's opened the head up favourably for the Tyree side because short bowl down yep. on the other hand. The other way now. Um, just makes such a difference. It'll be around there. Looking at the other here, match, it looks to me it is. So that. Uh, just had it confirmed. Our guesswork, our, our Sherlock Holmes work. <laughs> They've sort of so just to confirm that the uh, Hara Park side has got Christian Stamper leading, Ella Smales at number two, and Pauline Kennedy is leading. Yeah, is she is skipping? skipping, sorry. Pauline Kennedy is skipping. So yeah, just just move that team around and straight away now the Tyree side have managed six four they're trailing, but just put a bit of pressure on and in the other match. It is uh, Wollstone Park who are trailing the Buckland side by three, four, four to three. But looking at the head, well, looking there now, it looks as though that's the the uh, the Wollstone Park side with the black stickers who are certainly holding a couple of shots. One would think. Uh, think so, yep. And remembering that Wollstone, well, both of those sides need to stay alive, and certainly the the Tyree side here. That's the uh, Barbara Archer skip side with Jean Young and Beth Brown. They certainly need it to stay alive. 
and trailing 6-4, but just starting to get some momentum in their match. But I should be disappointed with that gut bowl with Gene Young. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just it, it's somewhat frustrating to see the what I would say uh, the inconsistency or reluctance to really get your green. I, I just think you know playing on carpet. There's, there's, no, there's absolutely no excuse. If you look at this Wilson game, by the look of those decals, every bowl on what we're looking at on the left side of the head are under green. They've yeah. all come across, and here's another oh, one. Oh, what a bowl. The yeah, but it got the, yeah, well, moved the, the, the narrow bowl, trailed the jack to where the other narrow yeah. bowls were. <laughs> and it's really made it, uh, made it really, really difficult for the... Uh, for the Buckland side to try and get down there. Been around a long time, the little Buckland club just on the outskirts of Pukekohe. And whatever it was before, Dave, it's going to remain, isn't it? Or Oh, oh got it. Oh, got a slide. No, it's not. Not now. Uh, might still be a couple, I would say. to the uh, Wollstown Park side. Again, that bowl was under the head, but got a fortunate wick and ran back towards the head rather than away. Well, the number two for Barbara Archer, Jean Young, she adjusted with her, uh, with her last bowl and would have drawn it a counter. Looking closely down here now is the number two for the Canterbury side. Needs to get around, doesn't. So we'll see here what... Looks like she's holding five fingers. Well, there's a lot that's come out. Three have come out already. Barbara Archer, very short. That wick bowl looked like it was much closer than that, didn't it? Absolutely, it did. I suppose the good thing here with that short bowl, very short bowl of Barbara Archer, just makes it somewhat difficult for Pauline Kennedy of to get around and, and draw all the way back. But she's making a good attempt. Making a good effort at it. But won't have the weight, will it, to get all the way. It's a great attempt, though. That's a difficult shot, though, isn't it, to come with Great line. To get around that Barbara Archer short bowl. Yeah. Can afford a wee bit more weight and a wee bit more green, even. Oh, we'll see what that board does, but it looked quite a... In that d count. match, and changing the board now, you can see it down in front of you when it, on this end rink. Uh, you'll see what it does, uh, Dave, but it looked to be quite a number. <clears throat> So here's Barbara Archer with her second bowl. Certainly got the bowl out on the wide arc, but didn't have the weight with it. It's going to come up short. It's definitely the the need inside who are holding shot here. I can't read that green figure. Five four. That's what it looks like. 5-4 to uh, Wollstone. And here's a good ball here from the Taranaki side. And just... Oh, just got it. Didn't get the sit. Touch the ball. So, one would think then there's two. All but sat on the ball there. If it sat on the balls, would have made, um, made shot. So, it looks like. As we go to N7, we're going to be all locked up at six apiece. So the Tyree ladies, they've come back, haven't they? Starting to get on their game now, aren't they? They have. They had those few ends to start off with. They just couldn't get anything. But see, straight away, we go to the other game. Dave, straight away, we've seen the... Two bowls under the centre again. And and they're quite a way under the centre. And in two bowl triples, it's just... It's just paramount, isn't it, two bowl triples that you build the head from, you know, on on the arc of the, you know, drawing into the head, don't you? And there was nothing so more evident than that if those who were fortunate enough last week to uh, watch the the final of the uh, men's pairs from Tyree and the, the ability of the former Australian player, oh. uh, Lave Selby. <laughs> 
quite phenomenal, isn't he? Just such control. Well, and it's about agreeing, isn't it? It's about, mm. you know, confidence. Send the, send the bowl out, and uh, there's a nice bowl coming in here, though, from the... But again, it just looks... Just that bit shy on the green under, it's gone. It's free. Hmm? The green's free. Yeah, you're not wrong. Oh, I love your bowl, Beth. Yeah, so now we're starting to see the leading ability of Beth Brown, who, as we say, was through to the, who was with us in the latter stage or the final champion of champion singles. Christian Stamper now leading for the Taranaki side, well known player for many, many years in the Taranaki area, and of course, one of the strong advocates behind the Bolze Aotearoa and the annual tournament. Uh, won numerous tournaments uh, in uh, run, run, numerous titles, sorry, in Taranaki, and uh, I think uh, is uh, on or was or uh, on the board of uh, Bowls Taranaki as well. So nice ball catch, nice ball catch. Well, like that one out of the hand straight away. Beth Brown turned it back on that one straight away, and you can see why. Yeah, the, the, the Tyree lead, 5-4, Wollstone Park leading Buckland, 5-4, as we play in 7 of 15, and Harara Park of Taranaki, as we play in 7 of 15 as well, and it is Harara Park who are leading the Taranaki side by 6 shots to 4. We're nearly halfway through that Wollstone Park-Bucklands game, and you wouldn't say that they've really got... Uh to grips completely with that green yet, have they? No, they have not. They certainly haven't. They've been struggling to find any any consistency, really, what ha you haven't, from haven't here? they? That last ball, that... So, Gene uh, no, Young yeah, that asking that, that bar 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 And that, the shot bowl is that much. They haven't just commented up, they haven't yeah. got to grips with that green, the last bowl in, looks like the shot. It does. So here is Jean Young on her backhand. My oh goodness, that has to do a lot of work, one would think, to come back from there. I know it is drawing back, but it needs to come back. Well, it's come. Given back. Right the Boy, th that's come. That must be about size three. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big turn, isn't it? Because that came... Uh, yeah, that was out towards the puny, that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that... Uh, But one of the good, you know, the great things last week in those men's pairs, and, and, and we're going to see it, look at, you know, this complements as well, the, the surface, the green, I mean, that, those bowls, you send them out? Yep. Send them out, and you can see they're coming back to the centre line, aren't they? If you don't send them out, as you can see on the rink next door, you get nothing. You get nothing right? Take two feet off. Now, for Jean Brent, for, Jean, for uh, Jean Young, then, that last ball should give her the confidence. You just Do heard, it again to throw yeah, it out and let it, it come back. You just heard Barbara Arthur say, you know, look, you're only two feet out, so get it out there, let the ball work back, and it will do the work for you. And we've seen it with these last two balls. Now, here's a good yes, ball. Comes, this is well again. played. This yeah, is well ball. played. Brilliant. And that's, played. that's confidence. And and exact, taking the green. Exactly what we spoke about. Yep. Barbara Archer said to her, look, you know, you weren't, just take a wee bit off. And you know to draw around those bowls to the jack, uh, well that's and now of course got the advantage of a bowl as well, just in behind the head. Yep. So well played there by the number two, the Tyree number two, Gene Young. And sometimes those are just the confidence shots, aren't they? That can those are the sort of things that can say, get right, you going. Yeah, right. I've got this. I've got this yep. mastered. She's quite happy. <laughs> Can I say she's? Come down with a bit of a laugh with the skip, <laughs> and I, uh, perhaps to some players as well, uh, they, is there, it, they haven't they haven't got the confidence in the green or themselves. You know, and, and as you and I have both said, it was the same last weekend uh, down in in, uh, in Dunedin. Get the bowl out there, get the bowl out on the line, get it on the arc, and they'll come back. Yep. Oh, one to Wilson Park. One to uh, Wollstone Park now, I just heard that, so 
They jump out now. They are a 6-4 lead over the Buckland side of County's Manukau. Barbara Archer on the mat, on the back, on the backhand. And it also gives, you'd think it gives your skip as well confidence, but it doesn't do so. And, this one know, it hasn't, has it? She's taken a much tighter one. Yeah, and that's... You know, my, now I know Dave Archer, husband Dave, be sitting at home watching this. You just when you're talking to your wife again, <laughs> just tell her to let the get that bowl right out because you're going to get rewarded. Get the bowl right out, and it will. So we see here another one. Hello, we're off. We're off for another chase. <laughs> well, I've never seen. <laughs> I've never seen four in a. I've never seen so many in a, such a short space of time. You need a boundary rider out there. Well, we've had 15 ends <laughs> between the two games. We've had four wrong biases that I've seen. Yeah, you certainly need boundary riders out there. Now, Barbara Archer now, now this is a case of my view, was trying to steer down that line under the black to try and get to yep. where the, 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 the area is. And we clearly saw, saw with the bowls of Gene Young, <clears throat> excuse me, that... You know, send the bowl out. Now that bowl, both of her bowls came back a big distance to the jack, and that could just be that confidence boost as we see now in the Wollstone Park Buckland game. Two bowls literally it. right on the centre line. That's the first time we've seen that, isn't it? Really? Yep. So, checking to make sure it was uh, Pauline Kennedy that that ring was. Well, that's not going to come back. From there, one wouldn't think. So for the uh, the Tyree side, just going to check their board as well when that goes up. There it is, it's going up there now. Changing over the ends. And that was a bigger score than what we thought before because it is six apiece. And that's now, so now it's Tyree in front. Seven to six. You know, we, yep. we, you thought it was a big number, didn't you? Well, we, obviously they, from what we thought, wasn't quite it. And they, it's, they've adjusted it all now. And there you'll see now, it is Tyree, who have gone to the front by seven Beautiful. shots to six uh, over Hara Park. You see the board yep. down there. You confirm seven, six. It's uh, Tyree on the bottom. Uh, yes, it on, looks like seven, six. Uh, sitting on seven, seven, six. And it is Wollstone Park leading... 6-4. So, as we said early on, Kevin Tyree have now got started, got back into the game. They needed to because they were trailing at the start. Well, they were 6-0 down, weren't they? Mm. And it's just, it's this is where you start winning. This is... This is where you start, yeah. isn't yep. it? You know, and that's about getting that, that getting that consistency. As we said, if the leads start going well, then there's always pressure on the other side right from the start of the head. So Christian Stampert from the Harder Park side got the bolt out on a pretty wide arc there. See how far it comes back. Mm. You know, that came back a, you know, a long way, didn't it? And I, well, you just heard them talk. I just heard them talking through the microphones out there then. Um, oh, geez, it's, a bit, it's a big green out there. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty well, well, it is. And if you send the bowl out there on that green, you'll be rewarded. So, best uh, brown now. now and a couple of this years ago. probably the best head we've seen so far in the Wilson Park it Butler game. It certainly is. I came across Beth Brown a couple of years ago down here in Wellington at Wilton when she actually played the singles for Dunedin in the inter-centre. In and uh, I hadn't seen Beth Brown in action before and playing on the the very back green at, at Wilton or the furthest most green down the down back. Down the bottom. Down the bottom. Uh, and she was, uh, she was outstanding. She uh, played the green, obviously, just suited her on that yep. particular day. And uh, yeah. she was outstanding. You're right, dear uh, Dave. That's certainly the best head that we've seen in the uh, uh, Wollstone Park v Buckland match, isn't it? Much tighter head than there's been previously. So, 
here's now Christian Stamper and we'll see again so he'll get the bowl right out because that was really on a very wide arc wasn't it that first yeah. bowl here she is on the forehand getting that one numerous titles in Taranaki gets the bowl out on now one would think judging on the last bowl that this will be under the green yep. and Julie will finish outside uh, the centre line because that bowl came back a long way and you know, the good thing from the Walsh, from the uh, Tyree side is you can just draw around with confidence, can't you? You Come can on, see. Bro. So here is Jean Young, who we saw. Draw at, two big wide balls. Well, she got, the, she got the scoring underway for yep. Tyree, didn't she? With, with uh, getting the bowl out, got the big drawing bowl out there. And is it out? Needs to get past this front bowl. Can Will it do it so? Going to go right amidships. Going to get it right in the... Right in the middle. That was uh, exactly right in the middle, wasn't it? Bang. So, at least it's sitting jack level. So, and I think the other thing which I've noticed, David, I think that where players fall into traps is jack level bowls like that sitting there, they, they will so often try and steer down under the line to get to yep, the bowl. Yep, to get to the bowl or the well, jack with a well, bit of extra weight. If you're going to do that, you're going to play with a lot of weight to make sure that you hold yep. up to either the jack or the bowl because you can, I can see Beal up there giving instructions as well of where I can see the corner of the camera up there. And the danger is that you try to play with the, what I would call not enough weight under the line and you, you run into trouble now. Gene Young really to play this line it's the same line again, is it? Clean into her own bowl. She's got her own one. Got her own bowl. Well, now for me, for Barbara, Barbara Archer, I'd be playing with see where this bowl goes, but I'd be using my first bowl to actually have a real weighted shot to try and get to those shot bowls. Your bowls are safe on both sides of the head. Yep. And uh, in my view, while the port's there, and that's not going to reach the head, to me, while that's Quite it's in the port, there, though. Yes. Yes. Still there on the other hand, or even the, the swing, the swing down yes. through that port. But I just think sometimes that we 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 attend to. So oh, I'll try and draw that. Well, no, you just lodge it. Yeah. You've got yeah. two shots, yeah. and the opposition yeah. have to draw the shot, don't they? Yep. And, and they've if you got don't just lodge it, you can get the jack clean. Correct, correct. And there's bowls in front on both hands yep. to get down to that natural draw line to the jacks. 6-5 now, Wollstone Park of Canterbury, leading the Buckland side as they play in 9 of 15 from the county's Manuka centre. So we'll see what Barbara Archer, a Dunedin representative player. Why don't they call it Otago? I don't know. Why don't... It's one of the few that they don't, isn't it? Most of them. Yeah, I, I don't know why they... I'd rather... We've got North Otago, haven't we? We have North, South, Central. Yeah. Well, Maybe that's why. Too many Otagos. Playing the shot that we were talking about, but not with... The, the, you play feathery weight, Yep. you pay the price and knock another, knocked an opponent's bowl in, into the head. Well, both those Hara Park bowls that look like they're scoring have been knocked up by Tyree. Correct. That's been because you haven't had the weight, weight yeah. and green to get to where the you know the area is. The first one rolled the ball well short of the yep. head, and, and and that one there, in my view, Barbara should be going swooping right down there to the jack as fast as she can go. So Dave, you're at home. I know you'll be home watching your wife in action. Get a message to her quickly. Don't play feathery weight. That's the way all the way. Get, I think that looks like what Gene's calling. Make sure you're through there. Well, there's a natural line, isn't there, under the front bowl. If you're under that front line, Dave, you're literally at the jack, aren't you? So here is Barbara Archer. We'll see where that line's got it to. Just get that. And looking down, waiting for it to work past. Got the, well, got the feather. Two down. And the disappointing thing there, they're two down. And I'm no disrespect to the, to the Taranaki side, they didn't draw those two shots. No, so they both got knocked up. Didn't they? Now they've got a chance here to put a third one in. And they go to the front again, and the another end. end's gone. Yep. Something's disturbed her, she's walked off the mat. And you know, these are just, you, you know, 
to me. It's an easy game from where we're sitting, isn't it? Well, it is. It, 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 it is it, look, yeah, it's, I actually said to Marlene, my part, partner this morning, I said, you know, I, one of the challenges that, that I have in doing this job is the, the frustration. <laughs> so, uh, this one looks pretty well. Well, are they going well. to they they take advantage of it? Here. If they sit inside this pole, they will. Uh, might be fortuitous there, the Tyree side fell out the. No, it just it'll be, be the two. No sign of what it was. Come up here, about that much. Well, Barbara Archer, I see, just changing the board. So uh, you're right. It was, it was seven six, seven six to to the Tyree side. And I was very f in my infancy days of uh, of, of playing bowls. I was exceptionally. Playing here in New Zealand, I was exceptionally fortunate. Uh, I was taken under the wing and coached by, uh, in my view, one of the greats of playing for New Zealand, John, John Murder, yep. from uh, the Paratuti Club, of course, represented New Zealand, and was a New Zealand woman's coach for a number of years. And then, of course, when I lived in Australia, lived in Melbourne, I was fortunate enough to play pennant bowls under the tutelage and play alongside uh, the great... Uh, late Dennis Dalton, who represented Australia for a, a, a number of years, and uh, certainly you, you, myself personally, never had anything like the ability that those guys actually that had on the green. But it just certainly you, you learn a lot. Yep. And John Murray used to do a lot around the country too, didn't he? he ran schools of excellence for a long time. No, I did. Yeah, you know, we were very fortunate playing. We were playing in uh, Taranaki. That John was there. Then I also had the, when I moved to Auckland, I had the, yeah, the well, the privilege really, of uh, being able to play uh, at Okahu Bay, which is now long, no longer operating. When you know we had, uh, we had a, just an outstanding you know, Nick Unkovich, Rowan Brassy, Peter Thorne, Barry Greer, Doug Richards, Jolly, Ross Hearsnate. You know, all yep. all in the in that one the one little Did Danny O'Connor play there? Danny, the of course, well? yeah. Danny was one of the legends of uh, yep. Richard Gervin. He, uh, yep. uh, he he was started his bowls at at the bay, and now where I live in Auckland, um, look directly over the top of the Kahu Bay, uh, weed green now. It's just clubhouse is still there. Yep. But the great club of what it was is now. Uh, no longer. For a long time, there was another club under the motorway you could view in Auckland, wasn't there? The Carlton. Carlton. Carlton Club was under the... And they, they have now became moved... Became derelict. They are now with Gormal. Yeah, they've moved just up the road. And uh, sadly, the, the, the as you go across the motorway, the southern motorway across there at Newmarket, um, the, 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 what was the old Carlton, Carlton site has never really been fully developed into anything that I would call of... Yeah, yeah, just nothing two, really. Right? There's you just beat those ones. The car, we're caught in a base now, though, in the, uh, you know, in the, in the... Oh, it's a beautiful environment Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You know, picturesque, three greens there. There's the price have been paid here by Gene Young. There's a very nice bowl in there. Yeah, yeah the behind the jack there, getting applause. Wollstone Park leading 6-5. And... We play the the back end of the game. All of a sudden, it's uh, tightened up. In so far as well, the scoreboard's tight, and plus the the bowls on the head, and the it's also tightened up. Your weight to, was good. So you, you might have heard Bev uh, Art saying then, Barbara Archer saying the weight was good. So Gene Young. Well, certainly we know from pre the last couple of events that her bowl will draw, draw from, back, yep. from out there. How far is the running? How far is the oh, running yeah, going to be? Gets, pretty well again. Gets applause and Jack, Jack Lever when looking out the window here. Uh, looking out, I can see Barbara Archer looking at the head. Just from our angle on here, it looks like shot, though, doesn't it? Does, it? The, yeah. the, the black bowl. Measure. Okay, okay. You can see the last in Hara Park increased their score by two, and they were probably the two knocked up bowls. Yes, absolutely. 
Well you look down there, very, well, oh, very close measure. measures down there. And I see the Buckland lady, you see that of uh, Liz Prattley has got the mat already. Of course, Wollstone Park, one, two, uh, Wollstone Park. They jump out to a seven, five lead. They need this game to stay alive. I was interested, Kevin, in watching a bit of the um, Australian Open. Yes. And the umpires using laser yeah, measures. Look, it's funny you say that, Dave. There's been, there's been a lot of debate in Australia over the umpires' um, yep. uh, measuring apparatus. And there's, uh, there's all sorts of options, varieties, which they've got. And, yeah... I thought it was a very slow process. I, I thought it was a it very up, slow process. Yeah. So the question I'm going to ask then is if... So if you're playing a time limit game yep. and you call the umpire, in the time that those... That Into setting taking, that up, yep. Who, how does that then get adjusted? Yeah, well, it doesn't, does it? No, well, you know... It's the end of that, yeah. So it's got, in my viewpoint... The umpires are there to adjudicate, not to... I just thought it was very cumbersome. Here we go. Updates from around the green. I'll just remind it. I've got to get hold of Chris Leaf today from the Musgrove Hills Club in Australia. He's so here we go. The Oriwa match. Uh, they're up against Havelock North. And the last time we, uh, we looked at it, it was uh, Oriwa leading 11-3. Well, that's tightened up now after nine ends, and it's Oriwa now leading 12 shots to nine. In the match between Queenstown and Martinborough, that's O'Connor versus Tania Wheeler. Well, it's the Queenstown side, who didn't have the best of days yesterday, but have jumped out to a handy lead and are leading now by 10-5 after nine. All very close in the Mount Monganui uh, Waihopi game, where... It is 8-7, eight, 8-7 seven, eight, seven to the deep south after nine ends. It's a very tight encounter there. Carlton Cornwall up against Patara. Remember, the Carlton Cornwall won both of their games yesterday. But they're now behind 6-3 after seven ends. That's the Karen Hema skip side. And, boy, that Wellington side are just continuing. Victoria heading for their fourth win. They're continuing that march, aren't they? 13-6. 13-6 after 10. Remembering, of course, they've already qualified. And Paraprem needed to stay alive well, for the last one yesterday. The, I, I'm, it's not looking good for them, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> so it was the Taranaki side that scored, now leading 8-7. 8-7 at 9 of 15. Wollstone Park leading Buckland from County's Manukau. Seven shots to five. Applause there for all the good bowl. Wolston Park and a very one of their kind members this morning um, dropped some information here. And uh, well, you know, they've got a interesting their team includes uh, the here as the president, secretary and the selector. Yeah. <laughs> so and a good, you know. It's interesting. We're now at in in 10. All of a sudden, we've the seen... The are getting much tighter. They are, aren't they? Because yep. earlier on, they were struggling to get really any consistency around the around their head, weren't they? But uh, they certainly, in these last few ends, uh, have got the feel of the green. Got the, you know, it's... Does the... With the new surface, it, Dave, does the... Uh, as the sun... Because the great thing about this complex is, yes, it can be cold... But it also gets lots of sun, doesn't it? You yep. know, when the sun comes out, it gets lots of sun. Yep. Does Which can make it quite difficult looking if you go in the, into the yes, sun. It's yes, yes. Well, I can remember one year here at the... Oh, the photo just the outside the window there of the, the uh, bowls. BPL. The, the Yeah, when it was played Premier here. League. And we had, they had to put shadings around yep. at, at the windows. Now, part of that shading's good bowl there by Beth Brown. And part of that shading as well, thank you to the TV crews and that that were here, because it was very difficult to film and get good graphics on because of the, the glare that was yep. coming in. But also, 
for the skip's point of view as well, it was also at certain times of the day quite quite difficult. Quite difficult, yes. But does now with the new surface that, that we've got here now, uh, does the speed change as you know, like the the dew from the outside goes in the morning, the day, you know, the day heats up and we're getting plenty of heat comes out of the. You know, I, I the haven't heard any comment from the players. The only time I've played on this new carpet is on reasonably cold days. Right. And we're playing at the Wellington uh, Centre Winter no, no, League on a Wednesday that. morning from 10 to a quarter to one. And there doesn't seem to be much change, but there's not much change in the temperature during this period of the year either. It's bloody cold. That was a big jump. I'm going to say they've taken off again. Yeah. Those... Those uh, two bowls played up by Tyree for Hara Park have given Hara Park the incentive to get going again. They have. Well, it's given... Yeah, it has, because... Because Tyree from leading 7-6 and now four behind. Yeah, and that... And two of those shots were given to them. Yep. So, Beth Brown, though, has played two good bowls to open up here for the Tyree uh, combination. And the ball here looks for going to stay on that wider side, goes outside. It's definitely the Tari bowl, which is shot. And, of course, for Gene Young here, the Tari number two, a touch on, any touch on the jack on the draw is advantageous to the Tari side because the bowl of, of uh, Beth Browns is just sitting there. Got just under 50 minutes left on the time clock, which is out in front of us here. And... They only need to get a move on. 48 minutes, yep. They've both got five ends after this, haven't they? Yeah, so... Yep. Mind you, two bowl triples and pairs are probably the quickest quickest games to get through, aren't they? Yeah, two bowl triples is... Uh, well, I reckon it's great. It's uh, far more... Well, it's far more of a game, so to speak, than the old nine bowl triple scenario, you know, yep. where and it's amazing the difference that three bowls can make, isn't it, on a yeah. you know, and it just quickens the game up and also changes the shot selections around as well. Uh, it also changes what I would say, the gambling environment of trying to score shots because it's just a different game than the old nine bowl triples, isn't it? It's interesting. I know one of the clubs here in Wellington play three bowl triples. Still and do. Their, and then their winners come through to play two bowl triples at the centre champ of champs. And guess what? They're our representatives in the men this year. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Well, there you go. It defies all. <laughs> uh, I, I just think, well, I just think, as a, as a, I just enjoy it. As, as a match, I used to do two bowl triples, always enjoyed. Now, Wollstone Park, of course, who need this. Little tidy little buffer there yep, now, absolutely. isn't it? Eleven five, and and for the the Tyree girls, they're holding on to two here. They ideally now, Barbara Archer, they'd like to hold them to three shots here, isn't it? Then they definitely need to get back onto their onto the game, and two or three would be very handy. Because then you're going, you're literally at a nil all position, starting at the back ends, aren't you? Those last four or five ends. So Wollstone Park just got a well. It's interesting, as we saw the heads tighten up, we saw yep. Wollstone Walsh, Park able uh, to take advantage of that as you watch Pauline Kennedy on the mat. It's certainly... Oh, that looks a hard shot to play there, uh, really. Dave, doesn't it, to get to the... The backhand's got a lot of swing, but... It though, has, but to get to the angle, jack... Front bowls look too close to get round. Yeah, absolutely, you know, you, you just think, looking at that angle, to drop around the black and the pink, it would just be a bit of a challenge. So here's Barbara Archer now playing what that I would call... She Young looked like she was pointing to push those up. I think that's dangerous with, a, yeah, with so one of each colour there. So do I. Because the pink one's not theirs. I'd rather than see out on the wider She's side, the other which, way, yeah. which, which Barbara Archer's done, won't come back enough. I'd say if you're going to do, do that, uh, I'd allow the, let the opposition do it. Just looking at that head, it might be that she was calling to cover because they could push that up, because those are three black disc bolts they are. that she's just gone round to. So Kennedy, this playing skip, and this changed around the Hara Park side, changed around on the backhand. Oh, 
she's she's signalling to it. And so it and she's wide. Yeah, uh, and really was playing with weight to get to yep. the front, but wasn't she? So now, important hit for Barbara Archer. Draw another shot, and all of a sudden that scoreboard again tightens it's up. Be very close again, won't it? And you've got a few ends left to the Tyree ladies. Well, looks a bit big, doesn't it? How far is it going to come back? That's the big thing. Coming back now, though, sits inside this. You'd think it would count. Got applause. If it counts, it's got to be a forward, isn't it? Two. Just two, two they two. said, did they? Yeah, yep. 11-9 to Tari. So it will be uh, Beth Brown to lead off now for the Tari side. And at this part of this point of the game... You're the one, Beth, who's going to... Have to set it up. You, absolutely. You know, we're at... Uh, we're playing the 10th. We know we've got 45, 43 minutes uh, left. And so now's the time where you've got to take control off the front, don't you? Yep. So Jack's been delivered. And, of course, later on today, we will... Ha well, we'll have... One more round of women here, and then we'll be uh, into uh, the men. Of course, some of those played two yesterday, some played three, and at the completion of play today, uh, we will have all the qualifiers for the post-section play, which will get underway here at... Uh, well, last week we got a, we got a sleep, got a sleep in. at 9 o'clock. Yeah, we did. We got a sleep in in Dunedin. Uh, 8 o'clock start, which we've been traditionally used to. 11-5, Wolston leading Buckland of Counties. And, and again, it looks like the... Not Buck a bad starter in the uh, Tyree. Yeah, tyree looking like the... the um, Counties Manukau. Looks as though they're holding shot. Yeah, you're right today. Those are the opening bowls that uh, just start to set your head up, don't they? In yep. behind the head, on literally on the centre line. But you would notice there how far bowl that, low. you know, it's only a bowl low. So that bowl of uh, that, that that bowl of Christian Stamper leading, it's come back along. Yep. And the biggest thing here for Beth Brown is, don't try and look inside the bowl. Look outside the bowl. Let it work back. You know. To, because the minute you try and do the other way, you can guarantee that it'll finish under the head. And again, something must have distracted her because she walked off the head and comes back and starts a pre-shot routine again. Turns the bowl over and off she goes. So the Dunedin singles player on that forehead and has got the bowl out on a nice arc, nice arc out there, Dave. That'll... Yeah, that's so got good weight. This is going to come back well under. from where yep. that. This is a good bowl here from to the uh, Tyree lead, yeah, and that yeah. looked good all the way, it didn't did. it? Yeah. Uh, from uh, the time it left her hand was certainly on the. And, and, and Christian Stamper, uh, the Taranaki lead, has been pretty consistent as well, but you know, being a very, very experienced player that she is, and let's say of the more mature model of player. Uh, <laughs> Knows that you, if you don't take green, you're not going to score. You're not going to score shots, and you can see Stamper's got the bowl out on that wider draw line. A bit shy, a bit on the shy of there. weight, but it makes no difference to the Tyree side of where they can play. I like it there. Yes, I, th I agree with you, Barb. I just think that seems no, to have that, that big turn back out there. Big kind. I don't think there's any need for you to change your hand, Gene. You've got a night. If you're in here. between the port of the two black bowls, <laughs> you're close to the centre line and the counter, aren't you? Well, Gene's played a lot of bowls out that side that have come back on the big hand. They have. They've, they've got a big swoop. Oh, checking. Checking the bowl. <laughs> Inside, outside, just checking the little ring. So have had one for a few ends, haven't No, we? it's been quiet. Now, I don't know with her bowl, is that wide enough? No, it's not going to be. And then, Hasn't got the weight either. No, but to me, that's more about your own confidence yep. than she was tentative. Yeah, there's nothing to be tentative about, is there? You know, just no, no, absolutely. It's interesting, though. I play three in that winter league I was talking about. And the number of times I go down to the head and think, that's not how I thought it was from the other <laughs> end. 
Good response here from the Taranaki side from the number two. Uh, Tim Smiles need a couple of rolls. Now we might see a change. Yeah, might see a change of hand. Well, you know, looking earlier at the Gene Young bowls, you would think that she's got the ability to draw around that bowl, or even if she did come under down that line and finish inside that pink bowl of the number two of Alice Mayles, that's fine. But again, as you said, I question the weight, though, coming down that line. And needs to be inside, not, not bad, outside. Actually. More than likely, didn't have bad. Needed another couple of rolls of weight, yep. didn't it, to be inside? She there. had the option too of coming wide around that. Absolutely, front, front absolutely. So Alice Miles will endeavour to try and adjust. Is that very, very tight match here now? Eleven six. It is Wollstone Park of Canterbury leading Buckland of Counties Manukau. And urging the bowl on, no. Not. So really for Barbara Archer, you would think it's a drawing right down past the front. Yep, I would think so. Uh, you could get inside it, get a, a count or outside it. If, you, if you're outside it, finish it in the triangle there. Uh, one would think you're definitely going to count, yep. aren't you? But don't want to touch any of their bowls. That's already happened in this game and cost And the option of going wide here, to get originally aiming to go round, is if you are a bit narrow, you can still come inside those two pink bowls. You can get well. inside the pink bowls on dead draw weight and you're still counting, aren't you? And in doing that as well, of course, it also it does cut the line off for uh, Pauline Kennedy. So here is Barbara Archer, the Tyree skip. She's out on that forehand side. Uh, been delivered out on that forehand trailing 11 9. Now that looked a good line out of the hand, Dave. Looked a good either. line out of the hand. Was narrow, got the uh, pink bowls uh, and probably scored. Wasn't far away though. No, no. Just hit that front one as we said. If you aim at it, you'd probably miss it. But That's correct. Trying to get round it. So Paul and Kennedy endeavouring to. Draw on the backhand past those front bowls to get drop in towards the the head. So on the backhand, and how's the weight? I just questioned that weight. Looks I'm sure, it, yeah, very light on weight. Wow. Well, that doesn't really affect the too greatly the. Tyree, yeah, you, I heard. Yeah, don't don't worry about that bowl. No, round it. If she's, if she's round it, uh, Barbara Arch will definitely score. If she's inside it, she yeah. can get another turn on the bowl. And if she hits it, she'd be unlucky to lose the shot because it should rest on that front one. Well, the biggest thing for the Tyree team here is don't steer the bowl to try and finish it somewhere because that's just going to, you know, make life challenging for you. So here is Archer. The new first-time grandmother. Well, got it out on that wider arc, as we spoke about, Dave. And just yep. So how far is it going to come back? And you know, Gene at, Young's giving a little clap, but it has, there it is. Yeah. It's down the back. Just came across the bottom of the screen and went out of sight again. So this becomes, in the context of the game, this uh, becomes a pretty big bowl, doesn't it? Very big bowl, doesn't it? Because this sort of um, decides... Whether we're all square or one behind, or Pauline Kennedy was certainly wanting to be. Certainly had no weight with the first bowl, and oh, that line. It's narrowed, isn't it? That oh, line it's... is the chance of getting one of the other. The, the, uh, oh. Well, well, that well may have worked. And let... She got a great result there, didn't she? It's two to somebody, but who? The back two? Well, Bev Brown. Tori, Tori's got the mat. I got the mat. Two, so those two back balls must have counted. So if that's the case, we'll see that board change and we're all locked up with 35 minutes le left on the clock as we play 11 of 15. And you can see that board down there being changed. Gene Young's on the 11, I can see. And you're right, 11, 11, 11. Yep. All, all the 11s. And 11, 6, it is Wollstone Park of Christ, of Canterbury. 
That's the Wollstone Park side skipped by Debbie Sansom and leading Diane Main of Buckland of the County's Manukau Centre by 11 shots to 6. And as you rightly said before, Dave, they've sort of tightened things up a bit, haven't they, and yep. on the head and that. So, Pest Brown, runner-up a few weeks ago in the uh, Champion of Champions singles. Yeah, I think the last few wins she's been very consistent with her play. Here she comes yeah, again. Her to skip say good start, Beth. Yeah, well, she, she's getting it. So, so it was not... My apologies. was a beaten semi-finalist was Beth Brown. The, the two finalists in the Women's Champion and Champion singles were, of course, Tania Wheeler of Martinborough and Linda Ralph, Linda Ralph of, of, Carlton of, Cornwall. of Carlton Cornwall. Was that, was my apologies, but Beth Brown was in the, in the, in the semi-final. Good opening bowl there from Christian Stamper. By goodness, that actually went sideways. Yep. It wouldn't have got parallel to the jack, didn't it? But still plenty of room, though, on that forehand side under the jack level bowl. And here's some scores coming through now. And so the match between Havelock North and Oriwa. Oh boy, that's all tightened up now. And it is Havelock North who are leading by 13 shots to 12. 13-12 with 12 of 15 well gone. That's a big turnaround. That's a big turnaround. In the Queenstown Martinborough game, and again, another big turnaround because our last turn at uh, N9, it was Queenstown leading by 10 to 5, and now after 12, it is Martinborough who are leading 13 10. Yep. It's the Tania Wheeler side. So uh, a, a big turnaround there. Mount Monganui, yeah, well, I hope he, hope I well. That's been really tight all the way, and it is Mount Monganui who are leading by 14 13, 14 13 after 12. And the, uh, the Victoria team from Wellington, well, they've only scored the one shot over the last couple of events, but they are leading the uh, Parapara Umu side by 14 shots to 8. And in the Carlton Cornwall v Pataru game, at 9 ends gone, and it is Pataru who are leading. Uh, after nine ends played by eight shots to six. So, fair to say, I think the Victoria game is, uh, I'd say that's in the bag. Looks like it, and Parapram need it, I believe. But the others, there's another three to Wollstone Park now. So that puts the, that'll put that uh, right out in front of us here. And if that's the case, that takes in to... 14, 14, 6, well, you'd just have put, about put them in the... Yeah, the, you would, yep. Yeah, you'd put them in the run home, so Wollstone uh, Park of Canterbury will go into this uh, next round here. Um, they're still alive, and Victoria continue on their winning way. Joe Edwards' side, the Nelson side, they've already qualified. They didn't have to play at their last round. So we'll very quickly after this next round have an idea of They were due who's to play in, their neighbours from Blenheim as well, so they've probably played them heaps of times before. <laughs> Going for the jack here is the Taranaki side. Just ran by into the bowl of the uh, that bowl of Alice Smales. And Victoria playing now for their fourth win, so they won't have to they won't have to hang around for the last game. They'll get a break. No, they've looked good, the Victoria they side. Have, yep. Look very good. Jean Young on her backhand. Well, the Nelson side, the Joe Edwards side, and the De Munich side have uh, they've looked very, very good from bowl one right, right through. Yep. Now done it again. Has just shy. Not quite. Measure is the call. Eleven apiece. Now, if you're calling that from here, you'd say that. The Tyree side blue one in the front would be shot. Absolutely. Well, it's a straight line to the jack, isn't it? You yeah. think? <laughs> but they're calling it a measure, so yeah, I, another the, pink the, ball that's gone under the head. So, you know, really, for, for uh, Barbara Archie here, when they change over, I know you can look and look and look at it, Barb, but you know, the, the simple philosophy is if you get one turn on the. Oops. Oh, Sorry. Hope that wasn't the bowl in the measure. 
and it was sitting up. Oh, guns at dawn. <laughs> well, it's really a matter for Barbara Archer to get to the jack level bowl, isn't it? Get it. As she draws inside that jack level bowl, the, the Tyree skip that would think you've definitely got shot, wouldn't yep. you? I think she has to play it down her forehand side this time. Those two black disc bowls sitting out there don't need to run very far. No, they, they don't. don't. That before. So 14 6 now to Wollstone over Buckland as they play in 13. So it's uh, ironical that they, they, they're actually one end ahead. They're clearly one end ahead in the Wollstone match. So here is now Barbara Archer, the Tyree Skip. Waiting for a bowl on the next rink to go by. There it is. So Archer now will be on her backhand. I just think she's lying out the backhand, isn't she? Yes, she well, is. initially I thought she was looking at the forehand mm. to start with. But, well... How's that line to the front? Because it's not going to get to where we said needs to get to the front bowls and get a turn. And that's really the weight that was being played, you'd think. The weight wasn't too bad, yeah. but she, I think she was scared of hitting those black bowls, those black disc bowls up. And hence oh. why she played it narrow. Think narrow, you are narrow. Correct. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like last night when I was doing the last game, while we were... A couple of players waving to their bowls, and I mentioned in the commentary, I've never seen bowls change their direction by being waved to or talked to. Absolutely not. And if ever there is a set that does, please give me one. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, just, that's the line exactly where, where we see Gene Young standing there. That's certainly the line, and, you know, it's about the old visualisation thing. Now, now, Barbara, you should know this because you've spent many a time with your good friends down there, Mike Kernahan. This seems to be out on that wider arc and it's about visualising yep. where that arc is and deliver the bowl to it, let it work. Needs to get to the jack level bowl, goes she's by. Through the gap, she's going like Playing with that weight thinks that she's down. But as you rightly say, looking from where we're sitting here, um, one would think it was the Tyree side holding shot. So, but with the weight she played those two, that might not be the case. That's correct, because that definitely had uh, weight to reach, didn't it, for sure. So here is now Pauline Kennedy, the skip for the Hara Park side from Taranaki. And I don't know, well, we'll see. Just looked out of the hand. No, that's on a good, that's on a it's good arc. Of grass, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to go by. It's not going to draw him ahead. That. So now we'll see. I think we're going to measure that bowl that got kicked. Oh. <laughs> nope. Well. Been decided. One, two. Tyree. Nope, no, no, higher apart. No. So that weight was required, wasn't it, to Correct. try and it move was, that, yep. that shot ball? Well, Taranaki side really now. Sure, 26 minutes to go. We go into end 12. They have got to score this end. We're going into end 13 because that score hasn't changed yeah. up yet, yep. has it? No, it hasn't. No, no, it hasn't. So, so Tyree have to score really this end, don't they? They do. Yep. They need to score at least two of the three ends. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just that psychological thing, isn't it? Of, uh, yep. No one likes to be chasing on that last end or penultimate end, do they? That. Yeah, what's the situation? How many down? Which, which is ours? Lots of questions coming from the skip standing on the mat.
Good bog coming in here if it gets clean to the jaw. Oh. Home one taken out, I think. White just taken out. Well, the, uh, thanks. Uh, I just got a note from a good, my, a good Taranaki man from the Paratuti Club, Alan Batley. And uh, yeah, mate, let's hope this afternoon that uh, those two gobble boys can uh, do the do the job against the uh, those Vogel Town Park terrors and uh, two gobble win their way through. And Hamish Cuppy, he's won the para, he won the Paratudu triples, obviously. And he actually beat Alan Batley, who was the selector. Yep. And uh, Hamish Carpey's down here playing in the Taranaki side. Uh, well, he beat my mate on, on the last bowl to go through. To <laughs> so good to hear from you, Alan, uh, uh, Alan Batley, selector of uh, the uh, Taranaki side. And uh, winner of the, uh, you played a lot of bowls with Brian Baldwin. And uh, that's a great job down there uh, in the Naki. I think Walsh might have just picked up a four then. Well, uh, three. Set, well, no nope, four. Eighteen six. Yeah, two well, ends to play. We, we've got a winner there, haven't we? I think that last bowl, Kevin, that you thought was a good bowl, actually changed it from one down to four down. Oh, to turn the bowl out. Turn the own bowl out. Oh. Right. So right. this now becomes for the. For the Tyree side. So here is Beth Brown. We see Neil Dalrymple. Oh, good on you, Neil. He's getting ready for the Neil, of course, about to be the new newly crowned CEO of uh, Will Bowls. Good bowl here from Brown. Well Not there. quite going to touch. And of course, over in the UK now is Neil in preparation for the Commonwealth Games and Will Bowls meetings. But uh, having to get on to and f uh, it's St Andrews today for the second day of the British Open. Oh, okay, <laughs> yep. And was able to watch all the live action then. Hope you enjoyed it, Neil. And once again, congratulations to Neil Dalrymple on the his appointment as uh, CEO of World Bowls, who took over from Gary Smith, who's been there for a number of years, and done a lot for the sport. But, uh, uh, well, Neil Dalrymple, to me, uh, he's, he's right man at the right time, is what I'll say. And Aussie, I think, have been the leaders of new developments and pressing the game forward over the last 10 years, haven't they, really? Well, I think, to be fair as well, uh, and say, you're right, David, in saying that now that we've got, what I would say, some strong representation in, in the World Bowls board with Brett O'Reilly, former Wellingtonian, yep. of course, now on the board, and uh, Daryl Clout out of Australia. Um, oh, good ball coming here from the Taranaki side here. Gets a front toucher. That's going to take... That's the shot... And very delighted was that was Pauline Kennedy, and that's the shots that the Tyrese side don't need right now. Isn't Correct. It? Yep. So yeah, yeah, I just think there's some of the the sort of much needed change of faces on the board of the yep. administration of, of World Bowls uh, that New Zealand and Australia are, are going to bear positive fruit out of that uh, that change, and you know, I'm sure that with Brett and with Neil Dalrymple and the astute management we've got Bowls New Zealand with uh, Mark Cameron in the side and some of the innovations of change that Bowls New Zealand have brought about in playing formats etc yep. the likes of Bowls 3-5 that um, there's uh, it will start to bear fruit yes it has and I'm sure that that there's no way that Australia are going to, uh, I'll say, hog all the events. They will be, we'll, we'll get, we'll get the advantage of it. And also, I think another uh, important aspect of this move, and I've been involved in some discussions in this day, is for the likes of uh, uh, Samoa, Tonga, Fiji, you know, the, the uh, Polynesian, the, the, the islands, whereby, of course, 
you know, especially in certain parts of New Zealand, we've got a high number of those people playing yep. from from uh, from the island, and uh, with having our own, it now becomes more part of the sport rather than they were looked as a sort of far away environment. And uh, and I do know that World Bowls. Uh, for those Pacific countries are certainly keen to do something to help to develop not just players but also facilities as, as, as well and you know if you remember years gone by um, uh, New Zealand Fiji uh, as international matches was, was quite a common occurrence you know we used to play Fiji yep. in, in international events and we we have become a wee bit limited in our international outings or, or opportunities, and I'm just hoping now that with this, this move, we'll get reinstated. Yeah, that will get reinstated, and we'll get the opportunity. I feel to um, to have some good events. We'll be part of some good events. Barbara Archer trying to get down to the pink bowl or the jack. Very close. Like very close. Great what bowl. a superb bowl by the Tyree Skip. Well, it was. That yeah, was played with weight, had, to, had yep. to sort of swoop around those front bowls and get to the shot bowl, the pink bowl, and push it out of the head and remain there itself. That was a very telling shot. Well, I'm sure it was confirmed Victoria Steve won. just put his head through the door and told us what the score was, but both of us have got earphones on, and I don't think either yeah. picked it up. Well, that was the shot of the match, that game there from Barbara Archer, really, Absolutely. to date, wasn't it, uh, yep. Dave? Because that turned down a very, very awkward scenario of scoring to a good two on the head. And here comes the last bowl of the head. And trying to, well... Scott Don't Sinatra's write center. this off either. Don't write this off as it comes down towards the jack. Scott and got the jack. Got got the got jack. Result. Wow. Well, two magnificent bowls, isn't it, from yeah, both skips? Two skips, yeah. So, can Barbara... Still got another one to come. Can yeah. Barbara Archer make three of it and go to a two-shot buffer in that last end? So, this becomes... Bit tight as Barbara Archer's call. What we can't see. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> oh, I saw. Bit through out the head at a fair speed. Boy, Gene Young was sort of hands on hips, hands on what? Boy, where was that going, type so of thing? Two to Tyree, makes, puts the one ahead last end. So, uh, this is where it. Uh, this is where the rubber hits the road, isn't it? Yeah, well, really, Barbara Archer would be slightly disappointed there, really, because he had you know, what, uh, safety to draw uh, a third shot at the counter, wasn't it? Certainly, I couldn't understand that weight coming through there at all. It was well, she played a magnificent bowl, though, with the first and the previous one, yeah. to, uh, to, to get it into that scoring situation. The Tar Taranaki lady's just going to realise, thank you, to move, please. Just going back to that uh, island discussion we were having, this club here have got a number of Tokelauan players. Yes. And about three or four weeks ago, they actually had a Tokelauan Classic over Great. two days, with fours and pairs over the two days, and every team had to have a Pacific Islander in it. Fant I think I saw something on social media, some photos yep. of that. And they tell me it was a hilarious weekend. Oh. So, last in here now in this, it's fair to say, Wollstone Park. Great starter. They're a great starter. And they're, they're home in this game, leading 18 8 as we played the last end against and Buckland. Why are they playing it? 10 the difference, playing 15 to 15. Six bowls to play. Got me bamboozled. Well, <laughs> I'll join you. <laughs> so. Tyree, one in front. Beth Brown on the mat. The Otago, the Needham singles player. <clears throat> How far is it coming back with weight? And is going to come back to the centre line, but leaves a good couple of metres between her bowl and Jack, leading by one. Of course, needing this match does the Tyree side to stay alive. 
to go into that last match to have a chance to qualify for post-section. Christian Stamper, the, uh, one of the icons of Taranaki on the forehand and does a lot with Aotearoa, bowls down in Taranaki as well. Yep. And looks to be on a fairly good line as it comes in towards the jack. The black bowl of Stamp is going to finish low. Well, there's a good vision line there for Beth Brown, knowing where she has to be. And this is where, in, in, in matches like this, at this point of the match as well, this is where your lead can, can really put you in a, in a winning position. So, being delivered by Brown. She's walked quickly away to the side. Well, I can see why. Yeah, very disappointing. Well, that's, that's, that's about, well, I don't know. I'm going to say 15 feet short. Yep. But, you know, looking from out the, from looking on the monitor, Dave. So, we know that Wollstone Park, they will get a W for sure. Another W next to theirs. I thought maybe they were playing the back to their bags, but in actual fact they're playing away from their bags, so they've got to carry them. Oh, they have well. to, yeah. <coughs> and of course, sure this puts Wollstone Park now into qualifying. Yep. So they'll join the post section group of sides. And of course, after this next round, we'll know where we are in regards to qualifiers for the women's. Well, this bowler, Gene Youngs, that's the line, Dave, where they come from. That's the line they come from. She How far is it going to run? Needs to go check. Well, could be. Could be. Just set higher the jack. So Martin Borough have defeated Queenstown. 18 to 12. So Oriwa have just lost to Havelock North 19-13. And that puts, uh, that puts them in, in both out of, out of contention, they said. Is that what you said? They said it puts Oriwa out. So, and the other result which is important to come through and they were behind was the uh, Auckland, Carlton Cornwall side up against Patararu because the last report we got that was Carlton Cornwall that were down a couple. Now this is becoming, you know, so to me it looks like Barbara Archer, you're going to have to draw the shot. Yeah, well, they've actually got another hit to go after this, haven't they, sir? But they wouldn't want to drop any more than one. No, they haven't. We've got 11 minutes to go, so they'll they'll get it they'll in. Get they'll get it in. Yep. They'll get it in on on, on the clock. No worries Won't at the clock. Won't be too much damage if Tyree dropped one here, because that'll make it all square, and Tyree will have the last bowl. But um, they wouldn't want to be behind, I wouldn't think. Well, if this bowl gets in front of the bowl, we, we can't quite see it at this stage. By goodness, it's getting it's getting some whipping as it comes up the straight at <laughs> Hara, but doesn't know. It needed to get past the bowl. And Appropriate action for opposite the furlong on the main road through Harrow, isn't it? It is. Put the horses in. Yeah, it is. So, here's the big bolt. Well, and, and the difficult thing here for Barbara Archer, the three bowls on both hands in the front of the head uh, are not their bowls. No. And it's probably the scruffiest end we've seen in that game. Absolutely. All over the shop. So Barbara Archer uh, on the mat going on the forehand side. Has to weather those short bowls at the front. Very short. It's that word called, word called pressure, isn't it? Well, it's coming back now as the Archer bowl needs to really work inside the pink bowl now to get into that area. Yeah, more than likely had good weight to... Well... Is that saying she's that's looking to take that bowl out? So they may. That could be might be the shot. That, that, could well be. That was sort of the. Unless they're looking for a number. Well, correct, and there is a number there. Yep. And I can tell you, the shake hands time in the Wollston Park versus Buckland game from Counties Manukau, Wollston Park from Christchurch, well, hugs all around. 
Love one, love qualified. I think that's the call. A bit narrow, a bit narrow, and going by. Now that and so that indicates to me, as you rightly said, Dave, that well, there's two options. Are either going for a number? Yep. Thank you. That the case then, the period of Barbara Archie gets another bowl on the head because they've played their hand. They know we know what shot they're going to play. So here is Barbara Archer now trying to get down under the pink bowl. This might actually get to the back of this bowl. Could work in their favour. Yep. Okay, thanks very much. Now, um, now looking here now, that certainly looks like shot, doesn't it? It does. Behind Down behind the but jacket. I think behind the, the jacket there, I saw the finger go one up okay, to the park, to, but I'm not sure. To the harder park. Still calling to get rid of the bowl. Still looking for the bowl on the, on the hunt. Well, look, to be fair, you'd go straight at it, wouldn't you? Yep. No sense in trying to say, come under bowls or do this, do that. You just drive straight at that. that Depends if she can get enough pace up to hold the bowl straight. To hold the bowl. Huh? The Wollstone ladies' arms, big cuddles in the middle of the rink there. <laughs> uh, it's obviously an achievement, a great achievement for the uh, club, the 60-member club in the, out of the Canterbury Centre, the Wollstone Park Bowling Club, and their side of uh, Debbie Sampson, Debbie Salt and Jackie Sutton. Uh, have it would have qualified for post section play. Here is now on the mat is Pauline Kennedy from the Hara Park side. I this think looks changed the hand. Well, I, I like think she's going to go straight at the bowl. Yep, on the forehand though. When yeah. last time she went on the back. Well, well, well <laughs> <laughs> no, it's on the back end and it's well under. Well, that was one. They had no measure, Tatari. no hesitation. 14 12, that was a big one, wasn't it? So, 14-12 as we got the Wollstoners hugs every of this Wollston team out in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're delighted, the, the, say, 60 members. And in the side, of course, we have got the, the, I don't know in what order, but we've got the president, the secretary and the selectors. So, uh, uh, elation for the Wollston Park ladies. So, they will be lining up along with, we know, Joe Edwards, uh, and uh, the Victoria side from Wellington, the Munich side, they know that. Dave, that, I just meant to ask that. I, I was somewhat surprised, and no disrespect to any of the players whatsoever, because I just thought that uh, uh, Sarah Tokumai would have been skipping that. I mentioned that yesterday in the commentary. I was surprised too. I thought the order would have been different. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that Nina de Munich's not a good. I oh, know Nina's been uh, around for a long time. And, a very and consistent won, player. And won a lot of titles, won a lot of yep. things. But it's very um, seldom you see Nina skipping. Yeah, and I and it's just that I of, of the last couple of years I've seen Sarah's being very consistent. Very skipping. very consistent yeah. at all at all levels, isn't she? Yep. So, yeah, I was just a wee bit surprised when when uh, I, I I saw that the first say the first bowl of Beth Brown lower the jack. And two doesn't sound too bad, but in the context of how this game has gone, two's a lot, isn't it? It is. <laughs> They're averaging two shots an end, basically, 26 of after 14 ends. Yeah, so it's... it's still a possibility. So, Beth Brown here, the important thing for the Tyree Skip. That's your concentration, isn't she? She certainly is. Yeah, and she very, with those eyes yeah, looking straight down at the head. Which she is at it. So it's got the bowl out on that wider side. Now it should start to work its way back towards the centre line. Pretty well played, this one. It's going to be over the head as well. It sits in behind the jack. So got literally right back to, to the centre line. It's inside the black disc bowl. It is. And really, it, and the other thing about this as well, and again, it's something that players sometimes don't understand, or don't not say don't understand, don't play, is at this stage of the game, you don't worry about the jack, you just make sure that, you, that yep. you're beating the opposition bowls. Correct. That Thank they're you. not going to score. Now, here comes the uh, Hara Park bowl. Gets applause. Getting another wave, so it might be short. Measure is... Measure, and that's just the logical call there from the Tyree Skip from uh, from Barbara Archer, get as close as you can. Jean Young 
Third always, time get match out. always looks on the match. He's got the worries of the world on his shoulders. <laughs> yeah, take a green. Loves the balls. Yeah. Loves the balls. Deep breath on the mat. And just to confirm to you that the other game that we were covering has seen the side from the Wollstone Park from Canterbury. They have qualified now for post-section play. They defeated the buckle in the side of Counties Manukau. And we see this bowl of young. Ideally, wanted to finish in front of, uh, you know, to finish in front of the blue to make sure. Because yep. we're not sure, really. Once she delivers a bowl, Jean Young always has a really worried look on her face. She does, yeah. And Pauline Kennedy looking closely, trying to coax this bowl in towards the head, goes by. And it, it, look, don't know who's got the shot, pup. Just get just just cover. Draw. Make sure the opposition can't get to. One moment, please. Draw, draw on top. Yep. Where they can't score. Or make sure that if you're down, down at this point, you're one down. And I tend to think that, to me, well, she's really got that. <laughs> she's got that really that expression on her face that I've yep. got. The world relies on me. So on the backhand is the Tyree number two. She's played pretty consistently. Good green game. Absolutely. Backhand, now, how far is this bowl now going to come back? Can it's pretty reasonable. If we get down that Arch from is one. pretty keen on this. As it breaks towards the head, a big applause. That's exactly That's what we're talking ball. about. Brilliant ball. Well played by the number two from Tyree, and certainly Julie got the applause from his skip Barbara Archer. And that really makes the challenge now, doesn't it? Good at, bowl any time, but under pressure like that. Last yeah. bowl of the game. 14-12 yeah. in front, knowing that uh, something right on top. And, and look, literally, I'm not, who knows what can happen in these games, but now for Archer, just play to the pink bowls over Put here. one between those yeah. two, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can play checkers on the head now, can't you, to... Yeah. Um, very it's hard to dislodge that shot ball as well. We're at City, isn't Absolutely. it? It's interesting what you're saying, Kevin. We've had a, a young selector at our club this year on the men's side who's been coaching us as well. And one of the practices we did week after week was drawing second shot, making sure you didn't lose more than one. Most, of short, most so important. important. Best shot in the book. Yep. When you haven't got the shot, it's the best shot in the book. <laughs> We'd play eight or ten ends in the score, but only be if you got more than one. No yeah. score if you got one. Didn't yeah. count. Yeah, and it's a uh, yeah, second shot is certainly uh, yeah. I'm or well, I suppose when us oldies have always were always taught, you know that yep. that uh, uh, you can't get the shot with every bowl. And and Barbara Archer rightly going out on the wider hand, trying to get down to these two pinks. That's the Jack Trail danger, and. Be a little bit big, she's going to, be going to go by a meter, so I didn't want to go that far. And and the only shot really on for the Harder, Harder Park side really is that trail. There is the, the, the Tyree side are a wee bit fortunate in that they have got the first bowl of uh, Gene Young's, it's sitting in amongst that little bundle of bowls there. So here is the Taranaki skip, Pauline Kennedy. The only shot she's really got is to play that forehand to move the jack or sit the bowl, isn't it? Can't see any other option down there, really. Uh, no, movement, is it, to me, is the only option, is it not? It's a, yep. So here is the Taranaki player from the Hara Plark Club trying to get to the jack. Beth Brown's looking down closely at it. And will go by. Imperative here there now for Barbara Archer. And you'll see there is a Tyree bowl in amongst those yep. pink bowls. So that need, kitty goes out this way to, yep. the, to where to Jean's now got her foot. It's where she needs to be, yep. out around that area. That certainly will sort of take it, remove that danger of the, the trail. Because to be fair to Pauline Kennedy, the Taranaki skip, she had the weight to get that trail. She did. And Barbara Archer's got better weight here as it comes down towards the head. Going to sit cleanly on top of the pinks. Well, that's Ooh, pretty... Nice. Pretty good, but it might still be on for that. It could still be the on between those two pinks. So, 14-12. It it's is going to be a very accurate shot. This one, though. 14-12. It is Tyree leading, needing this game to stay alive to get another win after this 
to go into post-section play. The on the, the forehand. last bowl There's on the game, unless it's a two, mm -hmm. is on its way. So, look wide. It's, to me, that's not going to do anything, Dave. That's going that's by. to Tyree. Well done. And it is the Tyree side who are going to come out the winners here. And right on the bell. <laughs> right. Yeah, right on the bell. There's the bell. And it is the Tyree, uh, the bowl of Gene Young's, which will uh, be the, the shot. In fact, and it will be the Tyree side who take out the, the victory by 15 to 12. Down 6 0 early on in the yep, piece. Some commented they had to and, get going, and, and they surely and did. Just slow, didn't have to go to 100 miles an hour, got going. So, and congratulations. They had after they sold out, and then they came back again. So, well, yes, so they sold out those two shots, which could have been yep. a turning point in the whole match, couldn't it? So, congratulations to the uh, side of Barbara Archer and Gene Young and Beth Brown. They've won their, that, well, they haven't won their way through yet. They have to win yet a further yet. game, and they get through to post section play. And we, they've defeated the Taranaki side from Hara Park. That's the side of Christian Stamper, Alice Smales, and Pauline Kennedy. And it would appear, of course, we'll confirm it in the other match, the Wollstone Park side from Canterbury. We know they defeated the county's Manukau side uh, from Buckland. And from that, we are sure that it is the. Wollstone well, Park Club, their 60 members can uh, celebrate because their team of Debbie Sampson, Debbie Salt and Jackie Sutton have uh, kept alive the hopes of their club. And next up, we'll be bringing you the live action of Karen Hema, Lisa Bredow and, Carl and uh, Linda Rolfe from Carlton Cornwall up against the Martin Borough side of Tania Wheeler, Janelle Frew and Mary Ann Ashworth, Margaret O'Connor, Deborah Lloyd and Andrew, uh, Andrea Dowman of Queenstown up against Heather Leyland, Shirley Passy, Linda Francis of Havrock North. So we'll be back when this next round this morning gets underway.
Good morning and welcome back to the 9A Bowling Club here in Wellington. We're about to bring you the final round of qualifying for the Somerset Retirement Village Champion of Champions Women's Triples. Now I can tell you already through to post-section play are the following. The Karen Hema Kip skip side from Carlton Cornwall in Auckland. Joe Edwards out of the Nelson Club. Uh, for also through is the Wollstone Park side. Uh, that skip by, from, from Canterbury. Skipped by uh, Jackie Sutton. That that through to uh, oh, sorry Debbie Sanson. That through to post section play. As are the very strong Victoria uh, side here from Wellington. Uh, skipped by uh, Nina de Munich. Now they are through to post section play. Those who can qualify for post section play are Tania Wheeler, which you'll see up in front of you here from Martinborough. The Oni Rahi side. Uh, they're all from, from Northland. Thus, they can still get through to, uh, to uh, qualify. As can Waihope from uh, Invercargill and the Tyree side from the Need and the Barbara Archer skip side. So right now we have got those, those matches. The qualifying ones, as we just spoke about, is, of course, the, um, the Tania Wheeler side. And they're up against the Carlton Cornwall side who have already qualified. Only Rahi are playing Foxton Beach, of course, as we know, they can, Foxton Beach cannot qualify. Waihopi of the Southland Centre are up against Taranaki, and Taranaki, of course, can't qualify. And the Tyree, the Beverly Archer skip side, they're up against Oriwa, who also cannot qualify. So, maximum looks like we're going to get to, uh, we can get to, Dave. Is eight, eight, which will please bowl to Zealand no end. Yeah, makes it pretty simple from there, and then... Of course, after this, later on, well, the following the women's completion today, uh, we'll go on to post to section play, the latter stages of section play of the men's. Now, the game, there's two games uh, in progress out here. There's the side from Central Otago from the Queenstown side, uh, skipped by Deborah Lloyd, uh, and they're up against the Hawks Bay side uh, from the Havelock North Club, skipped by uh, Heather Leyland. Now you'll see their game going on out here in front of it on the split screen. And neither one of those two sides can qualify. The other match, which you'll see the Carlton Cornwall, Linda Rolfe in the yellow and black tracksuit there. Uh, the Carlton Cornwall side with Karen Hema skimmer, skipping uh, Lisa Prado and, and Linda Rolfe. And they're up against the Wairapa side of the Martinborough Club, Tania Wheeler, who already, this uh, Champion of Champions sort of soiree, won the Champion of Champions singles, where she beat Linda Ralph. Yes, she did. In, in that final. Playing two is Janelle Frew, and leading is Mary Ann Ashworth. And to be fair, that's where we will um, focus a lot of our... Uh, Watching time and, and, and coverage, correct? Correct. That's what we'll do. And I've got Dave Hewitt with me again. As Linda Ralph on the mat. I notice here on our sheet we've got here, it looks as though we have got Lisa Rideau playing at two. Um, I think Lisa's, Lisa's leading. In fact, I was going to say, I think Linda's playing two, even though the sheet says otherwise. Yes, it is. Those are the two. The, the two Whitey bowls in the front there. The the white bowls are, are Lisa Bradeau's. The yellow bowl in the, just out from the jack is that of uh, Janelle, Janelle Frew. Frew. And the really coloured bowl, what would we call it, pink coloured bowl, uh, is that of uh, Mary Ann Ashworth, is, that, is the uh, the two bowls. So it is two to the <clears throat> Martin Borough side, remembering, of course, that they need this win to qualify to join the team of Karen Hema. Joe Edwards, Sanson of, uh, of course, Wollstone Park, working Wollstone Park, and the Victoria side of Wellington. So, how many there'll be? We'll know more, of course, after this round. <coughs> As Tanya Wheeler draws another shot to the kitty. So, yes, good opening bowl from Tanya Wheeler, Karen Hema on the mat. Karen Hema, of course, in Auckland this year, won the Piers triples and fours. Pretty good achievement overall. As you watch this bowl of Hemers coming down towards the shop bowl and Jack just going to get a touch on the Jack. Moves it around the corner. And well 
Sorry, I was at the wrong screen. <laughs> Right, so where did Karen Hemis bog go, Dave? No, I can't remember. <laughs> so I said, because I looked at the the, the, the discs and I thought, oh, yeah, it seems a bit strange. So it is the, to me, it is the three shots. To Martinborough. To Martinborough. Oh, this. And you just said about Karen Hemis winning three events. I think Linda Ralph must have done the same, Absolutely. did she, with the singles, and, triples and fours? And Lisa Bredot. And Lisa won three as well, so very strong team. And and next week they'll be joined by uh, Karen De Jong in the fours as Hema trying to draw up to that yellow bowl. It's working its way back to the centre line now. Not going to have the gonna weight have again. Wait. And you know I will hark on about this. I'm sorry. If you're down on the head and you're skipping the side, you've you got need to be up. You've got to be reaching the head. Three shots this time, by the look of it. Yeah, and I, I just can't hark on enough about it that if you're playing at this level and you're down on the head and you're playing the last two bowls. Yep. Mark Burr again, early breakout, five nil on the after two ends. Well, that's a great start, isn't it? It's a very good start when you need it. And I'm sure Cart and Cornwall won't want them to qualify because they may come up against them again. How often does that happen? It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Absolutely, Dave. It's the last thing you want. I, one of the surprising things that, of who are going to be the non-qualifiers is that of the, the Queenstown side, you know, the... Yep. Uh, Margaret O'Connor skip side because we all know uh, Margaret O'Connor is a very, very, very good player. And I don't know very much about uh, Deborah Lloyd and Andrea, Dow Andrea Dowman, but um, Queensland's a pretty competitive club down in the south now, yep. isn't it? They've, uh, um, yeah, they, they are competitive. So, by goodness, you see that swing off the there. That, yes, off that bank side. Boy, that bowl there of. Mary Ann Ashworth, that really, really came back. Lisa Bredow now on the mat course. Bredow, the partner of Leif Selby. Yep. So, uh, and the winner of the National Peers with Val Smith on two occasions. And uh, a beaten semi finalist in, uh, in another, one other, another year. So, and a very, very good off the front player. Just going to go by. I was interested, Kevin, when we saw the bowl swing, you mentioned about must be using size threes. It's interesting now, there used to be, when I started, and probably when you started, the, the common belief was the bigger the bowl, the better you were off to use it. That's right. And now everybody seems to be downsizing. You hardly see anything above a size four. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah, I, yeah fives, fives and fours were the, 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 the uh, the normal, weren't they? Yep. Uh, and you know, in the in the in the old days, of course, of the grass greens before we we moved to the uh, to the different surfaces. You know, the you know, y you were playing on greens down the South Island, especially uh, down south. You know, you were playing on twenty twenty greens uh, on a on a regular basis. Uh, here is the bowl of Lisa Bredow. Karen Hema is going to have to learn. My dear friend Karen, you don't own all the green. <laughs> no. So, we'll get. It's, inter it's interesting how bowls have changed. I, um, when I used to go to Taranaki Open in my early years and skip, I used to play with super grips, and I'd go out for miles and they'd come back. Yeah. And I said to the opposition skip one day, "This is the last game of bowls I'm playing with these things. I'm getting some straight ones when I go home," and I got classic twos. Yeah. <laughs> well. I can remember when Classic Twos came out. You know, they were the innovation. I, yep. And, and to, to, you know, it took me a long time to to move to Classic Twos, uh, and it wasn't really until uh, I played in Australia, and my good friend Dennis oh, Dalton me. had it. Oh, had Linda. Ron Bias was it? Is that another one? Look, I think so. And uh, my good friend, the late Dennis Dalton took me along to the Hinsalite factory and said to me, these are the bowls that you're going to play with, uh, Kiwi. Uh, and 
and funnily enough, uh, he actually the emblem that Bruce Hensel got on the put on the bowls for me was um, a kiwi and a kangaroo jumping over a flag. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I played. Yeah, I, I suppose that was literally the early days of classic twos, and uh, um, they were the bowl of choice for well, a big percentage. Uh, a big percentage of the playing populace, and of course, at, at, those, at those years as well, you know, you also got to remember good bowl here from Linda Ralph, yep. right in yeah. front of the jack. And what you got to remember as well is that um, there was literally only Henselow. Yes, wasn't it? Yep, early on. So you know, um, then we got into a lot of tailors and green tailors masters, and, and now we're into there's all sorts, isn't it? Into Arrow. Drake's pride, and and, and and Aero have become a pretty popular, very bowl, popular bowl. Haven't they? <laughs> and they actually do half sizes. Yes, they do. There's the brainchild of Walter Jacobs out of Australia. So on the forehand is the Martin Burrett yeah. skip. Not quite going to reach as uh, Tania Wheeler. We'll see here. There's room down on that. Fahima on her forehand to draw down there. Nothing in the road. I just will see on the line of the bowl. I, I, I really, I've got it. I really do have to question why. Karen Hema, yeah. sure, it's in behind the head, but I just feel if you want to get after you see where the Karen Hema, sorry, where the first bowl of Tania Wheeler's yep. went to, you're 5 0 down and you want to get into a scoring position, you're going to play another hand, aren't you? I would have thought so, yeah. Just seems. And that front one of Tania's could be counting as well. So. Karen Hema persisting to play down there to draw around the front bowl of Tania Wheeler's when on the other hand there is a complete open hand and nothing to run into and a jack trail is in your favour yep. so it is one at this stage to the Carlton well, could be two and now she's playing across the front short well I'm pleased Karen uh, him acknowledging to herself yeah. of what that was. And, and I just... I, I, the point I'm making, and in Auckland now, you know, we've got the advantage of having Leif Selby there. And I'm sure, you know, Leif, if he was watching this, he may well be because his partner's playing number two. From a coaching point of view, he's going to be saying, Karen, why aren't you playing... The, the, the open hand, totally open hand, nothing in your road, and it's about getting effective bowls. And yeah, I. All righty. Well, no by good. the look of the board, Thank by the look of that you. score, we've got that wrong. Carlton Cornwall scored one on that round. Yes, they did. They scored a one, yeah, and that was the bowl. It was the bowl of Linda Ralph. So here is Lisa Bradeau, twice, of course, New Zealand Pairs winner. With her friend good, Lisa. Val Smith. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. Very Lisa Bredo settles into her work. Oh, yeah, it was very tidy. You know. and, and again, if you watch Lisa Bredo and you watch Leif Selby last week, watch Lisa Bredo before she gets onto the mat. Mm -hmm. She's visualising where she's going to play. She stands back for the mat. Look at her delivery. It's the same every time. Every time. time. Every time. And of course, played in Australia as and well. Again. A, a, a lot. Come. A lot with, with um, Val Smith when Val Smith yeah, was there. Val was over there. Yeah, played out of Australia. On the backhand is, see, that stayed stand, stays down, body, that body doesn't move, arm stays straight. She's got yep, a very good delivery style, isn't she? Nice. Well, that, very compact. Very nice. 
Yeah. Well, you get rewarded, don't yeah. you? You do. Bigger <laughs> bowls, Lisa. So stays down, arms there, line, visualises where she's going to play. And, you know, I, I, I say to people about a lot of this live streaming that we do, from a coach's point of view, you w here's an opportunity to actually watch. Watch someone's delivery. Watch their hand. Watch how many bowls that they get, you know, in the right part to the, relative to the centre line. Yep. Mm. And You're just it, coming it, inside pink bowl, Linda. It just makes such You're a right big difference. Back. Good. Linda's so, another one that's very deliberate. Absolutely, she is. She's got that funny hand movement. Yeah, at the end of a delivery, the end, she seems that, to just click that, her wrist that, around, doesn't she? But gets the bowl away consistently. It might be a bit yeah. tight, Linda. And is, t and I, where I think the difference as well comes with, with uh, and you'll watch again shortly, and with Lisa Prado as well, it's where her hand is at the point of delivery. It's not either inside the body or outside the body. It's got constant on that pendulum swing, and it makes just, it's, uh, if you want to talk about like golfers, you want to get consistency. Uh, good, uh, good ball here from Janelle the Fruit, yeah. uh, Martin Borough number two. Yeah, just a bit more. Janelle Fruit. Just, just coming through. Lovely, yellow. lovely yellow balls. Can't afford to make too many mistakes with those. They stand out. They the certainly are. stand out, don't they? They, uh, they are very yellow. <laughs> so here is Linda Ralph. Very, very formidable player. Right. A bit more track, Linda. Wait, so, very good. as we confirmed to you, we have already got four qualifiers through in the Women's Somerset Champion and Champion Triples here at 9A. And those qualifiers are Nina de Munich of Victoria here in Wellington, Joe Edwards of Nelson, uh, Debbie Sanson of Wollstone Park. Great effort by the girls from Wollstone Park, the, little, the small club there. They've won their way through. And Karen Hema, right, who is playing in front of us, Karen Hema uh, from the Carlton Club in Auckland. Now, Karen Hema, as we know now, is up against Tania Wheeler of Martinborough, <laughs> and Tania Wheeler needing this game to qualify. Also needing the game to qualify is the the side of Linda Swanson, side of Onirahi in Northland, and they are playing the Taranaki combination. That's the Kirsten Stamper side. They're up against it, yeah. them. Tanya Wheeler, of course, as we spoke about, is playing uh, out here in front of us, right. Carlton Cornwall. And Jean Stratford of Waihopi is, uh, they're playing, oh, I might have got that wrong, sorry. Jean Stratford is playing Christian Stamper. And then in the last one with a chance of qualifying, the Tyree side oh. of Barbara Archer is playing Christian, Christ, uh, Christian Delzell of uh, <coughs> of mm. North Harbour of the O'Riwa Club. So, looking at this, uh, Dave, maximum we're going to have is uh, eight qualifiers. Yep. You and I know there won't be eight. Probably not. <laughs> that, that, well, it, isn't you know, as always, uh, hey, we're there to be proven wrong, but as we know that uh, not always does that go according to plan that, that, uh, no. that the, all of those four... We'll get through. So we know we're going to have the maximum of eight. I think last week we've got seven, I think, and I in that, la is that, that last round That's result. That's the last round results. So in the last round results, are just we, we, um, uh, we, the Joe Edwards game was unplayed. Um, they were up against the Blenheim side because Joe had already qualified. So that game wasn't played. Christian Stamper of Taranaki was defeated by 15 shots to 12. Well, coming in here from Hema, goes by, ah. sits outside the head. Uh, Christian Stampin, a very tight game, was defeated by Barbara Arch of Tyree. Karen Hema, who we've got out in front of us here, needing that last round game to uh, win, won by the single shot over the uh, Patarari side, 12-11. The Carlton Cornwall side won that. The side, the Havelock North side, they defeated the Oriwa side. That was the... Uh, Heather Leyland uh, skip side, they defeated Christine Dalzell by 19 shots to uh, 13. Debbie Sanson, the, one of the games that we did, of course, uh, from Wilston Park, up against the side of uh, Buckland and Diane Main. 
and it was the one we know that was won by the the side from Wollstone Park. Raywin Willis from uh, Mount Monganui defeated the uh, Why well, Hopi side, and that's why they need this one because yep. they were unbeaten. But it was Willis that ran out the winner. Tania Wheeler of Martinborough defeated the Queenstown combination, uh, and and Nina de Munich and the Victoria side defeated the side from uh, Kapiti by 15 shots to 12. So there you got it. That's what happened this morning. We've got four qualifiers and a possibility of eight. Three ends gone now. Martin Barrett leading Carlton Cornwall 6-1. Nice little comfortable buffer there for the, the start. Just going back to what you're saying about the unpredictability, it seems to be in the last game when teams can't qualify that the pressure goes off them and they quite often turn up the better sides. Absolutely, and I, I'm watching this opening here and, you know, I've seen already you know, the, the yellow bowls of, of Janelle Froof is in the uh, wide upper upperside uh, right around the, the, the jack and you know, Lisa Bredeau uh, well, has held the, the shot on two of the three ends played that I've commentated yeah, on today and here's a, another pretty handy bowl of Prado yep. just going to finish a bowl lower the jack okay. just a bowl outside the line and of course and they have looked well Queenstown have jumped out to an 8-2 eight 8-2 uh, eight start there so they although they can't qualify as same for Havelock North certainly a great start by the Queenstown side as we watch the lead for the Tania Wheeler side, Mary Ann Ashworth. And coming down towards the centre line now, going to drop low. So Tania Wheeler, should she qualify in this event, has had a pretty good season up in the wide upper. Absolutely, and it's a, it's a great effort by the little Martinborough club because they've basically just resurrected it over the last couple of years. Oh, really? It was a struggling club, just about dead. Um, and Marston and we're always the dominant club over there. But now we have um, Tanya through in this and in the singles. And in this event also in the men's side, Martinborough are representing Wairapa again. So Is that Gary Murawai? That's Gary Murawai, yep. And I understand Gary's now the chair of Bowles Wairapa. I think... Very capable gentleman. Oh, absolutely he is. You know, I, I knew Gary because when he was in uh, North Harbour. Mm -hmm. uh, very capable, uh, astute... And uh, has uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, involvement in uh, some of the Maori development uh, scenarios. Um, and I'm not speaking, I'm not at all speaking out of turn, would be, uh, uh, let's say, a board member of the future of Bowls New Zealand. Yeah, I would think so as well. That'd be great to have. You know, someone from one of the smaller centres and with Gary's business acumen and other things, um, to me, is the sort of board member that that, uh, that. that um, really adds some, some, some goodness to your boardroom. There was, I remember, the last time we played the inter-centre at, at Wilton, there was a young fella that played for the Wairapa who was a, a top golfer and had only been playing bowls for, he was still a junior, only been playing for a short period of time. And a uh, oh, good bowl here from the... Yeah, very good bowl. And, yeah, he was um, playing in the wide upper side of the inter And I'm if, trying to think who it is. Man. And if you remember last time we had the inter and down and, uh, and we played at Wilton, wide did very well. I think they got third, didn't they? they absolutely, they did. In the camp. Yep. So there's some good things happening there, isn't there, obviously. And you know, they've had a few players travel to the region who are playing there now, haven't yep. they? Likes of Tony Wheeler. And, you know, uh, it's, it's bearing some fruit, isn't it? And a number of their players also play in Wellington. Play oh, yes. Interclub here over uh, in Wellington. Uh, Hayden Frew, right Janelle's about. husband, and yeah, Scott McKenzie, who's in Gary Murawai's team. They both play... At Silverstream during the oh, right. during the summer. Well, it's not far down the hill, is it? No, it's not long for them to come over. You have to cut the green, eh? Just cut it, yeah, yeah, as it was. But they then play all the representative stuff for for Wairapa, which is a good thing. 
Oh, Give some development on our side of the hill, but... Look, I think it's fantastic to see some of the smaller centres and, and you know, Wire Rapper being, being one of them because we have seen so many of what I would call our smaller centres really come under the hammer yeah. in, of recent years. And, you know, if we even if we look at these champion and champions, the, the, the constant non-attendance, I'd say, from some of the... Tania Wheeler needing one more roll on the bowl... And I had shot, and I, mu I admire her number two, Janelle Frew, very enthusiastic, wow, yes, she is. very enthusiastic player on the head, and that's good. So here now for Hema, but it's disappointing that I would love to see the coast here, but you know the, the boys from Cobden are here, but mm. there's some centres who we know it's beyond their financial reach in some regard to to participate in some of the inter centre events. So. Um, and there, yeah, nothing a bit, a bit uh, wide. A bit wide, there yeah, was the Hema Bowl. So Tania Wheeler, who was very impressive in the in the singles, very very impressive. Got a very good delivery. And you'll see she's got a very, very deliberate, you know, vision on the on the uh, on the head. You can see that. that. And that bowl, although not counting that bowl of Tania Wheeler's, it's certainly in a, position. in a bad position. And the the, yellow. Uh, what the shot is that Linda Rolf is calling Karen Hemer on. I, it's, it's not a, an easy shot, is it? No, it's not an easy shot. But what she's saying is play down the tube and, and literally playing. Inside the uh, bowl of uh, the bowl of Lisa Bradeau's played down through that shoot line, and there's a, got a catching bowl there. So here is. Nah, can't. Oh, no. Not happy with it. You can hear through the microphone. I just there's a, a little self exercise I've got here. And, and the players shall remain nameless. Find it. Maybe in the tenth end. <laughs> but we've got four ends gone, and this particular player has not had one effective ball. And I don't know who you're talking about, but I'm not going to say that. And it's one of the bugbears that I've got yep. in trying uh, to, to talk, to, talk to players one. about your, 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 you have to, if you want to achieve at this sport, like any sport, yep. you know, you've got to have effectiveness in what you're doing. You can't, you know. No, correct. And the other seven have been pretty useless bowls, to be quite frank. They didn't help at all. Absolutely. So, you know, it's, you just make the challenge for yourself that much harder. And mm. you, it's, you know. Um, so, Tani Wheel scores again 7 1. It's a, a nice start when you get to qualify, isn't it? It is. So the lead for the wide upper site, Mary Ann Ashworth. It's like we were talking earlier now, it's just a job of playing fairly consistently and not giving away any numbers and No, that's In your camp. And you're shooting out the door for a smoke, was it? <laughs> What's the play? Here's Lisa Bradeau. Two times winner of the Dorchester New Zealand Pairs. And here's that nice line. Hasn't quite got that last yeah. metre of weight. And it's going to finish it. It finishes. Just in front. It's, it's not bad, though. I suppose you've got literally Leif, Leif Shelby as your coach, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're a lovely couple. They moved back over from Australia. And... Um, Strangely enough, they uh, when they first moved over, they, they moved to Waiheke Island. Oh, okay. And yep. uh, uh, Lisa is working for uh, like the local. Oh, you were right in what you just said about a player. <laughs> as we see, the Jack just trailed by uh, Marianne Ashworth. It's still there for you. And uh, <clears throat> Lisa worked in the Parks and Reserves uh, type role, and uh, Leif 
uh, was, I think it was truck driving, I think, over at Waiheke. Anyway, the job opportunity came up at Auckland Bowls, and Auckland Bowls absolutely delighted to be able to... to to of that calibre. Oh, if someone has the ability that life brings uh, into a development coaching role it is absolutely outstanding. And uh, so he's working there now, um, and and uh, Lisa is continuing her sort of horticultural bent with uh, working with the local um, Parks and Reserves people, and she's a supervisor there now. And, yeah, so uh, their move... Was actually two white hickey was there, <laughs> and it was very difficult for Lisa playing bowls, of course, because there's not a lot of there is a bowling club over on the island, um, but it's not <coughs> it's not actually a competitive club, and mm. and it meant <coughs> that Lisa was constantly uh, on the ferry to get across to play bowls in town, which is quite challenging, you know. Yep. It's, uh, yeah. As you can understand, a club like white hickey not being too con too competitive because. There wouldn't be too many centre events or inter-club matches held on Waiheke. No, a uh, toucher here from Linda Roth, a slide off the Prideau Bowl. No, there's not. Uh, 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 in fact, uh, it's, it's an artificial uh, uh, artificial green concrete base. Uh, and But I must say is it's the hub of the island. Mm. Uh, Friday night's there. It's the home of the Mad Butcher. Oh, OK. It's, yeah, that, that's because... Uh, uh, Peter, so Peter's got a place uh, over on the island, and he's there uh, regularly. And uh, for him and his uh, good lady, uh, their main Have social spot at, uh, on is the island the uh, is, at, is at the Waiheke Bowling Sitting Club. Here. And uh, Marlene and myself have been there uh, on a Friday night, and they have it's uh, it's literally one of the meeting points uh, on the island and. A lot of activity, which is great, and but and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of corporates that go to uh, that uh, play at Waiheke. Yep. They uh, yep, will good. have a corporate yep. corporate business day or, or uh, stag do. They go over to the island and they get well looked after. Yep. And uh, so, <laughs> although perhaps not an ultra competitive club, it's a very very active very active club. And it wouldn't be boring on a Friday night if Peter Leach was there. There'd always be something happening. Yeah, Sir Peter's a great man for the community. Well, he uh, well, t some, uh, well, there's been a lot of club bowling clubs in Auckland. You know, when uh, Sir Peter had the original shop uh, in Mungary, and uh, uh, every club had. Every club had meat raffles and all sorts, of, and and it's fair to say, a, a, especially in the South Auckland, only hunger regions, and not just bowling clubs, rugby clubs, no. all sorts, where you know the meat the, the meat raffles were always from the mad butcher, and and saying that the mad butcher was always outstanding in his patriotism to those who supported him, and he stood in and he supported uh, so many sporting clubs, sporting people. Uh, uh, over the years, uh, yeah, he's yeah, he is legendary. The Mad Butcher gives us great support at Silverstream. The regional manager plays there, just lives up the road from the oh, club. right. When I say plays there, he plays casual bowls. Yes. He brings a bag of sausages for the barbecue every night, and they give us great raffles when we uh, have yeah. the raffles. It's been, you know, one of the, I know the, the ownership has somewhat sort of changed, in the in the company, the Mad Butcher Company. Yep. But uh, look, Sir Peter can go down as one of the, in my view, uh, not just for rugby league, but um, his iconic support um, overall in the community uh, of so many causes, so many charities, so many sports. Uh, he's um, yeah, he's one of the f one of the few guys in New Zealand. Uh, who can um, nah. who can pick the phone up any time he likes and ring anybody? Yeah. <laughs> They're all in his phone. Well, he's a guy you never hear saying anything negative. I he, no, no, he's not. It's not in his not not in his makeup, and 
You know, when you hear the people who have got done contacts with Queen's Lords and everything else, well, it's safe to say Peter Leach, if, uh, if uh, he wants to get hold of Jacinda Ardern, he would just say, I'll give her a ring. Yep. <laughs> and it was the same with Sir John Key and, yeah. and so many others. And the sport, not all about rugby league as well. Like Dame Susan Devoy was one of the very, very early benefactors of the generosity um, of Sir Peter when, you know, when it was, it was a lot used to cost individuals a lot of money to be yep. in the international squash player. In and uh, Sir Peter uh, was one of the early um, supporters in a number of ways to Dame Susan Devoy and her quest of being the number one world squash player. And schools, uh, a variety of... He's, uh, yeah, legendary. And it's, it's interesting, the two sirs, Sir Peter Leach and Sir John Kerwin, well, of course, John Kerwin started his a career off uh, as an apprentice butcher yep. to his father, and one of the best mates was Peter Leach, Peter Leach. the man butcher. So, and, and it's interesting, both of them have continued through their years of their work that they do for various charities and community, etc., I think we're about to get some updates. Steve Bill appears to be heading this way. Here he comes. There he is. What have we got, mate? We've got the game against Buckland. That's Buckland from Pukekohe up against Blenheim. And it is 5-2 to the county's combination. Wollstone Park Paraparam didn't play because of the qualifying, as did Tairua versus uh, Wanganui. They didn't play as well. Foxton Beach up against yeah, Onirahi. Of course, Onirahi, a, quali a, a hopeful qualifier. Very nice. They've all been highlighted here for us, Dave, yep. so as we know. And it is the Onirahi side from Northland leading 4-3 after 5. And in the Tyree match uh, against Oriwa, Tyree needing that. Well, Dave Archer sitting down there in your lounge down at Tyree. I can tell you that your wife, ba Barbara, they're leading 6-4 after 5. 6-4 after five ends and the Waihupi side from Invercargill needing this game up against Hara Park who cannot qualify and it is the Invercargill side who are leading 6-3 after five ends. So all the ch those are the chance. Interestingly is enough, all four teams that need it are leading. Yes, well that, pr that puts my prediction out the, <laughs> out the window, Dave, doesn't it? Long way to go yet. They're only just getting to halfway. We're doing a uh, at, at Bowles Hastings. Um, we've got um, they have got coming up very shortly a tournament for suicide awareness, and they uh, spoke to Stephen Beale and, and myself about it. And I, uh, Stephen's got some apparel from Ryan Bester. Joe Edwards uh, yesterday here gave me two signed shirts of hers yep. to uh, to take to the um, to uh, uh, the club next week, and also uh, Shannon McElroy has given me one of his si uh, New Zealand shirts as well. Mat, also, we've got uh, and I'm got to try and work out to get a signature for the next few days, but we've got uh, half a dozen of uh, red wine of the JK14 brand. Sir John Kerwins, who's kindly um, made sure that uh, part of the prizes will uh, have support of uh, Sir John Kerwin. Of course, we know one of his advocacies is uh, that of you know mental health and that sort of thing. And uh, so there's half a dozen bottles of JK14 wines en route to Hastings. So. It's great to have these people who give so openly to the support of the sort of um, aligned charities. Yeah, well, back about five or six weeks, we had a fundraiser here for the Fox and Beach Bowling Club that, of course... That was an outstanding was effort, wasn't it? Hmm? That was an outstanding effort, the event It was about 17,000 raised, I think. You know, the auction and there was, a, yep. there was some generosity in that in that auction, wasn't yep, there? It was. And uh, I believe Des Coppins was a, helped in, in that regard. He did. The, he did the auction. Yeah, and I think he also managed to get a share in a horse. Yeah, I believe he got. I think it, went for about five thousand dollars. So. 
Yeah, fantastic generosity. And, and um, I, I saw quite a bit on uh, Facebook, Lisa White did quite a bit of work. And, yes, she did. You know, and it's great to see people you know, bending their arm, isn't it, for such worthy, worthy causes. And that certainly, you know, that, that certainly is. So full marks and... and uh, of course, I'm part of the, not that it matters at all, but I'm part of the insurance arm that um, had the, looked after the insurance for, for Foxton. Um, and we can uh, guarantee they'll be, yeah, they'll be uh, looked after. Yep. Tragic for the area, everything, wasn't it, really, to lose that. that well, you know. Again, it's probably a hub of that. Oh, it's going to such a community hub, isn't it? The, the 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 club there, and you know we wish them well in their in their rebuild yep. of uh, uh, getting that that activity, that community activity hub uh, underway. And looking here, I think it's the yellow bowl which is shot. Would it turn the bowl over? I think that might have been payback because earlier in the head while we were talking, I'm sure Linda Ralph's blue bowl sat that yellow bowl down as a sellout. Well, I think if I, Karen Hemer, if I'm down on the head here, I'd be trying to play through that mm. front uh, with a yard of weight, not trying to draw in between. If she's down, I'd be looking to claw through that front, trying to get to that front bowl. No. Not up to the head again when she's down. Well, I thought the shot really was through the yellow yep. bowl, actually, Dave, because um, to make some contact through there, because stay. that's a Linda Ralph, but but that's a Karen Heeman's first bowl there, in behind the head. You'd have thought that play down through there, Lisa Bradeau's bowl as well, is just in behind there. Uh, very difficult, what I would say, to dead draw around to get to the jack. Coming around two bowls, Tania Wheeler now leading 7-3. And her number three... It just doesn't look like a bad bowl either, just short. Just going to come up short. And it is another one to the Wairapa side, the Martinborough side. A jump up to 8-3, their lead in pursuit of qualifying. And... A nice start for the uh, wire upper. Yep. So in the wire upper centre, um, how many clubs would there be approximately up there, Dave? Uh, there's your... Martinborough, there's Featherston, Carrington, which is a combination of the old Carterton and South End. Right, yes. Uh, Greytown, Masterton. Marston Park, and I think Lansdowne's gone to one of them. Oh, Lansdowne's and moved. I just, to I just got to mention Lansdowne. They, 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 they've moved. They've moved and yep. and Ekaterhuna still goes? I think Ekaterhuna still goes. Frank Sigverston. <laughs> Sorry? Frank Sigverston. There we go. There's no, not. Yep. Frank Sigverston was runner up to Nick Ankovic at Berenpore in the, in the uh, national, in the, uh, in the singles, yep. at, at the nationals. And. Uh, I can remember people saying, where's Hekinahuna and who's Frank Sigverston? And runner-up to Nikankovic. Yeah, and, the, uh, and, I, and that was the year the Nationals were at Berenport. And on the way through, uh, Frank Sigverston uh, picked up some pretty big scalps. One no more than Ivan Kostinich that he, yep. that he picked up on the way through. Prado coming down to the jack, sitting inside. Uh, just doesn't quite sit inside the shot bowl. Good, good leading from. Three twice. Yeah. Both the uh, the lead here for Miriam Ashworth and Lisa Prado certainly giving the you know the sides a, a a good starting chance. Getting another good bowl coming in here from uh, Miriam. Going to sit inside her own bowl and sit on top. That's good leading for a very good leading. Well, yeah, the thing. March tracks very good. No, no. Now, no, no, no. <coughs> now, if you're starting to, build, starting to build the head, you actually want 
Lisa Bradeau not going under the head. You want to sit in outside sit the head yeah. so you can then play down on the other hand. Otherwise, you're going to finish up with a jack low bowl, which is not going to be effective. Well, it's cutting because that's... Just as you predicted. The, the, the shot for Carlton, and two bowl triples especially, is on the outside of the head here at 4 o'clock. Then you can change your hand and play through the red bowl. At the moment, you're trying to play to a one bowl target and, and, and your instruction is under the head. Yep. While the other side can draw away to the heart's content. So lower the jack is going to beat Janelle Fruit and Linda Ralph. It's possibly the worst bowl we've seen Janelle play. Yeah, so it's been very consistent. On the backhand is the Carlton Cornwall runner-up in the New Zealand champion and champion singles. A couple of weeks back, you'll notice uh, Linda Ralph delivers a bowl, folds the arms, does that little... Now, The point, the point is, as well here, David, is you're not going to build a scoring head inside the head. You're only nope. going to build that scoring head outside the head. So that's the concentration point outside the head, not inside the point, not inside the head. I know you effectively put, got only a chance of ones at the absolutely. Moment. Now, well played here by Janelle Fru. No, she's going to go underneath. Now you forget about that shot now. Because you got, you've got the same against the call. See, but you've got to be outside it, so you give yourself an opportunity on the other hand. I know I might sound quite pedantic about this, oh. things, but you know, when you watch thousands of bowls literally yep. over a, over many moons, you know, over many moons, uh, you know, it's um, now. So here for the Carlton Cardinal side is they've now created a head where they can only possibly score one shot. So they haven't got a usable bowl anywhere. No. Three in front, one right out to the side. And that's where I, my view that, that from a skipping point of view you're forgetting about the head and saying look, draw to me out this side here get the other side of the head and then we can, mm. then we can do something. If this game continues in this vein, it'll be one they'll need to forget very quickly when they get to post section. Yeah, yeah, but absolutely, because it's it's you know it's not always about having the shot; it's actually building the head to get the shot. Yep. And you've got to give respect to your opposition, who have played a very very good bowl to put themselves in a scoring opportunity. You've then got to create your opportunity by getting the bowls played to create that effectiveness later on throughout the head. 9-7 now at Queenstown leading Havelock North. The sun pouring in down here in this lovely test day, test day Saturday in Wellington. Correct. I'm not sure what the forecast is for, night, but for tonight, but I've got a feeling it's not great. Oh, really? Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, I was highly optimistic. We're looking out here to the... Yep. Is that why I'd be looking to the north there? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, looking to the north, it's a blue sky and some night white puffy cloud. So here is Karen Hema. Now, around here changes very quickly. I was, Steve Beale rang me on his way down from Tauranga the other day when he was driving to ask about using the new road or not. And I said to him, it's beautifully fine here. And 10 minutes after I talked to him, it was raining. Well, I must say the new road's great, by the way. Oh, it's good. Brilliant. Absolutely. Long overdue, as we, yep. we, we, we all know that. But uh, it's there now. and It's it, quite steep in parts. Yeah, but, it, but uh, well, for those people who haven't been on the road, uh, it's well worth just taking mm. a look down, because it's an engineering masterpiece. You know, the way they've got other hills where they've got all the, for the water flows coming down off, because obviously it's yep. it's pretty high country, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing that they opened up that Cabot Expressway. And for those of us that don't live over there but have travelled regularly up the old State Highway 1, you just couldn't believe 
the land you can see around you on the expressway, oh, yeah. and now on Transmission Gully. You just don't expect to find big plots of land. No, I, I we remarked about that coming down, actually, um, because uh, I just think it's an absolute masterpiece of uh, what, what they've constructed there. And another one. Yeah, and she finally oh, drew that dr inside bowl. Oh, yeah, it's got inside that inside bowl. That. Uh, one, two, uh, four, eight, uh, eight, so four eight. No, and how they've got how they they you know, they know because they will collect a lot of water up in those hills yeah. up there, wouldn't they? So they've ritually created off the hills their own water tables for all that that water to come. Yep to come down um, some of it looks like well looks like streets or roads coming down there because there's some some big channels there's some pretty big channels isn't there but um, yeah when one considers the the land mass that it's actually come through uh, yeah it's a massive uh, yeah it's uh, a, a great piece of road engineering long overdue as we know but it's it's there isn't it well, we went through to, I've only used it once so far, to go through to Levin for bowls, and it took 20 minutes out of our out of our trip from Upper Hutt. Really? Mm. And oh. that was in peak hour traffic. We were going against the traffic, but... Well, that tells you, doesn't it? That's mm. uh, yeah, no, it's a... Yeah, it's, a, it's certainly been much needed, and all they need to do now in Wellington is, from the inner city point of view, is just... Uh, open up that access way to the airport, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and the access to the airport's not great, but the traffic out to the Hutt Valley and <laughs> and the Porra side, yeah, it's still slow if you're not on transmission going. Yeah, there's, there's still some need. Or well, there's, there's been that argument for years to it, like in the, in the city part, isn't it, David? Yeah, yeah that... that the Basin Reserve is a fantastic facility. I think yeah. the Basin Reserve is a very special part of New Zealand sport. But yep. um, how long has that debate gone on for about... Well, uh, you know, we don't want to get into political stuff here, but the skip, let's get Wellington moving has been a long, slow process. It's, it's been a slow get moving, hasn't it? And, you know, with council elections and government elections coming up, we could be back to square one all over again. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, Oh, she knew then, did the Mary Ann thought she was light on green. Well, she's not far away to be she's light on green. green. She's yep. been fat. She gave it the hurry up when she Got let it go. We, just ran off it. Well, you could say she might have been half a bowl narrow. That was really it. Yep. It still got to the jack, but went to the side. Not really. She wanted to go through yeah, with it. Linda Ralph now that. on the mat. 8-4. Eight, 8-4. Four. Eight, four. It is the Martinborough side leading of course, who need this game to qualify. And as we said, knowing already through in the post-section play, we have got Karen Hema of Carlton Cornwall, who's out in front of us, Joe Edwards from Nelson. We have got the side, the Sanson skip side from uh, Wollston. Uh, they're through, and the Demunit combination from uh, Victoria here in Wellington. Uh, they have won their way through. And, of course, now we've got, hoping to get through, out in front of us is Tania Wheeler, who is leading 8-4 uh, from Martinborough in the Wairapa, uh, Onirahi from uh, Northland, uh, Waihopi from Invercargill, and Tyree of Dunedin. They are all playing now to endeavour to get yeah. that uh, elusive yeah. win to yeah. qualify for post-section play. And immediately after this, or this afternoon, we will have the uh, the on the uh, continuation of section play of the men's uh, the men's triples, and some of them played three and some played two yep. yesterday. So some today will have three rounds and some will have two. Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goodbye here from Linda Ralph. I think one of the one of the uh, live stream games is the Wellington team against Tolaga Bay. The upper hut team against Tolaga Bay, and I think that's they've both got one win, so that'll be a Ah, fantastic! And uh, great, yeah, you know, Vern Marshall, great, yeah, played the Tolaga Bay side. Great to see Vernon back out on the greens playing. He's had a few setbacks, has he? But it's also, you know, to see 
sides from over on the west coast, from from Tolaga yep. Bay, the far north. You know, it's just it's uh, it's great to have them here. So Tanya Wheeler urging the bowl on of Janelle Fru. Wasn't that far? Just a couple of rolls low. Having a look at who's got the shot. Eight, eight four. Eight four. Martin Borough leading Carlton Cornwall. Nine eight. Queenstown leading Havelock North in the other match. They're playing in ten. It's and actually quite a good game on that other rink. Yeah. It doesn't matter to anybody because they can't qualify, but the bowls have been pretty consistent. And we're at playing in nine here with 56 minutes left on the clock of the uh, two-hour clock. Karen Heeman out on the mat. Not sure who's actually got shot here. Play on her backhand. And she's going to reach down to the jack or pole. Trying to get all the way back now. Going to go by. Removed a bowl out of the head. Oh, no, it's... I did it again. Looked at the... It's a long screen. I was watching that one too. Yeah. Yeah. So Tanya Wheeler now on the mat. Leading 8 4 and wanting this game to uh, qualify. And just going to come up a few bowls lower. The jack will sit inside the uh, Janelle Fru bowl. So, indication. It's a tight little run well, shot. I, <laughs> indication is from Linda Ralph. Play through with reaching weight on the forehand. Playing well, that's more than reaching yes. weight. And it's going to go wide of the target. <laughs> so, Tony Wheeler, the Martin Borough skip. Got a big smile Got on her face. Got a big smile on her face. Looking from our angle, it looks like the yellow bowl looks... Don't, oh, yeah, and I can see why Tanya had a big smile yeah. on her face. She must think she's got shot and chickened out on that one. Yeah, well, when well, we you saw the measure go up as well, you could yeah. see the tip of the measure. 9-4 now to the Martinborough side, trying to get their way through into uh, post-section play, uh, starting here tomorrow morning. It probably will be nine o'clock because there will only be at most four games in the women's competition. Correct. Well, we had, we did, uh, we, uh, where were we last week? Danita, yes. And we had a later start. And also tomorrow, hopefully, I'll get some more guidance from um, Stephen Beale. Might be able to announce a couple of North South teams. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, we're. Uh, Waiting in anticipation for that one? Well, we? just waiting on the confirmation for the. It's actually. Uh, two players from the South Island, uh, which Dave Edwards, I believe, is uh, just waiting to uh, confirm uh, with Steve. And then we will have the announcement of uh, the North and South sides in a celebration of bowls, which will be played uh, in conjunction uh, the same weekend as the Bowls New Zealand annual meeting uh, to be held in Dunedin and also the Bowls New Zealand uh, awards function, uh, uh, which uh, uh, will also be at the same, on, the, on the Friday night uh, in Dunedin. Hopefully, of course, by then we will have um, some medalists who yep, have uh, from, some Commonwealth Games success. Uh, yeah, hopefully, we'll have some of those. And there is also, I believe, and I don't know who at this stage, but I think there's a Hall of Fame. Um, nominee to be put forward as well to go into the uh, Bowls New Zealand uh, yep. Hall of Fame. So uh, it'll be a full weekend of bowls down there 
uh, at the uh, north-south match, of course, and the sides will consist of uh, a mixed side, and also in the side must be, uh, each side must be one player over 65, uh, one para or visually impaired player, and one age, uh, 20, one, 25, not a hundred percent sure of that. So, yeah. So there's uh, some parameters to try and uh, highlight the, uh, well, not try, but uh, to confirm the diversity of uh, of the sport. And the North South match will be played at the stadium in Dunedin, and uh, with yeah, some interesting formats in it, and we'll be celebrating that. Um, it's really a celebration of, of, of uh, bowls and recognising some achievements. And yeah, you're drawing that close, Linda. It's the North-South match we've had. You know, it's been on the drawing board now for a couple of years, but yep. COVID sort of uh, put it to bed. So it will be great to have the North-South send a, a North-South uh, match again uh, on the uh, uh, on the calendar. So Linda Rolf coming down towards the jack. Well, sure. There, yeah, it's, uh, it's a carpet you can't be short on, can you? No. <laughs> You've got to remember to push on carpet. Absolutely. And it was interesting last week in Dunedin, I had with me uh, Elliot Mason, who's in the, so he's playing in the Southland side here. Uh, and he was talking about playing at the stadium in Dunedin. How all the time you just have to remember that really that good. every bowl you're playing is a plane a line and weight a meter through the head mm. uh, yep. because whereas on the the cotcher or, or manutota starweed whatever uh, you know you are going to get some run out of the bowl but on the carpet when it decides to stop uh, it stops and there's no and then as we mentioned yesterday, when it's stopped, if you hit it, it skids to start with. It Absolutely. doesn't get up and roll straight away. Wow. Well, this complex, though, this 9-I uh, complex, uh, it's an absolute... Well, <clears throat> it's fantastic for the whole Wellington community. And, you know, there's some foresight from um, a lot of people, or a group of people. Interestingly and enough, it actually came from an outsider to Bowles. Uh, because I was CEO of Bowles Wellington at the time. Yeah, right. This came on to the box. And a guy who used to work for one of the trusts down here, Polaris Trust, and now is in the, well, was, he might have moved on again, but he was Council Facilities Trust, came to see me and said, if we found a bit of land that we could build you a three-green club and, a, and an indoor stadium, would you be interested? And I said, where the hell would you find that in the Hart Valley? And he said at Milden Hall Park, which just happened. This used to be the old home of Park Avenue. Correct. As yes. you're probably aware. So the three greens were effectively already already here. One had been changed to Patonk, which was changed back as part of the process. The old club rooms was knocked down. The tennis courts disappeared that used to be outside, which were well and truly out of, over out of use because of the the wear and tear, and had been turned into a car park. And the, the uh, Patonk piece got moved out the back of the car park. And the council actually had that vision. Um, I don't think the bowling clubs actually started it, but obviously got into it in earnest once it uh, became a proper a proposal. So the, the geographics here tailor-made themselves, didn't they, for an idea? Ev yep. Everything was... It, it wasn't as though there had to be a massive, like, earthworks construction or... Uh, Not green-wise, yeah. no. The, the, the layout, so to speak, good bowl here coming in from Tania Wheeler through the port, sits inside, well, just went by, but certainly found the line. Hema now on the forehand, first bowl, short. The green furthest away from here was the old Patonk piece, so there was a bit of work done out there to reinstate that. But it didn't take long to come right either. No, oh, I think it's a fantastic complex. Oh. Well, yeah. drew the shot for four. Yep. How long did that take? All right. Well, 
Well, perhaps a lot of it comes down, Dave, to as well, question, when you ask yourself that question, I think you really got to ask that question to yourself seriously, of... <laughs> Because that's how. <laughs> yep. And a particularly experienced bowler, isn't she? Yeah, well, absolutely. And, and really, it's interesting. We have been mic'd up. She really answered, uh, asked and answered her own, <laughs> her own question, didn't she? So, it's very handy for, though. Now only won the difference. That's not what Martin Burrow wanted, was it? That, uh, no, definitely not what Martin Burrow needed. That uh, Jack Trail and really. Uh, um, Tanya Wheeler wasn't very far away of getting a bowl, a good bowl in behind the head with her last bowl, just sort of sailed through. So here now is uh, Lisa Prado on the mat, very proficient as we know, lead. And what do we got here? Well, it's got updates. the Blenheim v Buckland, which is a fun, fun game, has been written up here. But it is Blenheim leading 11 9. Wilston Park and Parapatarumi didn't play because Wollstone Park have already qualified. Tairua from uh, the Thames Valley did not play against Wanganui because of the qualifications not required there, right? Then we've got Foxton Beach, who are out of contention. They're up against Onirahi, who, of course, can, uh, can qualify. And it is 7-5, 7-5 to Onirahi. And in the Tairi match, up against Orewa, and it is Tyree that need the game yeah, to qualify. It is Tyree leading by a very bare margin, 10-8 after nine ends, 10-8. And Waihopi, of course, who is a possible, uh, up against Hara Park. And they're leading 10 shots to 5. And, of course, as we said here, we've got Martin Burrett leading 9-8. So your comments still holding, Dave. That, um, they're all in front. They're all in front. <laughs> Some tight ones, anything could change in a couple uh, of Touch of the jack here from Prado to her own pole. That's superb leading by the Carlton Cornwall lead player. And that certainly gets you uh, your head off to a good, a really good opportunity to build from here, uh, Dave, doesn't it? It does, yep. As we've been saying all along, if the lead's got a couple of good bowls in, the other team's under pressure right from the Oh, game. absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, absolutely so. And just going back to the skidding of the carpet and yeah, so forth, the one of the other noticeable things in carpet it's compared to outdoor is how many bowls stay up. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. They stand up on their running edge. So that means then they're on the move all the time. Aren't they? Well, they can be on the yeah. move all the time, whereas sitting down as they do so often on the natural surface. Yep. It's just harder, isn't it, to to uh, get that, that movement onto the bowl. Natural surface is just, okay. I'd say, 80% of the bowls come to rest and then fall in. It's an inter Going forward, it's an interesting uh, discussion point, isn't it, is where do we get to or what's the ratio of artificial or... Yeah, artificial or Alternative surfaces, I'd say, yep. versus grass, cotchalat, manutoto. And, you know, from myself, as a, a, as no longer playing, but what a great response here, all but, all but from the Janelle Fru. Um, so, you know, where is and what is the right blend? What's the right... Because, we, you know, I, I still f the opinion that there is still nothing better for this, from my love of the sport is in a lovely day to get out here on these natural surface greens in the sunshine and uh, enjoy the outdoor surroundings. I'm very much a natural green player as well. I'd much prefer playing on naturals even if they have got some little quirks. Well, it's part of the challenge of the game, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's the same if you play golf. Not every fairway is the same, is it? Or, no. or the undulation of the green, so to speak. So you can't expect every grass surface that you play on that's going to be, you know, the like your dinner table, is it? It's, no, that's right. It, it, and, it, I, and I think it's it depends on the club's motives for putting an ash or an artificial green in. But that's they a do very need good to realise that it doesn't take away all their costs. No, it does not. In business, you can write off depreciation. You don't have to put it aside. But in this, if you're writing a green off, 
you do need to put the money aside because you will have to replace it. Well, it's fair to say going back in Auckland, as the skips change over, the Martin Borough leading in this must-win game for them, 9-8, two down on the head. Yeah, in the early days of the, the, the artificial, uh, the, the uh, Tiger turf and that being laid in Auckland, it was more about clubs didn't have a greenkeeper, so they put down mm. the surface. Forgetting, though, that we actually really need to, let's say, put away 25% of our green revenue for yep. replacement scenarios. Now, we had clubs in Auckland who, after eight years, seven, eight years, and or even less than that because the greens aren't maintained, then didn't have the money to be able yep. to put another surface down. And I noticed we've got Howick. They're about to go to a jewel covered you know they've got a yep. big membership they've got a, a good financial base good community support but you've got to be doing it as well with the right capital and known revenue behind you as well don't you, Other, yep, you do. otherwise you do you'll lose out in the long run won't you yeah and and as as we said you've got to realize you're still got to do maintenance absolutely uh, you know you see the, the artificials that haven't had maintenance on them they get moldy they do get mold yeah they just you know this one here we talked about last night, it has to be vacuumed. That's a huge job. It's a big job, it is. Because this is a new carpet, and like your home home carpets, the first little while you've got them, the fluff comes off. Just interesting here with Tony Wheeler playing this shot, two down on the head. See, I just thought she might have played yeah. that with a wee bit more weight. And a bit narrow, a bit tighter. And a bit tighter down, just yep. down inside that bowl of that uh, uh, Karen Hema bowl out to the side. Uh, I just wondered whether there was <coughs> more weight is actually the answer. Thank well, you. The last few ends this game's begin to change around, hasn't it? It has. Thank you, Linda Ralph. When you well, and then she moves back into the lines. <laughs> well, she's now she's got to attack this head really. I, the danger here, Dave, is you're just playing what I'd call. Just about way. maybe shots. Yeah. And the thing about not getting it last bowl, that last bowl that's come in from... It's closed the door. Is cl well, it hasn't closed it completely, but it's certainly made it more perilous now if you get an edge on it. Well, Tony, we are very again, quick, well, very quickly turned you back on that. Bowls, it's coming down towards the counting area. This is a sterling attempt, though, well, I can tell you. It wasn't bad. She did lose two, but... <laughs> Well, Karen, this is an, I'm sorry, that they'll have a look, they'll measure, they don't need an instruction book on the way <laughs> past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that was two to Lisa Bredeau. Yep. Was it two or was it three? Because oh, they took out two and then they were measuring, weren't they? Well, now, all of regard two. to it is, well, we're on the home run, 39 minutes left. We played 12, and it's now Carlton Cornwall jumped to the front after yep. that handy lead, which the Martin Borough side... Had built up at the start. Yeah. They built it up, and a lot of that's come about from this lady who's just delivered the jack. Correct. It's getting bowls on the head early. Not putting themselves at risk of dropping fours or, you know. The two leads were probably both playing very well at the start because Lisa, I don't think, Lisa had Bredeau's too got many bad ends. No, but, she, but, but I think the mark the lead's now gone off a little bit. Yeah, the last three ends, I think you've seen Lisa Bredeau sort of just get that edge and consistency down towards the centre line. And that's exactly... It's exactly what we're seeing, just going by past the centre line by a metre, but in and around the head. And, you know, that's the scoring zone, isn't it, really? Yep. And you're right that the lead here, Mary Ann Ashworth, has been going exceptionally well, but just the last three ends just didn't have that same consistency. And for those watching, you know, good luck, of course. Well, not good luck. All the best and best wishes to uh, our New Zealand side, who are uh, very shortly to uh, embark upon. 
Tomorrow or Monday? Is it close to the holiday, don't they? Yeah, it's... Um, they're about to uh, embark upon their, their mission. So, bit of humour, <laughs> bit of humour just sort of uh, came our way. Hope you enjoyed things. Uh, Life, all the best, mate. Up there at home. And, I, and I, look, I hear you've got the, uh, well, I don't know, I know you were told to take another test. I hope uh, all's good, mate. And uh, I know you're not 100% at, at the moment, but all the best, mate. So, again, leadership. Leadership below has got that small centre yep. line, just yep. putting it behind the jack, open head to draw to. You know, this is a, at, and at this part of the game, this is when you, you this is when you run your win home. Well, and if you look at that head now, Mary Ann spread both her bowls all over the shot. We can see one and we can't Correct. see the other. Very good. Very good. So okay, centre line. She'll get back on form very shortly. Yeah, very much so. And again, if we look early on in this game, Janelle Frew with the yellow bowls yep. was very, very consistent, wasn't she? Very, very consistent. And certainly enjoys the game now, doesn't she? You can oh, see that. She thoroughly, she thoroughly enjoys it. It's going to be in the inside of the centre line. They're going to drip away. And we're at the point now from the point of view of, of uh, Tania Wheeler's side. She wants bowls on the head and a scoring yep. opportunity. Not for, for Tania to try and score one, isn't it? You need, you know, one's good, but you ha you're actually having to draw the shot, not building heads to sort of push your number up the board, is it? And Linda Ralph again, just not the same green here, is going to underline it a bit here and just slip by the jack, go by, goes, finishes at about, uh, about four o'clock over the head. And to me now, this is where on this. As we go in 12, Janelle through the number two for Tanya Wheeler. This is when I need you to draw me a shot and regretfully not, not going to do, do so. Under, well under that mm. centre line and going to drift away. Had good weight to, very good weight to draw. You talk about Janelle enjoying the game. Janelle was front and centre of the Martinborough Brewery, Janelle did the front area. Oh, really? Because her and her husband Hayden, they owned it till recently and put it on the market, so Janelle's very much a people person, always got a smile. Well, she seems a very Happy bright word. and jovial person, and mm. she, she seems to be, you know, enjoying it. And uh, I see now the, the men starting to arrive in here. The sun, that sun streaming into the place right now, isn't it, uh, Dave? We've got beautiful conditions. Yep. and. But we're inside, of course. But it would be nice playing out there today, though, wouldn't it? There's well, no, no wind. Would be would be nice temperature-wise and no wind, but I'm not sure the green would be playable. No, I don't think so. Bowls would be halfway up to the bias line in mud, I would think. So, oh, you There's so much rain here of recent times. It's just incredible. It's all the best, as I said earlier, to our New Zealand side. Uh, and we just now sit and wait for your journey. And we all know it's for any player to uh, have that opportunity to play at yeah, a Commonwealth Games, any bowler, well, any athlete, firstly to be deselected, <clears throat> whatever your sport may be, to uh, participate in an event like the Commonwealth Games is a, is a sort of, uh, yeah, it's a big part of one's sporting life to be able to oh, participate at that level. Tony Wheeler, knowing the shot has to be drawn here, has it got the weight? Wheeler needs another metre. Doesn't see. No, she doesn't got it. Putting pressure on herself. Two down at least on the head. We're still a metre here for Karen Hemer to draw an effective. It's the, old at the, moment, isn't it? the wheels are starting to fall off. They are. They're very wobbly at the moment, <laughs> Dave, aren't they? Yeah, they, uh, they need a replenishment of, uh, of oil on the backhand. 
is Hema. And again, under the line and under weight. Under weight and leaving plenty of room for Tanja to try and draw this. Well, Tanya just needs she had the line, just ideally needs a meter on her last pole. And will draw a shot on the forehand now. Oh, goes to the fingernails. <laughs> Have I got it right? Well, I it's think she's on a better bad, line. It? Has it got the it's weight? Got the Definitely weight. on a yes, line to count. Well played, Tania well Wheeler. Played, Tania. Well played. <coughs> and you can see Janelle waving around. Yeah, the Julie applause from those around because that was nearly a down and out. Really, Dave. Oh, it was trouble if she didn't get that. Uh, Ian's going against. We're now locked up at uh, 10 apiece as we go into end 13. Half an hour left oh, on the clock. Th that was literally <coughs> close to a four shot turnaround. Correct. And that's part of the point of the game and just so often it happens the team now right Tony has drawn us the shot we gives them the incentive again we, we respond accordingly because as you rightly said Dave that the, the the with without the Janelle and Marianne they just had a two or three years at us where they just sort of haven't had that same consistency that Tony Wheeler plays a, a bowl like that at the back end of the finish of the 12th end and hello we're at start again she's all you know anybody's game so well played by the Martinborough skip on the forehand now is their lead with the pink balls and well there we go just what we spoke about has sort of got the sure it's over the head but you know all of a sudden instead of being eight feet short is in and around, but here is the person who, for the Carlton Cornwall side, of my view, who has really made the, the big difference. Absolutely. And it's not about having the shot with every bowl; it's about the consistency of uh, of where you're going. So here is. I find oh, that, she doesn't like <laughs> this one. I find that one of the hardest things to teach new leads. You don't need to have the shot. Oh, all the time. absolutely not. It's a, so. Yeah. Well, you yeah. see now. That, 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 yep. Yeah, shot ball, girl. Great ball. Send the ball out. Stay fixed on the mat. I don't even hit the ball. Yes, can I? May I? And uh, duly rewarded was the lead for the Carlton Cornwall side. And as you rightly said, Dave, you know, from a coaching point of view, you know. If you use Leach and Bordeaux as an as, as an example, you know, take it, take your time, take your time on the mat, and you'll see doesn't jump straight on the mat. No. Nope. Visualising now is Leach and Bordeaux knows where her position on the mat is, looks where her arm is. You watch your hit. Nothing will move. Nothing moves. Nope. Everything just stays. Gives the body language. Oh, I've got that one a bit tight or a bit wide or whatever. And again, breaking in towards the head. Now, to me, there's leading as sure. She might have liked to have been a meter. Foot and, on, uh, foot on, but just in behind. But <coughs> the point is, you've, you're, you're nullifying opportunities immediately for your, for your opposition. You've got two effective bowls and... It's about, it's, well, to me, it's, it's about getting into your head as well about, and you, as you rightly said, Dave, you don't have to have yeah, a shot all the okay. side. And from the Carlton side now, you don't want the shot. There I see Vern Marshall leaning up against the pole from the Tolaga Bay. Great to have people up from Tolaga Bay who... Uh, yep. Wouldn't venture that often down to Wellington, one would think, would they? And, but uh, great to have, absolutely fantastic for them to be here. Linda Ralph, now the last thing she wants to do is leave a rest, goes by, sits them behind the head, and that's fine. It's interesting, we had a real character from Bowles, New Zealand, used to be in Tolaga Bay by the name of Martin Christensen. Absolutely. What an ambassador he was for the game. You know, travelled all around the country, didn't he? Enjoyed. Oh. 
and did some crazy travelling too. He, <laughs> the number of times he'd drive 14 or 15 hours in his car, go to a meeting somewhere, and then come to Wellington. And yeah, he's, uh, it's interesting you say that. We have uh, 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 we've had some presidents of both New Zealand, and sometimes you know are a bit in, invisible to the general public of what they actually do. And you know, I, I refer you know to Martin. We were fortunate. We 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 had in Auckland. Um, uh, the president before last, uh, Jeanette Sinclair, who you know, yep. Jeanette travelled the country um, to, and has been you know, at the Carlton Club, uh, been, you know, just, and and sometimes we we think of presidents who are people who enjoy the, let's say, not the luxury of being president, but some of the, maybe perks that go with being mm. president, uh, but if I look at uh, uh, Martin Christensen, uh, uh, O'Connor, you know, uh, Mark O'Connor, yeah. Mark O'Connor, what a sterling job he did as president, getting out and about, going yep. to, you know, going to vast all around the countryside, going to tournaments and 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 waving the flag and being non-confrontational, and um, I think we've been fortunately blessed. Um, uh, Mike Spring is another one that springs to mind, you know, from yep. uh, Rotor Rotorua. So this now becomes a big end here for Tania Wheeler. Hasn't got a bowl really in Kui, in Kui of the scoring area. Ten all, down on the head. I take a bit of credit for Mark O'Connor because um, I encouraged him to come onto the Bowls Wellington board. Oh well, it was a good idea to get him on bo in, in, uh, involved because yeah. he's uh, he loves it. Yep. He's passionate, and well, I, I well. Mark's pretty passionate about anything that he decides to embark upon. He's one of those. He's been involved in a lot of sports. He That's how I met him. Because um, Bowles Wellington's headquarters are in the Palora Sports House. Oh, right. In Wellington. And Mark was sort of in the same vicinity as me as. Well, he was He was general manager of New Zealand Swimming after the That's review. Right. When the then general manager left. And. I knew Mark played bowls at Whitby and we got talking and I got him to stand for our board and from there it's gone further. Yeah, well, he's uh, he, he did a sterling job. Yep. Now, the, the, the idea here surely now for for Tania Wheeler is she wants second shot, isn't it? She wants to be able to draw in this gap somewhere. Get second shot. Yep. Sc scoreboard second shot, so important here. Got the bowl out on a fairly good wide arc. How far is it coming back? Looking at this one, is there number two? Is it coming back? Comes into side. Oh, well, well played, Tania Wheeler. Well played. She would start that head down at four down. Yep. A, a one down result is good as scoring. Oh, absolutely. Still another bowl to come, unfortunately. There, there is, but it's, it's certainly in a better position, weren't they, than what they were a couple of uh, bowls ago. So quickly some updates in but a moment in the the game between Blenheim and Buckland, which is a non-qualifying match. Uh, it is Blenheim that is leading Buckland to the county's Manukau 13-12, 13-12. And in the game between Onirahi and Foxton Beach with Onirahi needing needing this uh, one to win, well, we it is the Foxton Beach side who are now leading 12 ends. And it is 10-7 to Foxton Beach. 10-7 to Foxton Beach after 12. The Tyree match, who need it? Ooh, it's close as well, isn't it? 12-10. 12-10 to the... Uh, uh, Tyree. Barbara Archer skip side. 12-10. And in that way, Hope from uh, Southland, who need this match as well. They're looking comfortable at tw after 12 ends. They're leading 13-5. 13-5. So the game, the or the Tyree game, that's close. That can go any way. The only Rahi game, well, only three shots of difference. That could go either way. And this one in front of us here, with Carlton Cornwall leading 11-10, could also go either way. So it's how interesting on that report that we've had three three progress reports, and that Fox and Beach only Rahi game has been. Yeah, it has, isn't close it? Close all the way. All the way, it's been close, and and it's interesting. At at 12 ends, though, Anurahi were in front, 7-5, mm. 
Now they're behind 10, 10, 7. 10 7. See? Lisa Bredeau, that's to me, as you rightly said, it's uh, in two bowl triples. This is certainly the way you, uh, even if you don't score, you negate, don't you? You attack and you defend from what your lead does. And looking at that scoreboard, at least, um, Tanya did get second shot because they only dropped one, so that was... Well, that was a very good result. Result. That was as good a scoring as I say, it wasn't it? Because that head was looking, oh, well played, just over the head from yep. the lead there from uh, Mary Ann Ashworth, just going by the head. So you'll see, and you, you, if you watch Lisa Bredeau, every ball, nothing changes. Correct. Yep. Nothing changes. Head stays, sits, hasn't moved, now up. Very still. Right, so it's... Come on. Just about take a coaching manual off her, couldn't you? Yeah, you can. And there, there you are, you get yeah. that effectiveness around the jack. See that? And the skip's very happy with it. Yeah, well... <laughs> Why wouldn't you be? I'm saying kindly that it's sort of needed. Because... Mm. <laughs> um, you know, you get in that bowl off the, getting those bowls off the start of your head makes such a big difference. <laughs> and there's the steering, as you can see, under the line, unfortunately. And just a bit the, shy when they're down. Good drawing in this bowl. Oh, that part in the jack. The side pink. A little short and narrow one's not what you need when you... Marginally behind with two ends to go and looking to qualify. Absolutely. And I'm sure Tane Wheeler, after winning the singles, would be delighted if she can bring a through team through yep. into post-section play. Uh, I don't know how many members Martin Borough have got, but uh, a lovely bowl from Linda Ralph there. Sits right in that jack line and, you know, all of a sudden, but in saying that, in saying that, they got the advantage of a bowl just in behind the head. Come, yep. that come down. Yeah. <laughs> now, so you can either get the jack or the other shot option, of course, is to play down onto Linda Ralph bowl, get a turn onto it. Jack sitting in behind, right on the line to the Mary Ann uh, yep. Ashworth bowl. May not play it now, but it's certainly a shot that's there for them. Tania Wheeler. What, and well, the last thing you want here is your team to go lower the jack and close that line off. My view, David, is play it while it's there. Yep, and that's the last two bowls from yep. Tanya's side yep. that, have, that have been just the opposite of what you need. Play it. Short and narrow. Play it now. Linda Ralph, Karen Hemer's clapping it already. Well, wants it outside, you know. Well, it's coming round the back, which is where they need it. So, Tony Wheeler having faith in her number two to draw me. Well, I suppose as well, what she's also saying is let's get another bowl on the head. Is the or at least behind the head. Or at least behind the head. We but certainly don't need another short one. No, we don't. So Janelle through here. Well, she certainly got it out on the wide side. How far is it going to come back? How much weight's it got to get all the way back? Needed another yard, really, of coming back, didn't it? So, Tony Wheeler, you play the shot now? Play the first, don't you? Yes, definitely. Can't leave it to your last ball. You might not get a shot. It might be covered by this. Still got an opportunity of getting it. You know, if she moves it out there, it's still going to be drawn, doesn't it? Yep. You know, that's... And... I'll just show you something here. It's still got to be drawn. I'd have confidence that you're still going to lay a good shot, a good hit. Yeah. The voice, Macbeth. John Macbeth, yep. Yes. So John Macbeth and myself were born on... I heard you say the other day, the same day. Everything's the same. Yeah. Yeah. Except the parents. <laughs> yeah, John and I both put on the same day, and it's been and um, uh, Nigel Galden as well. Uh, yep. Uh, Nigel's always got a. Few, he's got a bit more. He, he's younger, obviously, than than uh, Mc, uh, John McBeth and myself. But yeah, John and I both born same day. 
someone's mic come off. So we're just going now to the one, you know, we, we're just going to take the one game now. Oh, Got, that'll be where the mic's just come from that yeah, Sue Wave was holding off up for the, us. Uh, off the Queenstown uh, match. So, oh, uh, Tania, get back d down there, confident. looking at that, forcing shot through those bowls yeah, that we're talking I, about. I just don't think it's she on the hand. She may be looking at the forehand on uh, it. Yeah, and I don't think that's the hand to look at it. Yeah. Because you're more tempted to play a reduction shot there than a scoring shot. Yeah. Um, I, I think you've got to be playing a scoring shot. And in my viewpoint, looking at the head, it's more a scoring shot coming down the V. Down the V yep. to... Definitely needs to have a wee bit of weight though, so as to get some movement, Dave. Otherwise, you're not going to get movement on the and she She's got has weight. Got weight, all right. And is it going to come low or high? That's the danger. Correct. Cut, didn't it? You're not cutting going the other way. No. But in saying that now, I just they wonder. could split those two. Well, I'm just going to say, can she now. Can, play the hand that we spoke about and play it with quite a bit of weight mm -hmm. and actually get a full split on yep. those two bowls. Martin Borough trailing 11-10 over Carlton Cornwall, needing this one to qualify. And it is Carlton holding two shots, one of Linda Ralph's bowls, of course, and the other one of the lead, Lisa Perdot, and... And quite a number of spectators sitting here watching this match now, bathed in sunshine. <laughs> there is, look at that sunshine streaming through those windows. Well, uh, it's in behind, they've got two in behind the head there, Linda Ralph Bowl and a Karen Hema Bowl. And... Tanya walking back, looking for inspiration. She's got that very, always got that very, mm, it'll be okay, it'll be okay look. So I personally, from my view, sitting here, Dave, I think that split is a change of hand. Yep. The split with weight is not on the hand that she played. She played yeah. Because the good thing is the bowl in front gives you a natural line of where you need to be to get the split. And you could get the split off the two bowls. Fourteen minutes to go, so time's not really a, a No, they'll be into the last end after this bolt, unless it's a kill. Tony Wheeler trailing eleven ten on the, the mat. She's holding that bowl, I think she's on the forehand again, is she not? Yeah. She is. No. Well doesn't like it. Where is it? Well she could get a wick here. <laughs> hear the crowd. From even from here. You can. Now, uh, uh, that's game set a match. Yeah, it's just game set and match. I just think it was on the wrong hand. And, yep. I, and, I, and I think, sadly, I think Tania got herself into a mindset yeah. where she didn't let the ball go first, did she? Correct. But she wasn't sure what hand she was really playing. And I... Uh, and I um, it definitely yeah. looked like a pressure ball, didn't it? Absolutely, it did. Had glue in the hand, mate. <laughs> Steve out there lining up the next team to put their discs on. Yes, he's uh, talking to my brother. Oh, is it? Is it? That's my brother, Tony, that's playing for Wellington. And we were due to have two brothers in there, but Mark, well, our youngest brother, his wife contacted COVID on Wednesday, so he's now in isolation. You're locked away? <laughs> he's, uh... Three. So it was, so... So that's end of story, I think. End of story the, for Martin Borough, 17-10, and really, you know... No, 14-10, but... 14-10, uh, sorry to go to the last. But, you know... Too much consistency from lead. Ab absolutely. To allow them to get a big number. Uh, but I also think if you come back from Tanya's point of view and think about that, if she was to watch that end again, my view, she didn't 
didn't give herself a chance on a percentage shot, which I wouldn't have left it to my last bowl either. No. You no, know, because you had to create a scoring You've scenario. You've got to take it when you can. Absolutely. So looking good for the Carlton Cornwall side to continue their winning way and, of course, will be there in post-section play tomorrow. It'll be a struggle now for the Wairapa side after dropping that number then to make their way into, um, into post-section play. Lisa's a little bit over this time, but still in the scoring zone. But you well, and the thing is, the lines there, yep. Dave, isn't it? That's the other, you know, very good thing. Of course, this will bring us to the conclusion. Uh, this match here will bring us the conclusion of qualifiers. Well, I'm picking at the most. We're looking at this one here now. We're looking at the most of seven. Seven. Yep. Uh, and of those other games, you need could. Well, the Tyree game... He hasn't, he hasn't done them up yet, but the... So the Tyree game... Tyree's was still, only two the difference. That was very close to, wasn't it? Yep. So, at this stage, it's safe Odera, to say... he's three behind at the last report, so... Well, it could be... Yeah. Could be six. Could be six, couldn't it? Yep. So, we'll, we'll know within the next uh, 20 minutes to half an hour how many qualifiers that there are in this, the Somerset National... Champion of Champion Women's Triples. We said at the outset, Kevin, that you expect upsets in these sort of circumstances, and then the way it started, the four quali the four yeah. qualifiers <laughs> were leading. They all were. But our prediction's now probably right, that they're not all going to make it. No, they won't. They won't, indeed. And, of course, the men also to shortly get underway. And uh, the sun's streaming down, uh, really, now. Yep. Uh, no wind, well, it doesn't look to be any yep. wind out there. And, but of course, as far as we're talking about sports for the rest of the day, we're looking more down that way, aren't we? Yeah, the sun will come round into those windows by the end of the day. And uh, of course, for those who are going to uh, the Cakedown tonight, enjoy the experience. And let's just hope that, uh, yeah, we just have a better result than last week. Already after two bowls, Wairapa don't look to be have too many chances here. No, they don't. They've got one on one side of the head, one on the other, and they're both more than likely five feet from uh, yep. where the yellow jack sits. So, yeah. But I must admit, I have been very impressed with this, uh, Janelle Fru, her, yep. her, her, uh, her encouragement and her, uh, yeah, just, just yeah. a nice advertisement for how she plays yep. the game. And her enthusiasm just... Here she comes. It looks like she might get the reasonably close. Tania trying to encourage Just it to get the trail. Again. And next week, of course, we move to uh, to Napier. Hastings. No, Hastings, sorry. Goodness gracious. It's been, it's been quite a road trip the last... Has for you guys, yeah. Uh, it certainly has. And we'll be back at the very nice... Uh, uh, complex at, at Hastings and we're, we will be bringing you again uh, all the live action from uh, the fours Very good. and then we uh, our next major event of course after that will be uh, the north-south match after the uh, return of the Commonwealth Games players and that's our next uh, uh, big one that we'll be bringing and we're certainly looking forward to bringing that because it's a, a unique event so here it comes is this, is this going to get shot well it will but it needs uh, needed one like that a couple of ends ago correct <laughs> Tanya's still looking very pensive trying to work out how she gets how, out how can I do that well, with great difficulty Personally, I believe now there's a bowl on that kitty. She may have to drive and see if she can kill it. Yes, because there's no scoring opportunities there at all, is there? Let's look at this team sitting here working hard all day as they do, bringing this coverage. They do a wonderful job. But, oh, that's a, that's a change. 
I see raw carrots on the menu over there. And crackers. And crackers. Cameo creams. Well, I must admit that the, the, the culinary delights of this week certainly at this stage haven't uh, followed from what we had last week in Dunedin. We look like Ben Barber's sweet shop. <laughs> So Tania, now the time comes for Tania to decide exactly what she can do here. So oh, it's seven minutes, so it kills fine, isn't it? There's yep. still, you know, there's no. Doesn't matter the heat started, so that, it gets replayed. Uh, of finished. course, and they're not going to uh, no time barriers. So no. you know, you've got no scoring chance, so you try and kill it, don't you? you know, Absolutely. And, and then say, right, well, yeah, we're going to score for the next end. And if she takes the yellow one out, then she's got a chance at the beer kitty. But if she doesn't ever go with the first one, so Tania wheel up. Making her way back to the mat and will be attacking this head, one would assume. And it's really been this back end of the game, hasn't it, uh, Dave? Where, Dave, where, Dave where, where, like Lisa Bredow certainly got on, on yeah. top uh, off the front. Yep, and the, the front two of Martinborough, who were playing pretty consistently at the start, have just had a few bad ends. There's and another one gone. One bullet left to qualify. And in two bowl triples, you, once you lose some effectiveness of bowls around the head, you know, you, 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 and skip, you're in a dilemma because, you know, second shot becomes your scoring shot, doesn't it? It's a, it's a, well, I, th I think two bowl triples is a great game. Uh, and it's, uh, I also think it's a great learning game for, for players as well because, um, you know, you know very well that uh, you know every bowl you got to you know, you got to be trying to make yeah. it work, don't you? you can't Karen, hide. Karen he has made sure she didn't give them any more help on no, the head by putting no, something close. No, there's no sense in going close. Uh, their only chance is to kill and really uh, uh, to play another end and, and and see what happens. But you know, at this point in time, it looks as though. It's going to be a struggle for one qualifier to make their way through. Those been the, the wire upper combination. Yep. From um, Martin Burra. Looks as though struggle for them now. And I think I just saw a little nod between Tania Wheeler then and uh, their number two, Janelle Fru. And really, uh, we've got it. This is a pretty tough. Give it yeah. your best shot, basically. It, absolutely. You uh, you're quite right, Dougie. Give it your best shot and see what happens. So on the mat is Tania Wheeler, who, of course, only but two weeks ago was the winner of the New Zealand champion of champion singles and a worthy winner at that. So here she is now on the mat, match down, and, of course, reducing any chance of qualifying. Here is Wheeler. I've attacked the head, trying to get to the jack on its way. Oh, it gave, gave that a real... She not happy with that either. Oh, well, it gave it the old hand twitch yep. um, right at the delivery point. Won't be for the team from uh, the White Rapper from the Martin Borough Club. They won't make their way into post-section play because they've been defeated by the Auckland combination of, out of Carlton Cornwall with Linda Ralph, uh, with uh, Lisa Bredow leading, who I must say was pretty... Uh, the accurate. back end of that game, really, Dave, was pretty... Uh, game of two halves, wasn't it? It certainly was, and she led the way, and that's when, interesting, that's when Carlton started to score, didn't they, yep. when she got those bowls off the front. The very ever-reliable uh, Linda Ralph playing it too, and Karen Hema skipping, and, of course, that Carlton Cornwall side have already qualified, and along with Joe Edwards... Uh, the, the side from Wollstone uh, uh, Park, they have qualified, as have, of course, the, uh, the, the uh, Wellington combination uh, from up on the, from Victoria, they have qualified. We await now, we know there's one non-qualifier and there's some other matches where things are very tight as they come down on those last few ends and we'll bring you all of that uh, live action uh, this afternoon. So we'll be back. When the men's triples get underway, my thanks to everybody here who's assisted throughout the section play of these uh, women, women's triples. Dave, we'll uh, see what happens this afternoon. We will.
Good afternoon and welcome back here to the Nine Eye Bowling Club where of course we're now into the men's section play, the their last rounds uh, getting underway here now. The women's section play has all finalised now here at the Somerset uh, uh, Tribbles, Champion Champion Tribbles, you'll see in front of you and yes, there is only five qualifiers in the women's that have won their way through. They are the Nina de Munich side of Victoria and Wellington, Karen Hema of the Carlton and Cornwall Club in Auckland, Joe Edwards of Nelson, uh, Jean Stratford of Waihopai in, uh, in Chicago, and the Debbie Sanson, Sanson side from the Wollstone Park uh, Club in Christchurch. And I can tell you, the last one I mentioned, uh, they are delighted that their side has got through one of the smaller clubs in Canterbury, and they've qualified for post-section play. There were going into the last round. There were, in fact, eight sides that could have qualified. And as the latter stages of that last round went by, uh, they just fell over one by one, fell over at the last hurdle. And to be, and I've got here with me here Sam Morton, who, who is one of the two sides who have already qualified in the post-section post play of the men's. That's the Tamuka side and the other qualifier that we know has won their way through is Nathan Glasson from the Elmwood Park side. Uh, club, they have won their way through into uh, post-sex and play and now we're trying to get those rounds of the men to all be completed and Sam, five qualifiers to the, well, that's a, she was a suicide round, that last round Pretty cut throat, wasn't it Kevin, yes It certainly was, it looked, it looked as though there was going to be at one stage, all of the sides that needed to get through were all leading um, yep. and then all, lo and behold, bang, away they go and uh, Five qualifiers, so uh, well that shows you've got a pretty tight overall competition, isn't it? There, oh, fit, yeah, fiercely fought out there, and um, I was just watching the TV rank in the last round there with Tanya Willer against uh, Karen Hamer, and uh, it was quite a fight back there from the Auckland girls, and um, yeah, clearly showing their their um, class at that level. Well, I think in, f in fairness to the uh, to the side, you know, one of the things which happened in the Karen Hamer skip side, uh, Lisa Bradeau got on top of the jack off the front. And that certainly made because the the wire the uh, the lady from Martin Brother had been going very very well. And all of a sudden, Lisa Bradeau sort of clicked right into a game, had about five or six effective ends on, you know, right on top of one another around the jack. And as you know, in two bowl triples, if your lead uh, delivers for you, uh, uh, as and you start your game yesterday as an example, the one that you jumped out to that. To, you know, tidy lead. I think it was the first round. I think it was, mm. but it's what happens. The two world triples. It's what happens off the front, isn't it? Oh, most definitely setting the tone from the front there, and uh, obviously the more bowls on the head there, the 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 much you know much more options you've got, and obviously the pressure on the opposition skip too. So we've got out in front of the two games that we have got. We we have got Patataru uh, uh, from the Waikato, Owen Sutton and Noel Sutton, a very very well known name in the Waikato region. Uh, with Liam Peters as their lead in the county's Manukau. And it's interesting, uh, in both cases, uh, Sam, it's the Buckland side who have qualified, Jim Ballard skipping, Ken Mitchelson and Ewan McIntyre le leading. And they are one of the smaller little uh, a one green club uh, just out of Pukekohe. And both the men both and, and women uh, have qualified for post-section play, for, for to play in this event, sorry. So absolutely outstanding uh, achievement by uh, that little that little club just out of Pukekohe. And the other game we've got down in front of us here is, uh, of course, I've had with me the last couple of games, Dave Hewitt from Wellington, uh, plays out of the Silver String Club. Well, his brother, Tony Hewitt, is skipping the upper hut side with Morris Picard and Martin Asprey. And there was supposed to be another Hewitt originally in that upper hut side, uh, but he decided... Well, no, his wife decided in the last few days it was time to get COVID. So, so uh, he's in lockdown uh, uh, watching. And they're up against, and this is fantastic to see them here, the, the side from uh, Tolaga Bay, Gisborne East Coast, Vern Marshall skipping, Ma Marcus Merrick at two, and Murray D Duncan off the front. You'd remember Vern Marshall, no doubt, from years gone by. Sam, you know, he's always been, you know, was, came through the Kitty Hawks and... Uh, Pretty tidy bowl, really. in the David Fyle era type thing, really. Oh, absolutely, Kevin, yeah. And certainly synonymous in that era. So it's great to see, and it is, it is good to see, what well, I would say, these, these smaller centres that are here. 
and it was it was it was great really at the the uh, champion of champion singles where we had you know the, our, our man from Northland run, running out the, the winner uh, yeah and and it's really great to see some of these lesser centres getting the opportunity and and I suppose it's fair to say that's what champion of champion is all about isn't it oh absolutely and you're seeing you're seeing that out firsthand. You know, um, it's, it's giving, as I said, the provincial players a chance to really step up and show their wares. And um, it just shows you that bowls on the day is, is a game that anybody can win. So you had a full day playing out on this, the new surface here at the Nainai Complex. And, you know, we had three wins, so obviously it can't be too bad. But generally, uh, uh, certainly an improvement of what was here before. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but a, a, a good surface to play on and play all the shots. Yeah, absolutely. All the, all the shots are available to you. It's just a case of always cons consciously being um, aware that you have to arrive. You know, otherwise you're just going to end up short. And if you're short, you're ineffective. I think it's an area, and this isn't trying to be discriminatory at all, but I just think it's an area whereby a number of the women's side failed uh, in so far as getting that meter. You know, mm -hmm. Because you, that's where you've got to be getting, trying to get to, don't you? Yeah. Because when your bowl decides to stop, whereas you're on Cotchula, you might get another metre of running, so to speak. That's well, right. here on this carpet, you're going to get a foot. That's exactly it. That's the difference, yep. You just missed that. You missed that last bit of running to, to the finish. <laughs> so you've got to be just conscious that you're, you're wanting to finish through that line. And the other thing, Dad, I've noticed very, very much, and I've commentated on it, quite frequently is that if you're not going to get back to the centre line, you're just not going to, you're just not in the game are you? That's it, yep, getting back to the centre line is absolutely crucial and obviously giving your bowl a chance, if you're under that line you're cutting across and obviously if you're wide you're just slightly struggling to come back Absolutely So, we've got the sun streaming down here and as long as it's uh, well it won't be streaming down but uh, Org as well as well, Sam, for a uh, very nice evening at uh, the Caketon tonight. Oh, most definitely it's going to be a big night there. <laughs> yes. And you won't be playing bowls. <laughs> I won't be playing bowls. <laughs> well, no, you'll be finished by then, won't you? Yeah, it'll be finished. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You'll be finding a, a spot to watch that game for sure. Be a great evening. And, uh, of course, we... And also, once again, to... Wish our New Zealand team and the management of our Blackjack side, who are in the next couple of days, they're on the big silver bird, making their way to uh, prepare uh, for Birmingham. And uh, we wish them all the best in what will be a really tough encounter. You, uh, you might, a couple of tough weeks coming up. You, you might know, Sam, I, I had, oh, here we go, I've got the papers here. And you've been uh, in, the, in the media world. I'm, I'm presuming at the Commonwealth Games, someone said to me that it was only one per group that qualifies in these various disciplines. One would think it has to be two for the play, otherwise you're not going to have quarterfinals, won't it? which is, has always been the tradition, isn't it? What they're saying is there's four sections in all of these disciplines mm -hmm. here, and one goes through from each of these disciplines. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was two that go through, to get to eight, then into the middle rounds. Mm -hmm. My understanding was that it, it was to certainly two qualifiers. The only other option they've got, I guess, is that the section winner will go through to the to the straight um, finals, and then you've got the next best right. eight to play for the, the, the remaining four spots. Which is that's well, perhaps yeah. It's something I'd really like to get clarified at some point because there's there's a lot of sort of conjecture about what it actually is mm. because. Uh, you know, if you look at those sections that they're lining up in, Sam, they're pretty hard. They're oh, very, very fair sections. Aren't they? They're yeah. You know. So here we go. This is what we've got. And we're bringing you the Upper Hutt v Tolaga Bay. Tolaga Bay. We're bringing it live to the coast. Great to have the Tolaga Bay on board. And Patararu and Buckland. And I can just confirm to you that those qualifiers for the women's post-section play are just given to me by Bowls New Zealand. Is that of Nina de Munich, Sarah Tokomo, uh, Mary Ann Wilson of the Victoria Club here in Wellington, Karen Hema, Lisa Bradeau, Linda Ralph of the Carlton Cornwall Club in Auckland, Joe Edwards, Colin Earl, and Faye Wilkinson of Nelson, Debbie Sanson, Debbie Salt, Jackie Sutton 
of Wollstone Park and Jean, Jean Stratford, Evelyn Usher and Robin Hall of Waihopi in uh, Southland. They are the five teams that have won their way through to the cutthroat post-section play, which will get underway here uh, tomorrow. Now, in the Upper Hutt Tolaga Bay game, it is the Upper Hutt side with a couple of ends gone that are leading 2-0. And it is the Buckland side in the other match who are leading 4-0. And I hope you're doing that homework, are you, Sam? So Sam is doing that homework for me about the Commonwealth Games so that I can actually confirm what the status is, re, um, re who goes through. You'd think Mike Kern would be watching. He would have sent me an email by now or a text by now confirming to me it's one or two that go through from section play. So, upper hut in the distinctive hut colours Maury Picard on the mat well I might have to All right, so, sorry it is the lead Martin Asprey with the pink bowls and that lovely draw to the jack and as was said a few moments ago by Sam that uh, if you take the green out there, you're going to be rewarded. And up a hut, up against the Tolaga Bay side. And you'd agree, Sam, that from what I was watching, is that if you send your bowl out, it's going to come home, isn't it? Absolutely, yep. There's certainly no problem with them coming back. Well, we've seen two bowls here. Uh, well, you can't get the much, you know, that highlights and confirms that, doesn't it, mm. in, the, in the upper hut. Gisborne East Coast, Tolaga Bay. You've been to Tolaga Bay bowling club? I haven't actually, Kevin. No, mate. nor have I. <laughs> I have been to Tolaga Bay, but I'd um, uh, be interested to know. Uh, you know Vern Marshall's been around a long time. be interested to know what sort of membership. I don't imagine it would be. Well, it certainly wouldn't be in the hundreds. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, at Tolaga Bay, two good opening bowls here from Martin Ashbury. The pink bowls, well, that's uh, you know, and that's indicated they've scored a, a couple of singles and they're pretty good starting bowls. Patataru v Buckland, that is the Buckland side just out of Pukakoe who have jumped out to a 4 0 lead and will concentrate for a few ends on this Tolaga Bay so game because. It's not often that I can say in all the commentary that I've done that talking about Gisborne East Coast doesn't doesn't happen very often. So on the mat is the number two, Morris Picard, for the upper hut side. Down on his forehand, holding shot. The two balls of Tony of uh, Martin Ashbury sitting right alongside the jack, coming up lower the jack by a metre is Morris Pickard. Good draw line in there for uh, Marcus Merrick, Merrick, number two for the Tolaga Bay side. And at the end of this round, we'll give you an update on where we are with the men's because we'll have had three rounds to have a good idea of who's where. Here is Marcus Merrick on the mat. Very deliberate, very deliberate stance. The black balls, the white rings. There he is on the forehand trying to get down to the two pink balls. Counting balls, riding this bowl all the way through, just as a couple of rolls away from getting inside that bowl to the jack. So the blue ball in front's counting, as indicated by uh, Tony Hewitt, the skip brother of Dave Hewitt who was then doing the commentary with me on that last match so here he is on the forehand trying to add to the count doesn't want to give a doesn't want to give a jack level slide to the head though that's the last thing that uh, he wants to do and well doesn't do so finished in that front line straight front line to the jack and you know Vern Marshall saying to Marcus Merrick with the black bowls. 
just try and get down even if you're reducing the number get down in amongst those counting bowls so here is the number two foot Tolliga Bait on the forehand sends the bowl out look to be out on a pretty good arc Vern Marshall watching the bowl that's coming in towards their head this is a great attempt from the man from Tolliga Bay. Is he going to go oh, unlucky? Thought he was going to get the back of that pink bowl and sit in for shot. He certainly had good weight to get that turn into the head. Sadly, though, he's looking at four down. Vern Marshall, though, who's sort of been out of the scene a wee bit, is more than capable. Now Buckland of the county's Manukau Centre as we play in four. They've jumped out to a 4-0, a 7-0 lead. Very handy lead from the the men from the One Green Club just out of Pukekohe. And the the match right here on the screen. I hope you're enjoying this coverage that we're bringing to you. My thanks, of course, to Tamara, Emma, Colin, who are the people that really do all the work here. They're the brains behind bringing this live action to you. So, change of hand there by the Wellington skip from Tony Hewitt. I'm sure we'll see Vern Marshall try and reach that on the backhand, trying to get down to those counting bowls. Starting out now, how's the weight coming down towards the blue bowls? Needed another yard of weight than Vern Marshall. Lacking that weight, he's disappointed with that. You can see that clearly. And you can see a number, about five bowls there, all in a straight line. Tony Hewitt now trying to get another bowl. Doesn't want to give a shoulder. That's the last thing he wants to do, give a shoulder on that side of the draw because it will enable Vern Marshall. No, he's short. He won't do anything with that. So Vern Marshall, I'm pretty sure, would be happy if he can get down. Upper hut leading 2-0. If Marshall can get second shot on the back end, I think he'd be. I think he'd be quite happy to get second shot. So, ball's been delivered on the back end. Does Vern Marshall certainly got it out on a wider line? How's the how's the running coming back now towards the jack? Coming back now towards the jack needs to fall in, not out. Oh, he was unlucky there. It was Marshall? He was. Very, very close to. I think it was a three. Five nil to the upper hut side. We'll just confirm that, but it looked like it. Uh, it looked like three. But it was three to upper hut, so they jump out to a five nil lead. Buckland leading Pataru, seven shots to nil as they play in four of uh, 15. <laughs> so, Jack's been delivered far, far shorter length. And as I just get a note, senior, Stu Scott, the man, the voice of bowls, will always be the voice of bowls. Just sending a photo through. Great day in the capital for the game today. And I'm sure, Scotty, you'll be out there at the Caketon tonight. And uh, certainly magnificent day here in Wellington. So, you see that opening bowl, my goodness, very impressive. His first list early ends from Martin Asprey with those pink bowls sitting right on top of the jack, putting this Murray Duncan, the lead for the Gisborne East Coast side, certainly putting the pressure on right from the outset. 
And trying to get down to this counting bowl is the Gisborne East Coast lead. And what a great attempt. Just goes by, just swooped by the Jack 7-0. Buckland leading Pataru as we play in 4 of 15 in this uh, third round match here of section play in the Bowls New Zealand, the Somerset Champion of Champion Triples and you can see this Sam, that bowl right on top of the jack it just seems to be as well as we know on carpet, you get that front line approach to the jack makes it, puts you in a good position for the rest of the head doesn't it because they're hard to draw around it and, and onto it. It's just, they're literally a winning shot, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's so much of a race to the jack, because once they're there, they're so difficult to move. Now, if you're playing on, like, Cotch of Minutoto, you can just play on the draw and get a turn on the bowl, but but you're just not going to. Good, a good response here, though, from uh, Atolica Bay lead, from Murray Duncan, and, yeah, that uh, that first bowl, and it's interesting in the women's game that we just did. Lisa Bredeau, the last six, it was about six or seven ends, literally owned the jack, and thus they owned the game. Absolutely. When when your lead can do that and take command, um, you certainly start seeing that reflect on the scoreboard. Yeah, very much so. And it, it's good to see here, you know, they, but all of those bowls, you know, working their way back to the centre line. That straight away confirms to you that it's a, it's a, it's a good green to play on, isn't mm. it? Mm. Most definitely, yeah. On the backhand is Marcus Merrick. That bowl looks very small in his hand. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, size five. <laughs> it, it just looks... <laughs> yeah. Just look very small. So here he is trying to get to the jack. And yet now... To be fair to the Gisborne side, was well, it's still really a, a good ball because what it's given them an opportunity, hasn't it, to get that split onto the, on, onto the bowls because you can persevere and persevere trying to get dead weight to the jack, but a jack low bowl like that just opens up your percentages a wee bit more than what was there previously, isn't it? Yeah, you'd feel more confident now to try and play at least a metre or so through just to try and get some movement either on your bowl or through them. And you don't have to, you can see the head right out in front of us here, in fact, right in front of the commentary box. And, you know, they're in sort of like a straight line. And another bowl adjacent um, just gives an opportunity for the Gisborne East Coast side. It, it, that's why Jack High is so important, on, isn't it, on these sorts of mm. situations? Because very easy to, uh, to, uh, Full Jack Low and just give shoulders and rub lines to uh, to your opponents to play with that that weight through the head, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, and at the end of the day, if you're not on the Jack, if you're behind, you're giving yourself a chance, and that's what you need to do. You need to be able to give yourself areas to play into, and good things will happen. So on the backhand is Marcus Merrick trying to get down to the pink counting bowl of uh, Mar uh, Martin Asprey. And, well, this is a good attempt too. Just goes by, you know, in normal circumstances, uh, really, Sam, you'd be, from your number two, you'd be quite happy with that, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. I think it just goes to show, Kevin, what you just said there and the respect that that bowl there was a lead bowl. It hasn't moved. You've got two great bowls either side of it. But the challenge now, of course, for Vern is to be able to move that ball. Absolutely. And, you know, it's a matter of, and as you said before as well, if you're, if you're playing the outside, you could more than likely play just a fraction over draw weight and you get movement onto that pink bowl or the jack. If you play that weight here, you just not, you won't, you won't, just won't, won't work with it. That's it. The bowl will just sit on top of the bowl, won't it? It won't move, it won't move through the head. So Tony Hewitt now leading 5 0. 9 0 Buckland of the county's Manukau Centre leading. And, well, he's not going to give any shoulder there. And really, the shot that we're talking about, you know, is, is it on, for example, and, and looking at the head outside the, the, the window here? I don't think Vern Marshall will get enough swing 
to get down to get a split on the bowls. They're more sitting more on a line rather than sitting sort of parallel with one another. Uh, Vern Marshall, though, I must say, very, very proficient uh, draw player. Uh, well, no one will ever win as many titles as David Files done up in uh, <laughs> Gisborne East Coast. So, very, very good player is Vern Marshall. I remember him coming to the Kitty Hawks tournaments uh, as a mere youngster trying to. And again, it's, it's the challenge, though. And as we've spoken about, uh, Sam, of that first bowl and getting where it's sitting there, it's that challenge again, that dead weight to the jack, isn't it? It is, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, a bowler that Vern's tried to obviously draw right round it again rather than having the option of playing potentially a metre through through the front of that black bowl there. Yeah, another bowl here coming. Yeah, this may work. This opens the door slightly because inside of the bowl gets the jack, isn't it? Yep, chances off the side of that bowl for sure. And that's exactly what uh, has been indicated there to, to uh, Vern Marshall. Inside of the jack low black, it just about runs straight to that straight line to the jack, literally, with an order sit out the pink, or could sit the pink bowl out. But the key thing is here, you've got to have confidence that I'm going to play with. Four, four foot of weight through the head. Yep. I'm not going to get the ball to the head. I'm going to play through the head. You've got to be committed to this shot, Kevin. And will it come back enough? Looks an ambitious line to me. It is an ambitious and But I, again, didn't have the weights here. No, and that's it. Now the weights to this pink ball back here and behind the head. Yep. So, was it one, was it two? We'll see in but a moment. It was definitely the the uh, Wellington side, the upper hut side that has scored for sure. So, uh, do you play the next round? Uh, yes, we do, yep. We play against the Awamoa boys. In fact, our neighbours. Ah, Awamoa. All right. Now, yes. so that just... So that is Awamoa, isn't it? Yes. They're from Omaru, Awamaru. <laughs> now... Awa Moa. Now that was the club of sad passing there a while back, wasn't it? Of a legend, uh, Rusty McDonald, is it? That's correct, yeah. Rusty yeah. McDonald. The, uh, He's a bit iconic southern, around the area, wasn't he? The southern legend, yeah. It was a tragedy, obviously, the way um, he passed. And um, there's now a tournament that's been uh, established in his honour, the Rusty Mac Memorial. And I hear it's, it, it's pretty hard to get into. Very hard to get into. It's invitation only at this point, and um, it's in its third year this current season coming. And uh, it's been a, a huge success for the last couple of years that it's been going for. And the family, the family, the ones that got him behind it, I believe, were they not? Yeah, absolutely. It was. Um, it was actually just recently, um, in the last month or so. Um, Quite, tra quite tragically, again, unfortunately, they lost their um, son Craig, which was oh. Rusty's. Um, oh, really? Rusty's boy, and, and he was the president of their club, and he created that tournament in, in honour of his father. Um, so sadly, we lost Craig about a month or so back, and um, I believe this year they're going to try and uh, do something special for Craig to obviously honour his name as well. Oh, I wasn't aware. Ah, oh, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, tragic. Tragic. Yes. Uh, thoughts go out to the McDonald family there. Was that Steve Beal just carrying himself out a three-course meal? It's sort of a, that I saw, it looked a luxurious. It looked so similar. Did it? <laughs> it did, didn't it? Am I missing something here? We've got a piece of cake and an orange and a wine gum. <laughs> oh, dear. That's okay. That's right. We'll get by. We can do that. We're fine. That was quite a sumptuous-looking... Uh, He's smiling out this Steve Beal, not surprised. So on the backhand is the upper hut. Oh, so look at No, there's just been a <laughs> Oh Tamara. This is a because Tamara's a very health conscious young lady and has just had her specially prepared nut. So it's got a variety of things on the plate. There's potato. Yeah, that looks a good meal for tomorrow. She'll enjoy it. Hard working tomorrow. So, 
Uh, again, you have seen four bowls come for, forward there. Sam Wall missing the line down there in that upper hut, Tolliga Bay. And it's certainly one thing I've learnt with this is uh, travelling around now and watching on these, the, the uh, sort of indoor services, um, you've got to own the centre line. Absolutely, you really do. You've got to own it and then to create and build from there. The minute you start... Uh, what we tend to see is that unless you're playing with any form of you know, weight or aggression, the jacks very rarely move. And it's, a, it's a case of first to the jack. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to sort of you know, move the jack on a trail. Um, those sort of trail shots become really difficult to play. Well, I, I, look, I could be wrong, but from all the games that I've watched so far, for example, I don't think I've seen one jack in the ditch. Right. Yep. Don't think I've seen one. I could believe that, except for uh, yesterday evening when Sheldon uh, made contact with the jack clean to the glass window. And Did you he? just heard this almighty boom. But it shows how strong the nine-eyed glass is because it's still standing. So, yeah. Well, Sheldon can send them down with a bit of crack, as we know. But, but also, to be fair to that as well, Sam, it's a surface, really, that you don't have to really... You know, and, and I'm not saying that Sheldon was good, bad, or, or different, but I'm just saying, insofar as the surface is concerned, it's not something that you've really got to drive at 100 miles an hour. Now, people sitting at home watching may well be thinking, well, why isn't he or she, um, why aren't they driving at the head? Well, a lot of the times you don't actually have to, do you? You certainly don't need that sort of weight on this surface. You can play a really comfortable weight through the head, and, and things are going to happen. Well, the other thing, of course, as well, uh, Sam, you know, with, uh, with two bowl triples is um, you don't want to be driving and losing a whole lot of balls off the head as well, do you? Because you can very soon uh, get yourself into trouble, can't you? Absolutely. So here is the Marcus Merritt, the number two for the Gisborne East Coast side, trying to get on the board. And it's just about trying to get that draw consistency. And at the moment... But you can see the bowl coming back a long way. The white discs of the, the Tolliga Bay side. And it would be the Jack Level bowl sitting there, I would say, of the lead, Martin Asprey. And the other thing that I've noticed as well is that how often you know, if a lead draws you the shot, it stays, it, you know, that it might get added to. But uh, So your lead getting you that good, a good start off the head uh, is so important, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, without doubt, the leads um, are still in the foundation for the end and uh, quite often controlling the... Um, you always say, you know, the, the lead sort of controls the game and then it's always up to the other team players to sort of decide how, by how many shots, really. But if you can get that first one there, it certainly piles the pressure on. Well, here's a chance here for Vern Marshall because wanting to obviously open the account as well, isn't it? You know, you know, six nil. No, okay, five. Yeah, playing the fifteen. It's not. The, it's not the end of the world. But knowing full well that you certainly want to start scoring shortly. How far is this bowler Marshall's? It's going to fight to get all the way back with that weight, and more than likely had good weight. What well, did have good weight, but just the line, wasn't it, to the uh, inside of the. Uh, yeah, inside of the rink, 10-0 now. Buckland of Pukekohe leading the uh, Patarari side as they play in six. Great start from the county's Manukau side. On the backhand is the upper hut. Skip. Tony Hewitt. And that looks a fairly good line coming down towards the yellow jack. He's got the running. And Great that's ball. pretty handy, that is. Gets a touch on the jack. Always look good on the way down. And the thing here now for Vern Marshall, well, he must, well, if he trails the jack, that's a bonus. But second shot's got to be high on the agenda, doesn't it? Because uh, if not, another end can slip by very quickly. And so here is Marshall on the backhand. The Gisborne East Coast player. Nothing for sure. Now, nothing for sure. He certainly got on a different line, trying to get all the way down to the jack, to the shot pole. And this is a very, very good attempt from the Gisborne East Coast player. Falls in more than likely would make shot of it. Yeah. 
And it's interesting if you say, Sam, because, you know, if we're playing the outside, you you literally back it to fall in. Mm, mm. But the bowl's sitting up quite... So if we're looking at it here, you would think the front bowl um, is, is shot. Um, and I'm looking out the windows here, straight down in front of us. That certainly doesn't give us any indication either. <laughs> Sue Wei making her way onto the rink, who will shortly, in the next few days, be on the Big Bird on her way to to uh, Birmingham. She'll be one of the match officials throughout the Commonwealth Games. Very dedicated to the sport. To is uh, is uh, Sue does a sterling job, and uh, Julie now off to uh, off to Birmingham, and no doubt will enjoy that uh, experience. So you've got two more games to play, is that right? Just the one for us, Kevin. Just, just the one? Just the one. We've just got the 3 p.m. fixture, and then um, then we're finishing qualifying. So you're playing now because you don't have to play? or because uh, No, we've got the buy round. You, got, um, you've got the buy round. Mm -hmm. Next round counts. Then your last one is yeah, a... Is a buy. Is a yeah, well, two buys. You pick there, mate. I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, I, but I yes, no, so that's just the way the, the draws panned out. Oh, but look, at the end of the day, you won your first three, didn't you? That's right, yeah. So... You know, the rules of the play are you got to win three matches and you win you know you and your first three so yeah you know, what ha what happens after that's somewhat irrelevant isn't it you know you've you've uh, you've done what's required must be close to that measure no disrespect to the upper hut boys but i i i would like to see it uh, move towards the boys from well, just to get you underway, isn't get, it? Get them on the board. Uh, that's that's yep. really what I'm saying. Yeah. Is uh, it does get the get them out of the blocks, get get them underway. Eleven nil, Buckland, up to seven, and pretty tight. You know, pretty good heads over there as well. We're looking, uh, and it looks as though it is the uh, Patanari side holding shot. And see, there's the three white discus around. Hanging around. Well, this is close, isn't it? Mm. Sue Wei now going to the bowl of... Oh, goodness. <laughs> this must be close. Yeah, well played. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, it was the bowl of the the upper hut side that held on on a, well, a very, very close uh, umpire's... Very close umpire's measure. <laughs> so how many how many teams is that picking in the uh, men's go, go through? For the men, um, if I was a betting man, I'd say 5-2. Five 5-2? Two. Five two. Mm -hmm. Another five qualifiers for the men, so I think it'll be an even split between the men and, and women. But, uh, of course, there's a good couple of games to be played yet, so... Well, this out. round and next r round is <coughs> some, uh, <laughs> yeah, the tally board gets knocked around, doesn't it? And oh, as, yeah. as we saw in that last round of the women's, you know, they uh, looked as though it was going to be a decent number of qualifiers and then bang, one round. And uh, there was only one of the teams that won going into that last round mm. that... Um, yeah, I think one of the crunch games at the moment, Kevin's playing out there with uh, Dean Drummond against Hamish Carpe from... Oh, that is a big game, know, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that is a big piece, match. I believe so. Yes, it is. And I... Uh, I just see... I, guess I can see them out, out there. Five. Is it five each over there? Yeah, it is a big match because they both dropped a game too, didn't they? That's correct, yeah. So one of them goes to sleep, didn't they? That's right. Yeah, it's crunch time for them. So another good bowl coming in from the Tolaga Bay lead, and that's it. Now that's the start that they wanted that's now. good to see. He hasn't been far away, has uh, uh, Murray Duncan, but got that one now right on top. Oh. 
So that's the start now. They can start building from there, can the, yeah, the boys in Tolaga Bay. And we imagine Tolaga Bay would just be a one green club, I, I would imagine, mm -hmm. up there in that lovely part of New Zealand. Oh dear, that's starting. At you. Boy, you're leading 7-0 and you're starting those. Want to be behind, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah you would, but you know that uh, uh, the, the old start on the team, and that's no good. You've got to be there. That's, uh, you know, sorry. Those days are gone, making that people know when they're uh, short. Oh, yes. And he's not going to repeat it with the second bowl, though, is uh, Murray Duncan. He's going to be under the head. And just sometimes you'll see, uh, Sam, when you get that line out in front of the jack, it's a sort of just a, people try and steer, you know, mm. steer the line rather than work the line because it, it will come back, won't it? Oh, it really will. You just can't afford to be oh, steering right. bowls on the inside surfaces because the lines are so true they will let you know. So, out on the wider line is the uh, number two, Morris Picard. And uh, well, I'd, I'd still be relatively happy with that because they've got to get to the shot bowl or, or, or jack, don't they? It's not, you know, so Marcus Merrick, he will try and no doubt on his backhand, try and reach through there with weight. And, well, how's the weight? Well pointed here. How's the weight? Needs to get past the pink. Oh, uh, that's well played. Gets another bowl on the head for the uh, Gisborne East Coast side. I think your best bet's in here, mate. Down there, just past the pink. Just making sure you get to it and split the two bowls open. Playing through to me. Rightio, you hear the call there from the skip. Play, even if you play through that uh, bowl, which is just ever so slightly lower the jack. That's Colin. In comes the catering service. Good, I've got an orange from yesterday. <laughs> they look after you, don't they? Oh, I, one thing I can never do is I can... In the old days of Bold New Zealand, yes, I used to do a lot of complaining, but in the new regime of Bold New Zealand, no, i got nothing to complain about whatsoever. They do a wonderful job. Mark Cameron and the team do a sterling job administering the sport. So, no, you won't hear me criticising them. Uh, do it, man. Well, I reckon that is the better hand. You never like and to beat say, that ball you know, anybody's That's out fine. of the game there, but the Pataru team will be thinking to themselves, this is getting pretty pretty dangerous territory now if they let the Buckland team score any further. They need to really start making uh, a push to get onto the scoreboard. If you don't score in the next two ends, you can forget about it. Yeah. I always say that 10-point that ten buffer is, is, is OK. It's safe, but then anything past that, you're gone. Well, it's just going to be the end that the the boys in Tolaga Bay go open home, their mate. account. And all I'll say kindly to the skip here, Tony Hewitt, well, you did give your side a few reminders during that hit, so now it's up to you, sir, <laughs> to do something about it. <laughs> yeah. Show us the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the forehand is the Gisborne East Coast player, Vern Marshall. Always looked to be just lacking a yard of weight, didn't it, Sam? Right out of the hand. It just looked to had a very good line on it, but just that yard of weight. And it, as you said, it's about 
It's not about being frightened of having the yard of weight. It's just making sure you are, have got that yard of weight, isn't it? It is. It's giving yourself a chance. And if you're missing, you're missing in a good area. So looking for a result on the outside bowl is the upper oh. hut's gap. Got the back of it. And it's gone. Killed it. It's off a burnt end there, yeah. It is. Perhaps not what he was actually looking for. Probably not quite that weight, but certainly gave himself a chance through the head. Well, if you're up, you've got a chance, really, isn't it, Sam? It's that's sort of, right. It's, uh, it's like that. And that game, would you say that's the big, that's a big game, all right, that game over there, isn't it? The Hawks Bay v. Paratutu game. Yes. Interested to find out how they're tracking. Hopefully I can tell you in but a moment. That's not their board. 7-2, there's a board over there. Their board is... Oh, they're obscuring the board, aren't they? Are they not? Where's Hamish Carpy? Oh, they're, they're, they're right over... And looking at it from here, it is 7-6 to who's ever on the bottom. All right. Always knew it would be a close encounter, two uh, very classy sides. And, of course, like you said, Kevin, one of them at the end of this game will be out of the campaign. 11-2, Patero opened the door. They're away. They're underway. 11-2. They're on the board. Here's the replay. After the kill, good opening ball from the uh, Martin Ashbury, the lead for the upper hut side. You don't hear much of upper hut, do you? No, you don't actually. Nainai, Stokes Valley, Wilton, mm. Victoria, lower hut. The sort of, but you don't hear a great deal from. Good opening bowl though from Murray Duncan, the, the uh, Tolaga Bay lead. You see now that um, Pitaru team have started to string a couple of ends together and given themselves a much better start off the front. Tell me, is there much difference in line and etc. You know, it, on, on the length that you're playing? Is it you know? Is it um, I think the line's much the same on the, any of the lengths you play. It's just, again, being conscious of of having that arriving weight, but yep. especially with the longer ends, because it's so easy to pull up short and, and quite drastically short too. Yeah, and, and, and of course so often they finish in lines that uh, you don't want them to be, aren't That's they? exactly right. So on the map, Matt, is the... This case, man. Has it got the weight to get all the way down? No, it's not. It's just going to pull up short. Play here, mate. I mean, we've got shot and a catcher there. So don't be scared of it. So this is certainly under the line. You can see. So he, just getting some. Well played. Doesn't tell me very much. I was just looking for something. Well, uh, Vern Marshall is the, uh, he's the match convener. I know that much. <laughs> I've just seen if I could. And Murray Duncan, who's the lead here. Uh, Murray is the uh, treasurer, um, vice president. He, well, he seems to be a bit of everything, but doesn't tell me much about the, the, the club, but I wouldn't imagine they'd have a great deal of m members uh, at Tolaga Bay. Marcus Merrick now trying to get to the two bowls of Murray uh, 
Duncan we get a turn on the bowl. He just about makes shot of it. Gets a turn through the head. I oh, he just went by. And really, Sam, it's also about when you've got those jack low bowls. It is also a good ploy or play to try and bring them into play, isn't it? By, Most you know, like playing the hand, it's going to turn them into the head, yeah. which could push position them for shot yeah. or possibly get into a jack high position, isn't it? That's right. We were, you're always looking for that percentage shot and uh, you sort of weigh up the options that you've got and you, you go with a high percentage shot. And, and right now, with those two bowls sitting there, turning those bowls over, as uh, Marcus Merrick just endeavoured to do, is is a good shot option. He's got a two bowl, he's got a two bowl turn there, hasn't he? To turn either one of those bowls, one would think into into shot. Mm -hmm. So here he is on the mat, here number two, Marcus Merrick trying to get down to either the shot bowl or to turn one of these other bowls out to the side of the head. Turn it over. It might draw a shot here, Sam. Right around. Might draw a shot right around the world here. Yes. How's that? That's pretty tidy. That's and that's, pretty. And that's going back to what you said, Kevin. They will come back. They, they will, will come, come back. And the that's, that's and the minute you're trying, it's the, to me, it's the technicality of playing with the, or delivering with the, the, the bowl, with the, the hand and bowl out rather than hand and bowl in. Mm -hmm. Now, some players like Kelvin Scott have got that unique delivery. Yes, they can get away with it, but if you're a if you're a natural arm player, um, it's very much so, isn't it? You've got, yep. and you'll be rewarded for it. You certainly will. And now, all of a sudden, this ball short. Now, all of a sudden, for the Tolaga Bay side, they have got a scoring opportunity. That ball's going to go by. They've got a bowl out to the side. The chances of the jack now going back are remote, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a turn on... They could, you could very quickly turn this into three shots. Yes. Unless, of course, you know, I don't know what the gap is between that, that front, the pink bowl. But from where we're sitting here, though, uh, it certainly looks to me, though, Sam, the turn uh, it's indicated by... Marshall, that he was going to draw on the backhand. Well, the only thing I'd also say about that is you don't want to leave a shoulder sitting on that run line. Mm. Um, it's changed hands. Yeah, when you've got those other bowls on the other hand. So here is Vernon Marshall from the Tolaga Blaze site on the backhand. Well, he's going to finish it dead short. That, and the other thing I feel about playing there, um, Sam, is you know you're going to get up to the head. Yes. Exactly. Don't you? You're not yep. trying to dead draw to a jack. You know if you make contact there, you're going to score. You're going to score a position, yeah. And good bowl coming here, but just going to go by. And I, 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 Unless those bowls are counting, I just think that's shot to play. Yeah, I, I can't help but agree there. I just... I can see what he's trying to achieve, but it just makes the shot harder because you have to get the right weight to come back. And it's easy, and I just feel you a, a greater chance of having effective bowls playing down there than than you know. Sure, that's got good weight, but it's not. Mm. So is it three? It is three. Wow! So, wow! Oh, okay. Well, that's deceiving then. <laughs> was it four? Wow. Yes. Yeah, it was four in total, yeah. That was in Zap <laughs> the well, angles as that, well. But I still fourth, would have played that anyway. That fourth one surprised me, but absolutely. The, the other shot there on the hand was the one to play, because as you say, you arrive to the bowls and you get the fifth. Well, you weren't going to take them out of the count. Definitely not. Not with playing the draw weight, eh? You are definitely not taking them out of the count. And I see it's one another one to Buckland in this other match where they have played nine of fifteen and it is eleven four to the Buckland side. Have you seen these the arms? It's, it's fantastic people can you know they can play with them. Um, and oh, I, I, that, that wouldn't be the easiest thing to manage with No, it's quite a it's quite an art to operate them, I'll tell you. 
It would be. I've tried them a couple of times, and it's just you, you're quite, it's quite impressive to see the the players that have persevered with them. And obviously, it gives them the longevity in the sport, which is good for them to, to be out playing. Um, but they are quite something to get used to. I, well, where I would find them in, in that vein, you just said there, uh, in saying that, the same is about knowing how you've got that weight. Mm. At least when it's in your hand, you, you've got that feeling of knowing, haven't you? Yeah. But, you know, is it is it two swings? Is it three swings? Yeah. Is it, you know, uh, I guess they rely heavily on that pendulum, but um, you know, with a lot of bowlers, they they pick their weight from their touch, don't they? they Absolutely. They know when it's gone in the right place. The um, the the arm um, is very well used in Australia. In fact. They actually have a tournament. They have tournaments. I've heard this. Yeah. They yeah they have tournaments where, yeah, you know, they're they're arm tournaments, which is incredible. So Tolaga Bay quickly back into this match now seven four. And I'll endeavour to get an update of see if someone can get me an update of where teams are at after the, these rounds of whether Tolaga Bay last night. May have played two games, I'm not sure, but drawing the shot there is the Gisborne East Coast uh, lead. Murray Duncan drawing in behind the Jack. St. Martin Asprey on his backhand. Yeah, Kevin, we've got the answer for the Commonwealth Games qualifying. Oh, fantastic. So it is definitely the top two from each section. Oh, make the top eight. great. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. So that dispels that. Uh, it, it just seems completely... Mm, I think they're getting mocks, somewhat confused with the World Bowls format. So I believe Could be. the World Bowls format isn't necessarily the top two. It's the top three. Correct. Mm. Remembering what has been in the past with World Bowls as well, is well it's going to be different now um, because of i'd say the non-qualified because asia pacific and the other event over there and the other side in the northern hemisphere uh, was also a qualifier uh, mm -hmm. for for, uh, for world bowls and then it came in pure discipline so at this stage the i i believe and and, and uh, this is after talking with Brett O'Reilly, uh, I believe that it's a wee bit of uh, the more the merrier, try, mm -hmm. which is, if you if you, if you you run a world a, a tournament, um, especially I think in our sport, I don't think there's much of a need for pre-qualifying. I think, I think you'd, if you're good enough to make the top two, you're good enough to compete for a medal, so. It, it, absolutely, it does, and, and if you, and if you go there representing whatever country it is and you have four losses or whatever whatever the number is, it's irrelevant. But, you know, as we've seen, there are, there is at every, whether it be World Bowls or Commonwealth Games, there is always teams that come from, where did they come from? Uh, yeah. Uh, and it will happen again in yeah, Birmingham. Again, so I just think if we want to, you know, envelop the whole sport that, uh, the more the merrier, and of course the other thing now, which is another thing with World Bowls, which is a lot, which is a lot better, of course, is that merit trying to get down to the county area, and it's going to fall outside the line. But another bowl on the head, one down is the the East Coast side. But the point is, it's good now that they don't have to have a full um, seven men. Because before it used to have to be in all disciplines, mm -hmm. so you had um, you, know, you had a different. Now it could be um, a country might just play in the peers, as a case in point. That's right. Uh, and and some of the smaller countries, that's you know, uh, or singles, as we have seen. Mm -hmm. So it's great. To, so New Zealand, I'm happier about that now. That's been confirmed for me. Thank you, Sam. So. If we, if we uh, look at those drawers there where New Zealand feature, you draw that woman's singles and you know you've got to finish in the top two. New Zealand, Malaysia, England, well, not easy. That's 
that's a, that's a tough pull. Both Malaysia and England have, have both obviously won the women's singles in years gone by. So, you know, Caitlin Inch, we know we know what a capable player, of course, Caitlin Inch is. And, uh, you know, hard jacket. Men's singles, Scotland, New Zealand, Jersey, India, Falkland Islands. Well, we know Scotland. Um, I don't. I presume it may well be Burnett playing, looking for the jack. Is not going to get it. I. It, I'm not sure whether it's Burnett playing the singles for Scotland. Um, but yeah, Darren Burnett. Yeah, it's, he's playing the singles for Scotland. So we know his credence, don't we? So absolutely. One would think that uh, Jersey. Look, you just don't know, do you? You just don't. But know. you could say that in that section of which Shannon McElroy is in, that this good Jack Trail by the upper hut side, that'll rate them two, I would say. So it is two, I see it signal there. So Vern Marshall play down through those bowls with, with weight right through them. You'd certainly look to play through them and, and replace the red would be a, would be a goal. So, and that means singles draw. You would think that, let's say, Scotland and New Zealand stand out a wee bit mm -hmm. as, as, let's say, the most favoured likely to qualify. Yes. Do you yep. agree? You'd agree with that. And the women's peers, which is, again, Caitlin Inch, South Africa, India, New Zealand, Nui. Well, South Africa are always tougher in the UK because that the Greens are more akin to what they are. Mm -hmm. But I think that's still... For two to go through, yeah. I think that's still... Um, a, yeah, I, I think, I, I'm fairly confident we'd go, go through from there. Uh, that being Selena Goddard, isn't it? Selena Smith and... Uh, and Caitlin. And Caitlin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Men's pairs. Wow. That's a, that's a tough section. Scotland, New Zealand, Canada, New A Jersey. Scotland, Alex Marshall. Oh, look at this. Is it crawled in for shot? Oh, it'd be close. So you know you've got Alex Marshall and Paul Foster. Yes. And I don't know whether Ryan Bester... If Ryan Best is playing the mm -hmm. pairs for Canada... Ryan skipping the pair, I believe, yeah. Well, that's a tough draw, isn't it? Absolutely. That's that's a draw there for our pairs combination of Shannon McElroy and uh, Tony Grantham. Mm -hmm. If they get through, I would say to them, uh, well done. Absolutely, yeah. That's It'll one of those draws, really, yeah, isn't it? Good day at the office. Uh, the women's triples... One wide or one narrow. Better off England, New Zealand... India, Nui. Well, I, to be fair, you'd be disappointed if you didn't qualify there mm -hmm. with two to go through, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yep. You got England there, sure. The men's triples, we've got Scotland, India, New Zealand, Malta. Again, I would say you'd be disappointed if you didn't qualify uh, when you've got India. No disrespect to India and Malta, but um, you would you'd hope that you'd win that those, wouldn't you? Oh, you'd absolutely hope so. I mean, look, not forgetting, of course, though, that um, Malta do have Brendan Aquilina there as their um, household skipper, and of course he plays out at the, War the Warilla Club. Of course, I, I forgot about the Aquilinas. Yes, they're correct. They are there, aren't they? So, yeah, that that does make a difference, doesn't it? And it, Jack, moving on to the jack by the upper hut guy, man. And... Uh, they did have shot before then. Mm -hmm. the yep, it was a good turnaround there for eight, Tony. Eight four, it is now Tolaga Bay uh, leading. So the uh, women's fours: South Africa, New Zealand, Wales, Nui. A tough section. Very tough. Yep. South Africa and Wales. That's that's a tough section. Mm -hmm. Men's fours. Tough section. Scotland, New Zealand, yep. South Africa, Jersey, Malta. Very tough section. That's a very, very tough section there, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Because there you refer to the Malta boys again, you know, they uh, and Jersey who always got you know, that they're, they're around, remember. Um, that for the men's four, that's a very, very tough 
draw and really for the paras and that not knowing who they're up against or what they look like yeah it's, it's, it's hard to decipher except to say that we obviously hope that they get through so yeah, that, the New Zealand side have got some of the disciplines where I think they would be disappointed if they didn't qualify for the next phase, the quarter-final phase. And they've got some sections whereby I think they'll be breathe a sigh of relief yeah, if, they, if, they, if they make their way through. Yeah. It's, it would be an extremely tough call with the way how this draw looks to expect their New Zealand side to be in the in its say qualifying and in, in all disciplines. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But so many people just think, oh, because we play bowls in New Zealand, we line up over there. Well, it's just a, it's just a formality. Well, well, it's not. Um, oh, it's well, it's worlds apart in the conditions, as you've alluded to, and you know anything's possible when you're playing on what twelve second greens slower yes, sometimes. Yes. Yeah. So. And, and look, every time at the Commonwealth Games, World Bowls, more so the Commonwealth Games, um, you, you always get a smoky that comes from, and again, no disrespect to Aidan Zinnerstein, they, they won the bronze medal last, and if you'd have said at the start of the event, were Aidan Zinnerstein and the Cook Islands going to be uh, medalists, you... I don't think you'd find too many people that would have uh, preempted it. That's Absolutely sure. not. But now they go with the expectations of winning one. That's exactly right. <laughs> no, that's uh, and the expectation lifts. Yeah, absolutely, it does. And uh, also with that Cook Island side this year, they've also got uh, uh, another very, very handy ex New Zealand player uh, in their lineup, Jason Lindsay. Oh yes. Who used to play out of Okahu Bay and played for Auckland for a number of years and. Uh, Played in a number of events. Jason Lindsay's in the in that Cook Island side, along with Aidan Zinnerstein. So, you know, you don't know, do you? But our best wishes to that New Zealand to our New Zealand side. But now, my my, I feel a lot better now that it's been confirmed. Sam, after you're doing your your homework, thank you. That uh, yeah, we are two per section. Uh, or per discipline. Mm -hmm. So we've got about, I think it's pretty much a mix, isn't it? We've got 50 50 where you'd be disappointed if you didn't qualify, and you get the other 50%, you'll be relieved that you, you, you get through through some of those sectional draws. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. So right on the jack is the upper hut side, and a little comeback from Pateru 12 5 as they get down. Yeah, it's interesting, they're at 11 and they're at 8. There's, there's been one kill, hasn't there? Mm. But that is quite a difference, isn't it? What a difference in speed of play, yeah. And they're coming to the end of their back, in, they're finishing that end now. They're finishing 11 and we're midway through 8. That's right. That's right, yeah. I'm just, yeah. Well, you don't normally get that big a difference, do you, of ends? No. On a time limit. And it's just been the one kill. To, to just, I'm, I'm sure it's just been the one kill, Kevin. Yeah, I think the Tauranga Bay boys um, are certainly being quite deliberate with their play. Though. They have, they have been, and they're getting themselves back in the game. Um, you know, at, at this point, it's anyone's eight four. Yes, it, 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 it's one of those uh, sort of games right now in this midway port that if we drop a one, we, we drop a one, but we score, we've got to get a two sort of thing. Right? So, their biggest thing now for the boys from Gisborne East Coast is that we don't put ourselves in the position where we're going to drop a number and literally close the door on That's ourselves. Right. That's right. Colin's even got a hat. Colin's even got a warm fluffy on. It's cold. <laughs> the sun is streaming through here, Colin, as he's... <laughs> They do a wonderful job, these people, Sam. They do a just outstanding job, and and uh, the bowls followers in New Zealand are very, very fortunate that we've got such a dedicated team that, that makes sure we bring you the best possible coverage. Now, I feel a bit sorry for the East Coast side there, really, uh, Sam, because I'm sure he'd have loved that bowl to have finished literally jack level. Because mm. looking at where the two whites are sitting down on the trail, yeah. Um, was a chance 
for Jack Lewell to use the inside to get to the jack, isn't it? The one one down, and more than likely own the rest of the head. That's right. So it's imperative here, though, for the Hutt Valley, the upper Hutt side, they, they really they get another bolt on the head, and I'm surprised you're playing the back end. Because my fear would be you play the back end and give a shoulder. Mm. So, Tony Hewitt, skip for upper hut. He certainly got it out on the widest side. He's not going to create any shoulders there. Still just sort of just comes into view. I would say that like Vern Marshall, who's a very competent player, that he'd be... I'd, I'd prefer to see him reaching rather than because there's been tendency of trying to dead draw to the jack. I think you're right there, Kevin. Yeah, I guess he's just looking for that. Well, he does look here to... That's just what we were talking about. And has he got that little bit of weight to get that turn? Yes, he has. Well played. Yeah. Well played by the Gisborne East Coast uh, man there from Vern Marshall. Have we got one? Still, the pink still the shot. But, be a level, yeah. but, great opportunity there though now for that, that Jack Level then. Play down inside the line to get two turns on the pink bowl, he got four shots. Absolutely. Which has got to be the shot he's looking for, isn't it? You'd have to think so, yeah, because you're giving yourself the weight to the bowl. The other option, of course, is trailing it on the other hand, but... Trailing it through the port is a three-shot sh three result, it's isn't it? Pre precision, yeah. <laughs> There's, there's oh, there's your team. There's my Tamuka boys, Kevin. Ah, yeah. Always a grin on their faces. Tamuka squash, the Jolly Potter. Yeah, I said to him, you know we're at a lawn bowls tournament, Marshall. <laughs> he said, oh, sorry, I bought the wrong jacket. Yeah, you got the squash jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the Tamuka support party or chair party of two. Oh, I guess that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> How many members there would you have at Tamuka? So we've got 64 members in total. Healthy, well, it's, a, it's a good number. Yep, yep. One of the um, one of the sort of larger clubs in South Canterbury, but but it's still a country club for what it is. Yeah. So this is an interesting shot being played here by Tony Hewitt, trying to get down, trying to get down to that cover of the trail. Well, to me, it just I'm not sure about that shot. No, nor sure. am I, because it, in my view, it just enhances my opportunity of I can hold an extra yard of weight, can I? Because mm. he's, he's certainly not covered and I thought he would have been covering. I thought he'd be if he was gonna play that hand, I thought he'd be down to the feet of where the Tolaga Bay man mm. is playing now. And and look to be fair to Vern Marshall, weight's his own choice here, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I can't see Vern being short of this. He won't be. Doesn't Gr like it. Grimace on his face. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a, that was a, a definitely an inside the line shot, wasn't it? And it's one of those situations. I had just the one down, but one of those situations is of when the gate opens as a skip, and it's a three or four shot gate. Those are the ones that you really got to get, don't they? Yeah, yeah, that was or an or be in the vicinity. That was definitely an opportunity there. I, I think um, you know Verm was playing with the idea that he wanted to sort of float onto that bowl. But I think sometimes in those situations, you've just got to be a wee bit more committed to the shot on this, and play through. On this surface, Sam, you don't float onto the bowl, do you? <laughs> Correct. Correct. You, you actually got to play through the bowl play to through. get results, don't through you? Through the bowl, that's right. If you float on it, you're yeah. just not going to get what you want, are you? And it's, you know, for the people watching who perhaps sort of don't know the differences in, in the playing surfaces, well... You know, Sam is sitting alongside me, he's out there, unbeaten, already qualified. And and it's not been critical, Sam, but there is, it's different weight control that you play, isn't it? It is, yeah. To, to get your results. It's, yeah. it's, um, you, you've got to be conscious that, you know, if, if you're not, um, if you're not going to get the shot, you're, you're arriving behind the jack. Absolutely. Right? If, if you're short, you're putting obstacles in the way, not just for yourself but for the opposition, but also helping the opposition in many respects because of the way that the surface plays on an inside draw. They can certainly use that to their effect. And you certainly, you know, you, 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 you have to play shots with confidence, don't you? You do. 
You do. And if you're going to play with weight, you have to be prepared to sacrifice a bit of line so the bowl will hold up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just going to stay outside, isn't it? So yep. you've got to play with that extra weight to hold up through that line mm -hmm. to give yourself the percentage mm -hmm. shot opportunity, really, isn't it? That's right. Just down to that, you're a metre through. I'm very good at this game sitting here, by the way. Oh, I don't think you missed a shot, have you? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be unbeaten. <laughs> no, it's always, it's always um, obviously, lots of variables that go through the players' minds when they're choosing their shots and spur of the moments. And, and obviously, we all wish that we had 20, 20 hindsight, but um, sometimes you just you do your best at the time, I guess. Oh, absolutely. One of the things that I do enjoy though, about doing the commentary, Sam, is that, that uh, having been... A, a past player mm -hmm. and played around, the, you know, played quite a bit obviously. Um, I do enjoy being able to sort of what I would say analyse of, of what to, you're going to play and weight and mm -hmm. and as you go through the various tournaments and you know, get to know various players, um, shot like, shot mm -hmm. dislikes, you, you, you are sort of uh, in a roundabout way pretending you're the skipper yes. out yeah. there. Uh, trying to analyse what is the best percentage shot. That's mm. it. Uh, Too light, last one's about three feet short. So that's, uh, that's interesting, isn't it? N9, N12. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, 38 minutes. They're not going, they, this one's not going to finish. No, not at this pace, it's not. The upper hut match? Yeah. 37 minutes left on the clock, so... They're, they'll finish. They'll finish, yeah. But, uh, I don't think... And What's wrong with playing through this? And now all of a sudden as well for the Tolliga Bay side, you're going to start thinking, looking at the clock, looking at your board, looking, well, hang on, we, we've got to, we have to, um, we're going to take a chance or we're going to, mm. we're going to just do things a wee bit different. Yep. Just, just got to make something happen at this point. Ah. So 15-5 to the Buckland side of Pukekohe. It's a great lead for the little club of Counties Manukau, just outside the boundary line of uh, Pukekohe Township. Lovely green there. Always had a very, very good green uh, at Buckland. Two down. Two down. Clearly heard uh, Tony Hewitt saying that uh, we're two down. And I'm sure the Tolliga Bay side would... Love to hold on to two shots. Oh, interesting that delivery of Morris Picard. I just see it's out on a good line, but how far is it coming back? Well, it's coming back now, but that's a good bowl. And on the surface, Sam, it's still got a good run at the finish. Yeah, it does, yeah. I guess... Um as you said, it, it really does hammer home the importance of hitting the centre line to get that finish. Because if you are missing the centre line, then quite often than not, you're, you're missing your weight too. Absolutely. And your ball finishes up in no man's land, isn't it? That's right. Becomes ineffective at times. So, number two, Marcus Merrick. Can't quite see where that second ball of his went. Uh... 16-5 now, Buckland leading Pataru at 13. Well, no, I'm, I'm not going to... Well, oh, yeah, I will call it. Uh, Buckland looking 90% uh, towards the W, aren't they? Yeah, I think I'm comfortable to call it at 16-5. So, you know, they're playing the 14th event now, aren't they? Or the 14th event, so it's a difficult, very difficult task to... Uh, to so it's so. interesting that Vern Marshall stayed down here. He uh, doesn't, doesn't want to stay down for too long because he needs to get in through, but obviously he can see a shot, wants to make sure. He's going to have a good look to see where this first bowl goes of uh, the upper hut skip, Tony Hewitt, whose brother's been sitting in here doing the commentary. Uh, Dave, he's been sitting here this morning. So... Playing with significant playing weight. Playing a lot of weight and... Well, got a double follow through. I'm sure that was too much of a help to 
We should still be free now. Well, the jack level looks to be has to be shot, wouldn't it be? Mm, most definitely. Even that front bowl looks like it's close. I'm looking out the window just tomorrow, and I can tell you, it's definitely, definitely lane two. The two, the two bowls out to the side, right? Definitely shot. So for here now, Tony Hewitt, he's really got to. And there's nothing in behind that would be counting. So these are further back. If I'm looking out to the window here, yeah, they're further back. Suddenly, if Fern can add to this, it becomes a, a, a bit, you know, well, a big bowl for Tony. Absolutely. At, at this point, this is, you know, has he got the weight? Looks like he's just he's got the weight. Oh, he'd be disappointed by that, Sam, because, you know, that's a no-pressure head red. It's just about a free go, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's no real reason to be short there. There's no danger as such. But he's got the front as well, isn't he? And you know, so. Mm. Um, and, he, and he has just given Tony an open draw shot here. Played with weight with his first bowl, did uh, Tony Hurt. Now he's going to have the opportunity to draw down there on his forehand. And looks to be on a. Well, is it going to go through all the way? It's a very Will it? It's a great bowl. It's ran through. Oh, how far through? A finger measure out his Marcus Merrick shot ball well played turned the ball turned it well what really happened he turned the head around with his first gate was open for Vern Marshall with his first didn't get it that's right suddenly the pressure's back yeah. on Vern he didn't put the pressure back on really did he so mm. he's opened the door now he's Got to be up to the head, get a turn on the wine-coloured bowl, and he can make three of it. Starting to come back now, coming back now. They're looking at this one on the way through. Well, right weight, right everything to play the shot. Really, uh, mm -hmm. Sam wasn't it, and, and that was at this stage of the game. That's the head that you wanted because you could have easily been at 9-7. That's right. Every chance there for the Tolaga boys and just the chance has gone missing there and, and so, obviously up a hard have extended their lead. Well, on the board, it now makes a six-shot turnaround, really, doesn't it? You know? It does. And that's that. So... Of course, two more rounds of men's section play. Here's the two Gisborne boys having a chat out here, talking about what if. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a telling end, really, in the context of the match. Sun streaming down here. It's like a, it's a spring day. What's the temperature outside tomorrow? Okay. Well, for those tonight, it, uh, one would think at Westpac Stadium, Sam, it's going to be uh, a nice evening at, at, uh, at the stadium. Yeah, I would imagine so, Kevin, yeah. Probably a very busy night for the uh, hospitality sector too, no doubt. Yeah, oh, the jack over here in this battery game. Yeah, it should be a great night with the hospitality uh, trade, but they'll still complain afterwards or something wasn't right. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, either we haven't got enough staff or we haven't got this or we haven't got this. It's, uh, yeah. Um, uh, good opening bowl here from this lead, Murray Duncan, right in on behind on that centre line. I know we're calling the uh, bowls here, Kevin, but have you got a pick for tonight? Absolutely. You think we're going to bounce back and get it? Absolutely. OK. <laughs> I'd like to agree with you, but I'm not so sure. Well, I am. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, I just think... Yeah, like, oh, great, good ball. Toucher, front toucher. Very good ball. 
Um, and look, I don't read the, I don't read the book of get rid of the coach and and, and, and the geographic of where that may come from. Um, I just think you've got a group of guys representing New Zealand with the silver fern and the pride of All Blacks. And how often has it been when the All Blacks have been, let's say, in these challenging positions, mm -hmm. whether it be a Bledisloe Cup or whatever it might be, and, uh, you know, they come up. They rise to the occasion. They rise to the occasion. They do, that's right, Kevin. And uh, whether, uh, whoever the coach is is somewhat irrelevant in that regard, they, they tend to rise to the occasion. What have we got there, mate? There is the, uh, Elliot Mason. The, what's happened there? Roman numerals. I can't understand that. <laughs> 17 4. So <laughs> that's the. Uh, <laughs> that's a very strong side, aren't they? The, they are a strong side, the Bagley Howley uh, side. They would, in fact, now be our third qualifier. With that yes, they, yes, they would be. They would be. And I'm one of those strange New Zealanders, Sam, which is a diminishing breed in the social media environment, that if you're a New Zealander, I support New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, regardless, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, no, absolutely, you've got to. Uh, good ball here coming on the trail, clean trail. That's a well played, good ball. well played from Morris, uh, from, from Marcus Merritt, got it clean. And, look, and just like any sport, Sam, no one ever at this level goes out to a, I'm going to have a bad game. Oh, no, no. You know, uh, that's right. I mean, they're, they're doing their utmost, of course, and um, sometimes you do just face challenges, and it's how you respond Absolutely. to those. Absolutely. Which will define you as a team. Oh, that's unfair. That, you know, that ball there to get into second shot, you know, that was half a rink off target on the roll and, and didn't have the weight anyway. But, yeah, that's just frustrating. So I'm sure now... We'll see the Marcus Merrick endeavouring to draw down, get another counting bowl on the head for... Uh, I never, I, uh, like especially with rugby, ending with the rugby league, the Warriors. I, I for a country of, what, four million, I never realised we had so many internationally best coaches. Mm. Mm. Because I see thousands of them every day on social media. <laughs> We've got experts out there, Kevin. <laughs> experts. Yeah, like New Zealand Bowls team has gone to the Commonwealth Games going. Everybody right to say, well, I'd have had this person, or I'd have had this person, I agree with this, disagree with that. End of the day, irrelevant. That's the team that's picked. And, you, and my viewpoint is I support them to uh, deliver the results. That's right. And if they don't, then... And I know full well, as we all know, whatever team it is, whatever sport it is going away and you're wearing the silver fern, you're giving it... Everything you got. Yeah, giving it everything, Kevin, that's right. And sometimes we've got to give respect to the opposition as well. Mm. Yeah. Something we're not very good at. I think that's I think that's something a lot of people forget is that the opposition have are entitled to play well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> They've earned that right. Yes. So here is and we under the head is the Tony Hewitt bolt. And I know it's not a chance of a number here for oh that pink bowl's got some, it's got something on it. and It's getting ever closer. It's getting ever closer. <laughs> well, is he, is he looking at playing the bowl through for a number? I don't know. I think he might be, you know, with that line. Well, Vern Marshall, well, you're giving the bowl a chance. Gonna... So is he one down? It doesn't deserve to be. No. I think they're just getting to the stage now where they're looking at the clock and they're thinking, right, we need to make they're, they're shots. They're for some shots. One, mm. you know, one's not really a good number. No. And if you can, can succeed with those shots as well, Sam, and even though your opponents may have a bowl left, it does start applying a bit of pressure mm. to them as well, doesn't it? That... And this is really a... Oh, well, it's fallen low. 
right lower, right, right on the jack. So uh, Vern Marshall's got to be through to the ditch, doesn't he? Yeah, I think the best thing I know for here is one in the ditch. Yeah, it's here he goes. Oh, that's <laughs> that's unlucky, isn't mm, it? Because mm. the jack through, you know, he was on target all the way, and a one to the Wellington side that I think got moved three times closer into the head. Yes. It wasn't yep. drawn there to the jack. It got moved in <laughs> at various times into the head. And at this point of the game, a very, very handy one shot. They'll go out to 12-4 lead. And in the match between Pataru and Buckland, it is the Pukukaui side now as we play in 14 of 15. And really, this could be the last end uh, over there, Sam, and it is the Buckland side Let's lead, shake hands time. leading 16-9. It is, it's all over. And there it is, I can t confirm that the Buckland side, that's the, from Pukukaui, of Jim Ballard skipping Ken Milkerson at uh, number two, and Ewan McIntyre leading up against the Pataru side of the Sutton brothers, uh, Owen and Noel, and Liam Peters. Well, it is the the uh, Buckland side from Counties Manukau who have run out the winners by 16 shots to nine. And of course, when we start the next round, we'll be able to give you a complete update of who's who and what it looks like. And uh, as we go into the, the next round and 23 minutes to go, well, there's no way that the, the game out in front of us with 23 minutes on the clock, get Sam, they're not going to deliver 15 ends, are they? No, and they'll be struggling to get to the end there. And yeah, they're playing 11 now. Yeah, they definitely won't get there. So it's uh, whatever ends are really left now, it's uh, the uh, Tolaga Bay boys who have got, who have got a score, don't they? Yeah, I think they'll be looking if they've got any chance of, uh, of at least getting back to the level or winning this game, they'll have to score the, all, all of the remaining ends. Well, good opening bowl there, Jack Level, Raymond Martin there. Just walked in. A, Raymond, of course, part of the New Zealand high performance team, part of the New Zealand squad, uh, not on the Commonwealth Games side, but certainly a player, Sam, that's uh, a lot of ability, and I think uh, higher on is still to come. Oh, I certainly think so, Kevin. I, um, Raymond's a class talent, and I, I think he certainly put his best foot forward for the Commonwealth Games trials, but just at this point, um, it wasn't quite his time, but I'm sure in the near future we will see him. On that. So, will he be in the North Island team? I would like to think he'd have a chance at the very least. Yeah, I agree. Um, but again, it's not me selecting, so it's hard to say. No. But he's certainly a player that would have to be on the list, wouldn't he? Oh, given these, yeah. And not, and not just. Um, not just the fact of the fact you know that he's a talent, but it's the way he plays on carpet. He's a specialist carpet player. He right? is, of course. He, uh, yeah, if I, um, he's got a credible record on the I, PBA. Yeah, I forgot that, of course, Sam, because he's played in the UK and in the, in the uh, PBA and the big events in the yes. UK and had a couple of good results over there at um, and, uh, UK on the carpet. So, yeah, absolutely, no doubt that. Uh, yeah, a carpet. Uh, yeah, he is a carpet player. Looking for the jack on the way through. No, we had weight on there. Now, do the, do the Gisborne side now, you know, do you start hunting for shots to put pressure on the back end of the, you know, the, the Wellington side? You know, do you play down to the pink bowl, try and push it out of the head to give you a chance of line three? Uh, I would be on that back end. Yeah, I think at this stage you are just looking for opportunities. Um, you know, if they can pick up a three or four here, it's, it's game on. But again, the time's going to be a major factor here for them. Well, that's why, in my view, you play it, play it, play it now. Mm. So as you put the pressure back on to... Uh, you, you don't know what the opponent's going to do with that bowl in his hand as the windows get open here. It's some new air coming into the place. No, I'd be definitely looking at that bowl. So, yeah, Raymond Martin would be, have to be a player, in my view, that I'd, uh, I'd love to see him being in there for the uh, Lance Pascoe. Yeah, it depends on his availability in terms of which island, of course, because it comes down South. to where you're South. playing at Elmer Park, right? 
Yeah, it, it, South Island. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to look at Lance. Again, you know, any of these players that were that were in the Commonwealth Games trials team, you'd think that Sharon and Dave would be leaning on these players as their go-to. Well, my, you know, my view is really that if I was a New Zealand selector and I've had that, the, the team away at the Commonwealth Games, I'd want to take the opportunity to look at some new flesh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, that's sitting on the outskirts yep. Yep. Um, to see whether they, you think that they are going to be a challenge. I, I'll be honest, I don't think we have the same luxury in the woman. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's the... You know, if we take a look at the men, now we just mentioned Lance Pascoe, uh, Raymond Martin, Crystal Eve, who, you know, who's based out, of, based out of Australia, Sheldon Bagley Howley. Mm -hmm. you know, sooner or later, you've got to give these players an opportunity, don't you? You absolutely do. And, and you want to see, um, you know, lots of different things, how they respond to precious environments, and, and especially, you know, with the likes of the North First South. Um, there is prestige on the line, and I think you give them a chance to shine, and I think you'll see them shine. I, I, I go along with that, I, and I'm not having a crack at all at a team that's going away the Commonwealth Games. But the question I ask is then, OK, we've got our team that's going away, that's fine, so where's the event that we really look seriously at our next, at our next group of four, five, six players, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And I just tend to think that the, the North-South match just presents that opportunity um, immediately after the Commonwealth Games. I, to mean it's, I think it's the ideal platform. I really do. And, and there are some guys hanging around, as we know, who, you know, and those ones that we just mentioned um, would certainly, you know, warrant. You know, and then in the women, they've got the likes of... Yeah, you know, it had been in and around the squad. Squad, yeah, Leanne, Leanne Paulson, um, Scott from the uh, Nessera Scott, who's always been there and thereabouts. Um, yeah, you know, there's players of that ilk that I just think that we, I'd just like to see them have an opportunity at that next step to see whether they're at the step or not at the step. That's right. Yep. Only worth another one is that bowl. So, at least from the Gisborne East Coast side, Sam, that they are looking for shots. Mm -hmm. They are looking for them. And you can see there wouldn't be very many because there's a lot of coloured bowls around that. So, if you're not if you're not sure, Vern, just uh, if you're holding the shot and you're not sure, just draw. Just draw. Where you're most comfortable drawing. Yep. Peg that deficit back is the key. They've changed their mind on three occasions here, so I'm just not quite sure yeah. <laughs> what they're going to do. You've played enough to know, Sam, that when you start getting clouded, clouded memories in your mind... Um, you often play in between. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's dead right. Where do, I go, where do I go now? What do I do? And yeah, no, you're quite right. 100%, 100% right. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the north-south sides. Uh, firstly, to, to applaud those who make the side. Always oh, looking through that port, looking at the pink. He looks looking bang, at the bang. pink, going to double bang. Oh, He's got one out. Not quite. Did it make two? The bowl on the back. One. Just the one I heard them call. Out comes the measure. Yeah, not just for who, actually. I applaud those who make the team, but... I just think as well, it gives a, a, a person, not, myself, not that I'm trying to be selfish about it, but maybe I am, uh, about, it does start to give you an indication of, of where the selectors are sort of looking yeah. to look at where our next step is. Because mm. you've got to remember that next year we've got World Bowls. Absolutely, and it's coming around the corner fast. Very, and, very um, fast. I guess the other thing too... Two it was, 11-7. Two it was indeed, right, okay. 
I think the other thing we need to be aware of, though, is the fact that these North and South teams aren't necessarily being picked by New Zealand selectors. Correct, correct. And so we can't necessarily look at the teams that are picked and say, that's the vision for our sport. No, you can't. It, may, it may not be. It may just be um, some very capable players that are representing their islands um, in the eyes of the non-playing captains. But it, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm looking forward to seeing who, who's put forward. And you know, now that we're on a now that we're on a two yearly cycle for the you know, world champs, um, we have to really say that we've got men and women. We're working with a squad of I don't know ten or twelve players, uh, yep. in, in both because and that and you know that's what Australia have done. And I think we're now at that point. We, we've got limited opportunities. I am hoping with World Bowls now moving to Australia that those opportunities of events and that are, are going to increase. But I just think we've got to be bold and say some of our players may well be drawing down the back end of their careers. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be confident of our going forward uh, career, don't we? Just losing some colour. Came back. I don't know whether, of course, we're getting shading, as you can see, coming in through there as well, Sam. But we just had a duck of the colouring then. Mm -hmm. So, 11-6, Jack Level. Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting, Kevin. I think when you look beyond the, you know, the Forsyth and the McElroy and the, and the Val Smith era, yeah. sort of who, who are the next ones off Absolutely. the Absolutely. And... Um, I mean, like you say, it is time for us to really get that conveyor belt of talent coming through, just like the Aussies have done. And we see so many of them, like Corey Wedlock, Aaron Tees of the world, um, you know, that have, have well, come through. Well, they've made some bold changes, like Aaron Sheriff as an example. Massive changes, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the, the Kelsey Cottrell's not, not there now. Mm -hmm. right? But they had that, they were always working with that, those players coming in behind, you know, yep. that, that are there, mm -hmm. about, close yep. enough but not quite there and it, it would just be great I'd love to see us send a I don't know, a develop whatever you want to call it a, a, a just a New Zealand side go and play Queensland, New South Wales as mm -hmm. an example um, and of course knowing where the next World Bowls are, you know, are only a few hours away Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll have a talk to the CEO of Sport New Zealand and see, <laughs> see if the kindly Girl, radiant, my, she's wonderful. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I'm sure uh, something can happen there. And, and also, also, I, I've, I keep reminding you. Remember, you are the whole. You were the winner of a New Zealand title when you won the mixed pairs with Mike pairs, Kernan. Course, yeah. So you know you've um, <laughs> uh, and defeated Shannon and Amy McElroy in the final. So mm. you know, come on, you can do a bit more, but. <laughs> It'll be great if we can have that, and 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 that's why I'm uh, not that it, I'm saying that he's in the frame right now. But I, uh, it's great that Dean Drummond is going uh, to Musgrove Hill, yeah, um, you know, good club, and he's going to play in that 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 cauldron of every week uh, Queensland Premier League. Uh, well, it's 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 like going from uh, you know playing club rugby to Super Rugby every week, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. No, hats off to Dean for that decision, and it's, uh, you know, we saw the dividends that that paid for Caitlin Lynch when she made that call. Look at the change that brought years about. Back, and I'm sure we'll see Dean thrive in that environment. Well, you could also, the, the Crystal Leaves, another example, went over there. Um, you know, this year he's won two Queensland titles. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, he's won two Queensland titles. He's in the field for the playoffs for the uh, Australian Indoor. Um, was part of the Musgrove Hillside who hadn't been playing and the, the, hadn't been you know, strong enough to play in the Queensland Premier League, go from not being there to being in the in the playoff contention. So there's another player who's you know and and Dean's going to be part of that uh, that cult or that. But so what a great opportunity! Oh, 100%. And. If we take Krista Lee and Caitlin as two examples who sort of are in the squad now, although not going, well, Krista isn't going to Commonwealth Games, but 
you know, they're playing on those Queensland pace greens mm. all the time. All the time. That's all right. the time. Yeah. That's got to be a plus, doesn't it? Mm. So nine minutes d down. So this, this end and one more. Potentially one more after this, yeah. So they've really been looking to score a multiple here. And they're down on the head of the East Coast boys. You certainly pay for missing the line, and it's, uh, yeah. So on the backhand is Tony Hewitt, who's certainly got the ball out on a good arc out through there. The shadow, the shadow right now there uh, uh, is certainly as well. <laughs> Sam's a good line, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Where that shadow line is out there draws just alongside the jack, really looking at the clock, looking at what's going on. Uh, Fern Marshall, yeah, he's got to score this end, get that. Possibly that jack touch. That jack touch and make two of it. So, trying to get down to the jack. He's just going to come under it. Well, he's going to come under it really with line, doesn't he? Weight, weight was dead draw, but wasn't really moving weight. Mm. And there's two, I think there's two it is, with the bowl to come from Tony Hewitt. And really, this sort of, well, this really locks the game out. Yep. Doesn't it? We, Most definitely does. They score here and that's it. They get a three here. 14-6 14, 14, as we go to 13 and the clock going against you. And didn't take advantage of that uh, bonus there. Is two, 13-6. Mm. And we know now we've got uh, another qualifier, haven't we? You, we the the, the result that came in there, the Sheldon Bagley Howley result, they qualified. Yes, uh, yep. They're in the post section. And we know the numbers that we've got for the for the women, which was a, a small number, really. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was some pretty um, pretty do or die games in that for, in those rounds. Well, that last end, they just well, see. It's ironic. It's about the time thing. We're at the end of 13, and it's the only game left on the out, left, there. out there. Yeah, okay, yeah. So they have lost some time of their own, haven't they? Obviously. Mm. Mm. Especially with all the other games now on the bank. Yeah. I mean, they have just had the one kill, but it's, I think it's certainly the way um, some of the players have been very deliberate in the way that they've played and that's that's absolutely fine but just conscious of the fact that you will lose time at the end absolutely you uh, you pay for it somewhere don't you of course so good opening bowl here from martin asprey just sitting uh falls over it's six touch and, set. six inside that one they say that's correct <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, uh yeah I think I, there. Yeah. And you can, and it's interesting on the carpet, bowls like that you can very quickly own the end, can't you? Oh yeah, yeah. You can, uh, you can uh, fire a lot of bullets aiming at it, but uh, you don't see them move that often, do you? No, you don't, Kevin. Honestly, I think that unless that's hit with some power, that will still be there at the end of this. And yeah, they they don't move far at all. So on the backhand is Martin Asprey to playing very good opening bowl with five minutes left on the clock as we play in 13. And there's another good bowl coming in here from the upper hut leads. Going to finish Jack Level just over slightly a metre away. But... So, got Murray Duncan trying to get down to the shot bowl, swooping across, swooping across, mm. and all but got to that bowl resting 
literally Jack and Bob literally resting on top of one another. And another bowl, good out on that wider side. You'll be rewarded. Going for, well, this is saying, isn't it? On the drive now, uh, the uh, East Coast boys. Yeah, that's, um, that's really, that's saying where we are really, Sam, isn't it? Mm. Just have a look here and see that um, Dean Drummond did indeed defeat, defeat Hamish Carpe 19 to 6. Wow. In their uh, crunch rounds, which means now that Hamish, of course, has to win his last to qualify. Oh, that, that, that was a big number, wasn't it? Yeah, most definitely. They must have got away, ran yeah, away. Yeah, well, there you go. That's a... Because, um, of course, remember at the stage you called it, it was 7-6. They probably yeah. never scored again. That's... Uh, just shows... Yeah, a few ends, and it can... Uh, it can quickly change. And now the pressure on the Tolaga Bay side and uh, hunting and looking here three minutes left so they're gonna be even if they get another year the bell's gonna go and they haven't got enough on that that's right yeah so i'm gonna I, i'm gonna call this one yep and it'll be the wellington side upper hut side of tony hewitt skipping with morris picard at uh, number two and martin asprey leading that will defeat the Gisborne East Coast side uh, from the Tolaga Bay Club. And I don't know the score yet, and I can tell you that in the other match out in front of us here, the county's Manukau side from the Buckland Club, Jim Ballard, Ken Mickelson and Ewan McIntyre, they have defeated the Waikato uh, representatives uh, from Patataru, Owen Sutton, Noel Sutton and Liam Peters, and certainly a win to the county's Manukau side. And... I'm saying that it is the Gisborne East Coast side who will go down to the Wellington side two minutes on the clock, and this will be this will be bell time. Then Marshall trying to get up to get some movement, do something. Needs a slide that tips the bowl over. And this will be that end. Even we've got one minute, one minute forty-five on the clock, so they can certainly shake hands after mm. these couple of bowls, can't they, yeah, Sam? Because it's just not, not going to work. And it will be the upper hut side who will uh, walk away with the win. And when we bring you the next round, we will bring you, of course, the updates of exactly where we're at in regards to the qualifiers that we go through. We know we've got one more, don't we? We know we've got four. And on the drive... So you notice that ball never moved, Kevin? Didn't move at all, did it? There you go. So there it is. It is the upper hut side of Tony Hewitt, Morris Picard and Martin Asprey who have defeated the uh, Gisborne East Coast side from Tolaga Bay. And they have defeated them quite convincingly. That's the side of Vern Marshall, Marcus Merrick and Murray Duncan. And uh, we will leave you now. Thank you. And uh, another great job you've done here. Thanks, Kevin. Sam. Always a pleasure. And uh, we'll be back for the next round, which we'll be bringing you, uh, which will be the games between Devon Brooks, Wayne Head, Terry Scully of Waihee Beach, against Bart Robinson, Ricky Howe, Kylie Clark and Helensville. And the real big game, Hamish Carpey, Daryl Reed, and Kalen Hula of the Paratutu Club in Taranaki up against the Martinborough side 
of Gary Murawai, Scott McKenzie and Bill Brunenberg. So this is Kevin Hickton and we'll be back shortly for the next round here at the Somerset National Champion and Champion Triples at the 9 Eye Bowling Club.
Good afternoon and welcome back to the 9A Bowling Club where we're in, in the uh, men's section play here at the Somerset National Champion and Champion Triples and the play is underway for the well the penultimate round for, for today. I can tell you that we've got some qualifiers already through. Those being Sheldon Bagley Howley uh, of Gore, uh, Ricky Cook, well it's actually uh, Nathan Glasson who's skipping the side of Elmwood Park and Sam Morton uh, from Tamuka. They've won their way through to post-section play. And then we've got a host of sides who are endeavouring to win uh, one more game. They can't lose any, that's for sure, to get through to post-section play. And they are uh, Robin Allery, Ross Allery of Foxton Beach from that Manawatu, Dean Drummond of uh, Bowles Hastings, uh, to- uh, Tony Hewitt of Upper Hutt, Devon Brooks of Waihee Beach, Hamish Carpi of uh, Taranaki, and Dylan Edwards of uh, Amahoe in uh, in the South Island. So those are the only sides now who uh, got a chance of winning their way through uh, to post-section play. The games that we'll be featuring this afternoon, right uh, in, on the screen here in front of us, will be the Thames Valley side, Waihe Beach side, with Devon Brooks skipping Wayne Head and Terry Scully leading up against the North Harbour combination out of the Helensville Club, Bart Robinson, who, of course, earlier won the champion and champion singles. And uh, last, he got struck down with COVID and couldn't line up the next event. But uh, with Ricky Howe and Kylie Clark, all out of the Helensville Club in North Harbour. And the other match that we will feature, which uh, is a pretty big one, that's the Taranaki side from Paratudu with Ham- uh, Hamish Carpe uh, leading, uh, well, skipping, sorry, leading is... Uh, Daryl Reed and Kaylin Hallier is uh, playing at number two, up against the Martinborough side uh, of Gary Murawai skipping Scott McKenzie and Bill Brunenberg. The Wairapa side, they can't qualify, but of course the Taranaki side, they need it and they need it. So with me this afternoon for this game is Raymond Martin, who has kindly given away his, well, taken a break from his indoor cricket competition to be uh, here. So uh, welcome along, Raymond. Great to have you here. Uh, Thank you, Kevin. Pleasure to be here and looking forward to uh, watching some quality bowls out there. Raymond, of course, part of the scene of the, you know, the uh, Bowls New Zealand high performance side and, of course, a long-time Wellington representative. And uh, no doubt, having a bit of a break before you get back into it in full swing, is that the... Are you playing the P- the PBA events? Yeah, I still still play the uh, PBA uh, events here at Nine Eye and keeps the uh, keeps the arm and the eye in. So uh, looking forward to a big season next season. Well, we all, we all hope you have a big season next season, Raymond. Actually, and and you'd be an, you know a, a good uh, opinion piece. Really, the the new surface here at uh, at Nine Eye, the change the the new carpet. Certainly seems to be, well, I'd say kinder on the draw. Yep. You get rewarded. Yes. Uh, yeah. The new service is is certainly running at a better speed, um, and, and yeah, certainly allows you to take some more green on the draw line. 
That's certainly that's been really noticeable. That extra, you know, you if you send the bowl out there, you know that uh, it is going to come back to the centre line. That's for sure, and, and and you pay for it if you're too far inside the line. Absolutely. Yep. There is uh, a couple of uh, small things here and there, but um, like every green, just pretty much in New Zealand. So uh, no, it's it certainly uh, improved the the surface much. Really, uh, getting that new surface in and a good speed. A lot better speed, yes, absolutely. And consistent. Yes, well, you know, it was uh, one of my uh, little tricks to go full length in here when it was nice and slow because a lot of people couldn't get it up. I can't do that as much anymore. No, well, I can remember, I, I, look, I forget which of the event we were, we were covering here under the old surface, and mm. I could was, I thought someone was having me on to start off with, um, and the difference in speed from, let's say, out here to right down to the back, and... It was, yeah, it was, it was real, wasn't it? It certainly was. It, it was quite hard. You always, you really had to wrap your head around it the first time uh, you heard it and you chucked bowls down on different ends of the green. But it's certainly evened out these days. So in the woman, that uh, Victoria club combination, uh, Raymond, they've kept that uh, the flag flying as so often happens, don't they, when you get a Victoria side in there, uh, gone through unbeaten. And yep. cause they'll be here tomorrow. Uh, for section play and uh, very consistent, reliable team. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I briefly passed them on their way out on my way in and they told me that they were, they were going all right and I wish them the best, they're, but they're certainly a consistent team and uh, they get along well as well, which always helps. Well, I think that's one of the flagships of Victoria, isn't it? How everyone, it's a pretty much a convivial club isn't it <laughs> it's definitely a great club to be a part of and uh, you know the men's side and the women's side are both very strong uh, without having huge numbers but um, always competitive so and Bart Robinson in, in Helensville you know one that uh, he uh, of course lined up in the single got beaten by Dean McMurchie and was supposed to be last week in Dunedin uh, but uh, the the old the, the 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 bug got him, mm. uh, but back here again now. Uh, had a very very consistent season. Did the Helensville Helensville player? Mm. Well, he always has been a very consistent player, and for a long time, um, and certainly no stranger to the indoor surfaces either. No, he's not, because he's very much part of the the PBA in uh, in in uh, in Auckland, isn't he? So. Yeah. Now, this uh, Taranaki side, you, you, well, Taranaki, you and I, it's, it's, yep. it's us, isn't it? It's us, born and bred. <laughs> what a great place to be from. Yeah, I it was for, I actually, I'm waiting to hear the results because uh, two couple playing old boys today in a, in a, a cutthroat uh, match at, at Vogeltown Park. I Amazing. happened to be in New Plymouth on Wednesday. I called in to see family uh, on, on my way down and, Went past Sanders Park and paid homage to the great blue and whites of uh, Two Copper. And yeah, so Raymond and I both. Well, I knew I would never say an ex Taranakian. That's un, um, it's uh, it's always home to me. And this this side, this Paratuti side, <clears throat> pretty well young but consistent, good side. Absolutely. Oh, they're all they're all young, but. Um in terms of playing years, they've certainly got uh, a bit of experience behind them. So uh, they're a pretty consistent outfit. Yeah, Daryl Reed, of course, has played, you know, he's played as well. Boy, in that original North-South match, of course, uh, he played. And, and Gary Murawai, former, he played at Victoria? Did, he did play for Victoria uh, for Victoria, a while, Victoria, didn't yes. he? Yeah. Uh, and, and now full-time up in the in the Wairapa at... Uh, both him and his wife are very well. They they're certainly well known in the bowling circuits down here in the lower part of the North, North Island, aren't they? Oh, are, Raymond. Absolutely. Oh, they they play a lot of bowls, and they're both very good players. Um, and uh, something to watch is this whole Martin Borough team. They they play every week on this nine eye surface. Uh, really, a lot of them are dual members. Yep. Um, so they are. They should be very used to this track. So here is on the backhand. Now I don't know very much about the the young fella Kalen Hulia, who is actually from Wanganui, isn't he? Yes, yeah, he played at the Wanganui club, and I believe he moved to 
uh, Taranaki halfway through the season this year. Oh, well, that's a pretty good opening bowl. Was Martin Burrup, if you're going to see heads like that, that's a good opening to the match for sure. And, of course, the, the Taranaki side went down, I think it was, that la was it the last of them went down to the Hawks Bay. You got the result sheet yes, there. Yes, that, that was the last game. Yeah, they got 19... 19 to 6. With Dean, Dean Drummond. It's a very good Hastings team, but that scoreline's a little bit I was uh, surprised. Uh, yeah, I was surprised at that score, Raymond. I didn't expect that, that score at all. And, of course, this here sees the finish for Dean Drummond, this event. And mm. then on the Silver Bird, off to uh, the Gold Coast. Oh, it won't be the last we hear of him. A absolutely not. I, and uh, he's teaming up, playing with uh, Crystal Eve at uh, Musgrove Hill and will uh, will be in their pennant side in the uh, Queensland Premier League. Yep. I, I really think playing in Australia is going to be amazing for Dean. He's um, you know, got an amazing delivery and being able to play against quality players every week is really going to help. Certainly will be. He's one of those... He has got a very, very good delivery. And I also think it'll be good for him to uh, to get away and play, and play on other surfaces as well, Roman, because... You know, he has spent a lot of time um, because at Hastings he's been been on the carpet. So, down, so to get up back on the, you know, those surfaces over there, which we all know, uh, yeah, they. I'm not saying they're easy surfaces, but they they give yourself a chance surfaces, aren't they? Yeah, on, on, on the speed of the greens on the Gold Coast uh, in that in that region. So, in yes. in in playing with um, playing the and of course. It'll be another Taranaki man, of course, the the the, uh, the long-standing member of of uh, Musgrove, Gary Mounsey, of course, another Taranaki man, and yes. and this week, in fact, is the um, the retirement at Musgrove Hill of another Taranaki man, an ex uh, Blackjack mm -hmm. of uh, Brian Baldwin, who uh, retires. I heard he actually had already retired. Uh, but he's making a little bit of a comeback. For well, what happened? That uh, yeah, Gary uh, was couldn't play, got injured or something, mm -hmm. and uh, he came in and played with Chris Leave and Gold Coast Piers or something. I'm not sure what it was. Yeah, they, he did come back and uh, and played. But uh, yeah, Brian is uh, giving it away at, uh, at at the drive away at Musgrove. So, so it was a great it was great timing really for Dean to be making that move over there. And uh, a good a good opportunity for him. Replace one Kiwi with another Kiwi. That's right. So Hamish Carpy, of course, formerly Sorry, mate. You know, played his ball, started his balls at Okato. Mm -hmm. So uh, a boy from out out the coast and three to Paratudu. Three to Paratudu. Well, that's a nice start to get on the second end, Roman, isn't it? Yeah, um, always good to get a number early, uh, especially when you follow it up with uh, even just scoring anything again, it always helps. Well, the thing that's become to me also so noticeable here that if you don't own that centre line, you, you, you're you going to struggle. And the no, you know, uh, I noticed in the last game we had about three ends whereby first bowled in, bang on the centre line, just you know lower the jack and... Uh, you can just about say uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that stays till the end. <laughs> yep. Uh, you'll, you will find that bowls that are close at the start are often close at the end here at Nine Eye. Um, they're not easy to move. No, they're not easy to move, are they? It's uh, And here we've got a good opening bowl here from the Paratudu man. And all these young fellas now, by the way, you know, remember this name from... Uh, your days there that, that have all now come under the tutelage of John Murder. It's, uh, so John Murder's back uh, back coaching and uh, he's uh, got a number of these young players now under his uh, his spell, I suppose you'd call it. But uh, it's one, it's great that John Murder's giving back to the, to the sport. But secondly, it's a pretty good guy to be standing there telling you what to do. Uh, you, you, you don't get much more experience in the lawn bowls game than John Murder. Um, so having him around your club for 
advice, tips, coaching, whatever he can give, you should be someone you're soaking information off. Yeah, he certainly offers, just like now, you know, in Auckland, you know, we're, we're, we're fortunate now through uh, having yeah, the, the services of uh, Leif Selby uh, on board with, with Auckland Bowls. And for those who, who watched the Champion Champion Piers last weekend down in Dunedin, if, uh, well, I'll say this, if he's available for New Zealand, he'd be in the team. <laughs> I don't think that even, we forget about trials. <laughs> well, uh, there's certainly no uh, question about the quality of a player like Leif. Um, outstanding to watch, even for someone who barely lets a bowl go these days. He, uh, he certainly, uh, yeah, he show, he's certainly a class player. And it's about what he does. And a wee bit like yourself, Raymond, whereby you do endeavour to play, I'm not going to say a flamboyant game, but and there's no need to, but it's about consistency and getting and, and, and sort of owning that metre around the head, isn't it? And and there's no doubt Leif Selby last week showed that. Yeah, very good. Uh, you know, and, and the Taranaki guys now will benefit from the likes of John Murder there. Who I and no disrespect at all to any other coaches, but we don't have many. What I would say of real coaches of the highest quality of who and and, and Leif Shelby and John Murder are two guys especially that would fall into that category, wouldn't they, Raymond? Absolutely. Uh, I think there's a big difference between experience in the game and then also being able to coach in the game. And uh, a lot of a lot of coaches around have a, a lot of experience. Um, but in terms of coaching, there is yeah, there's mate. another level, and some yeah. some do have yeah, it, like those two. Well, one of the other things, that I, John Murder was, and I remember when, when, when years ago, centuries ago, when I played in, in, in Taranaki um, under the tutelage of John Murder, the, the, the biggest thing as well that he taught to me is is how to play ahead, mm -hmm. how to read ahead, when to take a risk, Very good train when, when you know, and. Uh, uh, and and I noticed that especially as well last week with um, with uh, Leif Shelby about his shot t shot play of I'm not saying a no risk play but certainly that's what a lot of players in New Zealand as we all know Raymond no dis no disrespect to anybody but it's certainly something that, that uh, is something we need isn't it absolutely um, the ability to know uh we, we all hold a you know a bowl or a gun as such in our hand when we play, and you got to know when to pull the trigger and when to hold off. Well, the New Zealand side though is fortunate to have I'd, I'd say have fortunate to have Mike Kernan in there because Mike Kernan's another player who you would put down in the sort of well he's like a professor yeah. though. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, no, I, I think the New Zealand side's very fortunate. Not only do you have Kernan, you you've still got uh, Mr. Ballas and uh, Phil Scoglin Jr. Um, around the uh, traps as well, and can't replace that experience, can you? No, not at all. So the Taranak, I see the Hamish Carpe young child sitting there at the end of the rink, but this boy is John Murder tells me is one of the real players of the future as far as they see in. Uh, Taranaki, especially if you can get slides like that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, wide of the head, got a slight, a slight, uh, just a little slide off the bowl, turned it more than likely into three. See there in the uh, other game, uh, Bart's lead bowl that ended up nearly a front toucher, stayed there right to the end. I'm surprised Bart's leading. Oh, well, I. Well, you could say, though, in saying that, just as you rightly said, though, if you've got a very, very good lead, it's not a, it's not a bad... Oh, great bowl there from the wire Abba man. Gary Murray. So it's not a bad idea, is it, you would think, that if you've got someone who plays on the carpet a lot, which Bart certainly does, yep. uh, and is going to get you bowls on the head early in two bowl triples, well, it's not a bad... It's not a bad formula, it really, is it? No, absolutely not. Uh, you know, as long as he still has faith in his other players to play the shots when required at the back end, then absolutely. Going for that, the shot bowl. Not going to get any slides this time. The other thing which I think you can sort of fill me in on, um, 
Raymond, is that when you're playing with weight, you, I think you've got to you've got to be pretty decisive about what sort of weight you're going to use, don't you? I, I've have found here at Nine Eye that the we'll say we'll call them the ditch weight shots are not easy to play. You, you, if you take any green, it does seem to hold a little bit. Uh, but as soon as that bowl gets anywhere near the centre line, they, they do turn They away. scoop. So they do, yeah. Um, so I tend to either play with a yard, which allows it to bend. Uh, so, thank you. Just given that update on some of the scores. Well, the... Yeah, well, Elmwood Park. They've opened up three ends gone. They're leading 7-0 over... Right, and of course seven nil Elmwood Park leading over Kerry Kerry, and uh, it's Kerry Kerry needing this to qualify. Well, yeah, uh, it won't take long to get hurry up time there. If the, no. if the, because that's a very good side that Elmwood Park side with Kelvin Scott and and Ricky Cook of course and, and Glasson. That's a pretty tidy lineup, isn't Certainly it? Certainly one of the favourites when you look at the uh, names on the list. Absolutely. And Foxton Beach, who can still qualify. That's the Ross Allery side. Yeah. They're two apiece yeah, after right. three. The Wanganui the side. Now, the I, I'm going to be awfully rude here. Is this an event which Ray Park can't qualify in? Amazing. Because <laughs> he qualifies in everything. He wins, wins <laughs> a lot as well. He certainly does. So uh, up against the bowl, bowl safety inside, well, of course, they need it, as we, you said. So... It is 6-3 to the uh, Bowles Hastings side. Take, upper hut from Wellington up against Forbury Park. Forbury Park, they're out of it. And the upper hut side, they need it. And it is 7-4 to uh, upper hut after four ends. And in the game, the sure Abamoe game, who need uh, up against Ricky Cook, the, uh, sorry, the Sam Morden side who have already qualified, it is 7-5 to the Abamoe side after five ends. So... Back to the action here. And, of course, the Taranaki side, they need it. Well, as do the, well, the North Harbour side need Why, it. Waihi Beach, seems. Waihi Beach need it. That's right, you picked that out very early, didn't you? <laughs> Intellectual genius, man. Raymond. <laughs> Been doing some homework. Don't want to make any mistakes. Oh no, you're fine, mate. You're, you're <laughs> fine. You're fine. It's great to have you. Great to have you alongside you. So, and it's also it's in. You know, you see things throughout the, the split screens now as well. You know that that um, the closeness of the heads becomes very, very much. You know that, and, and I've seen sides that sort of like scattery sort of heads. Yeah, very quickly can get into trouble because you get one bowl on the head and all of a sudden you get two or three rolls out of it and you're three down. It was, and that's been, we've seen a lot of that. Yep. Uh, it's definitely, as much as the 9 eye green has improved, for some reason... Oh, great bowl there nice from... <laughs> that was the middleman for Scott McKenzie. Yep. You were saying about the, the green... Oh, I was saying, not that the green is hard, but as a skip with those last two bowls, you don't want to be having to draw to save. Well, uh, it's interesting. We had Sam Morton in here before, and it was the team, the, the sorry, the Gisborne guys, and I just it's felt when they were dragging behind, they, they had the opportunity to put pressure on by trying to play a bowl early, use weight, get a, because it does look, you know, all of a sudden you say, oh, well, I've got four feet to draw the shot in. Well, yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, that's. We know we could. Say, I'm not going to say it's easy, but yeah, some it's challenging. And I've seen and, and the learning thing. I think I've seen though so much, Raymond, is guys go down on the head and then because they're trying to dead draw to the jack. Yes. And and you're finishing up another good bowl, another toucher on that. And and because they're, they're falling that meter and a half short, and you, you've got to be to it, don't you? You can't. It's very easy to do here at 9-9 again. I think we all forget once you get into the middle and the flow of the game that the screen's 40 metres. Well, there's another point, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Once, yeah. Once you're in the flow of the game, you just go, oh, yeah, I know how far away that is from the ditch. Oh, wait, 40 metres. Just going to finish a bowl and a bit low. Will the Kalen Hilliot 
And is it, do you know much about this young guy? Is he pretty? Is he a up and coming? Kalen? Yeah. I, I know he shows a lot of potential. I think the Wanganui uh, squad had his eye on him for quite a while, but unfortunately, with his move um, going to Taranaki, uh, I, you know, I think the Taranaki team might be, you know, might have them in his sights as well. Well, I think one good thing that's happening in Taranaki is we there is a bit of a movement now of what I would call younger players. Yes. Um, and we've gone through a phase in Taranaki where uh, it's been fairly constant and of some of the, uh, I'd say, mature players. And In fact, Alan Batley uh, sent me a, a note, um, who's the Taranaki selector. Good ball here from Mural White. Yes. Right on the jack. Sitting on his own number two's bowls. So now you've got to play right through that, don't you? Yes. Yes, you do. Don't be frightened of it. Play through it. No. Really. No. No. Uh, yes, that, that would be something that I would be playing. More weight than potentially you should. Well, I, I don't think you should start looking at perhaps it's on carpet, which no. I just saw then. I'm going to get off the inside of that and get there. Um, there, there is certainly some options there, but um, I think you want to be looking at your number one option there, don't your you? Your number one option is straight at the target. Yes. And, you know, that white bowl up the front could also potentially be uh, well, a bit of luck there. Correct, because if you get the inside of that, you've got to, you haven't got that much further to move towards the jack. If you go over the inside, uh, over there, you've still got a lot further to come back to the jack, haven't no. you? It's amazing how much uh, bowls and jacks ping-pong on the indoor as well. <laughs> So, back to the mat goes the Taranaki man. Looks like he is playing his forehand. Looking well, he's going to have to see what weight he plays down through there. And playing down to get inside, inside twice. Well, that was the easiest way straight away, wasn't it? <laughs> there you go. There we go. So. Is that on target or off target? I don't know. <laughs> All I say is what we picked as the right shot resulted out to be the right shot, except it was on the other hand. But, <laughs> but, but did what it was said it was going yeah, to do anyway. Yeah. So, and, but I, well, to be fair, the uh, Taranaki boys, um, with having the indoor green at Paratutu, they'd have had, they, 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 uh, you know, uh, I know that. Uh, Aidan Zitterstein's mother is, con she runs a number, or organises a, a number of events down there, because they've got the PBA down there as well, yes, haven't they? Yep. So, so the sort of three quarter, is it three, you say three quarter green, is that what it, it is? Yeah, I'm one not way sure green. If, yes, I'm not sure if they get five or six it's ranks. Here, buddy. But, uh, it's Jack level. but they certainly make the most of it, and it is a really good facility. Um, who knows? Maybe one day they might be able to lengthen it out to a full green, and that would be great. Well, one would think at the, where the side, you think out towards the driveway there, that there'd be room, you'd think, a bit on either side to get some more get some more width. Well, depends how important that driveway is, doesn't it? Well, yes it is. Well, of course, they've got the other green up the top, of course, which they've got to, of course, have access to, don't they? So, And I see, an, I, I don't know the gentleman, but I see, the, I think he's an ex-Wellington man who's, Going up to take up the role at Bowls Taranaki. Real good way, mate. Uh, I, I, I read the other day, new appointment. News to me, Kevin. Yeah, I just picked it up the other day. Um, Still there, you need to get, get a second shot. Because as Raymond and I both know, the highlight of the year in Taranaki is in, is in January, isn't it, uh, Raymond? Uh, absolutely. One of the best tournaments in the country. Um, it's one of the first things I circle on the calendar. Right, so uh, here we go. Uh, I've got, uh, I better know who this is from. Yeah, sure. <laughs> My informant from uh, Sean Johnson, Funnel. Oh, yes. Uh, Caitlin is also a member of the Drury Hill Club. Won the Wanganui Open Tribbles with Bruce Winderboom and Fulier, his fa Very Phil, his father. And of course, his father yeah, is good. the no uh, Vice President of Bowls New Zealand. And uh, he's been playing four to five years. He's won a couple of Taranaki titles already and plays as in the PBA as well as in the Naki and goes good. Thanks very much, Funnel. <laughs> there you go. Looking that, forward to seeing him on the green at some stage again. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, well, he's, uh, 
Yeah, a good man. Let's hope he is. So, yeah, the announcement made, made this week, I think, uh, Raymond, about the Bowles Taranaki new appointment. Oh, again, so, this could be an interesting end to develop in the uh, Taranaki one. The white bowls are certainly. Uh, one on it, but the other two are beating everything else, and if this bowl isn't close, there'll be a bit of pressure on the skip. Yeah, there w certainly will, and uh, Ian Lewis, the new uh, oh, Palmerston North, my apologies. And his, his wife was a radiographer, obviously at Taranaki Base Hospital, and uh, moving back, moving back, to, moving back home. So obviously, Sean Johnson, the funnel's watching. Obviously, so he watches lots of balls. <laughs> I bet he must. That, that new place of his is looking nice. Yeah, very it? smart. Yeah, very smart. It's very, yeah, looks very smart indeed. So, it oh, looks wider out on that hand. How far is it going to come back from there for the Paratudu man? About, oh, it's in a cover spot, coming back a long way. Great long ball, mate. Well done. Great long ball. <laughs> Very good. All part of the plan. Yeah. So, why he beats versus Helensville, and it is, of course, the why he beats side who need this to qualify. That's the side skipped by Devon Brooks. From uh, the Waihe Beach. So, for those who don't know, the, the, the Waihe Beach um, club is more than likely situated in one of the most uh, idyllic spots. Uh, have you been there? To where it is at the Waihe? Well, well, I have not. Well, where it is, Raymond, is it's, it's up from, it's up on a, a, a hill as part of the RSA uh, at Waihe Beach. And looking right out, straight out over the, the sea towards Waihe, down towards the mount, around towards the, the uh, Pamanui. So it sits right in the, uh, on this little cliff, so to speak. And uh, a really lovely spot. You know, I can't say I've been out that way to the, not even uh, on a holiday without the bowls part, so... Definitely a part of the country I want to go and see. Yeah, no, they've got well, they've got some what I would, I'd call them active clubs there around the whole area now. That's increased significantly, and a lot more activity. Wonga Mata, Pawanui, and uh, regular events now on that uh, Coromandel that Coromandel area. Gone out wide here has the Taranaki man. Weight's good, locked up at two apiece. So, going for that. Well, Kitty or the bowl would give the same result here, wouldn't it, on that, for Murawai on that backhand reach? Would he, you know, his second to put another, put, put the second shot in with his last, which helps him, and now he's enabled to be able to be a little bit more attacking to this head. And he's on a pretty good line, but just going to hold, is it going to hold enough? No, it won't, but it was certainly on the line. Just really only just out of the, out of the action. Good bowls, those ones of his. The Euro, good bowls are where they're situated? Are you good bowls because they're Euro bowls? They're good bowls because they potentially came from me. Yeah. <laughs> Emma's looking at indoor bowls results over here. <laughs> Oh, big weekend in indoor bowls. Yes, yes. So, good bowl coming in here from Hamish. Going to sit. Well, good and bad. No, 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 more, the last no more bowls left. Well played. Well played. 4-2 now to the Taranaki boys. Needing this game, of course. Very well played by the skipper. Taranaki bowler of the year. Hamish. Hamish, yes. Taranaki bowler of the year, he was named. 
May I say that, you know, <laughs> uh, they've got far more serious intent, those boys on the coast, than what they had uh, when, I, <laughs> when I played and resided down there because a trip down to the coast, uh, Okado Rahutu down through there was a very, let's say, um, you, make, you had to make sure you had a driver. <laughs> I find pretty everybody. good hospitality in all those Taranaki clubs. So yeah, they certainly are. They do look after our, us guests. Three foot, mate, good start. So, good calling there. Three foot over the head was the lead there. That was Daryl Reid, the former Come around that. Navy, New Zealand Navy man. You weren't allowed that dyed colour here in the Navy, were you? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> I actually, that's actually not dyed. Is that He's real? natural blonde, yeah, yes. Yeah. Boy, that's real blonde. That <laughs> is, I know. Wow. That's, yes. That my is apologies, my apologies. <laughs> so, yes, it's the Patterson Trophy this weekend. Is that what it's called? Yes. Pat Patterson Trophy? Sure is. I've actually played in it a couple of times, like Kevin. Jen, For Wellington? Uh, Hutt Valley. Hutt Valley. There is actually no Wellington indoor zone. Really? No. So, so was there Hutt Valley? So Hutt Valley, yep. So Hutt Upper Hutt? Upper Hutt. And uh, North Wellington, which is in the Porirua area. Uh -huh. Yep. No Wellington. There was. There was a while ago. About the change of, change of millennium, change of century, I think they closed down. So are you back actively playing... Indoor bowls, or just occasionally, as you wish to, sort of thing. Uh, occasionally, yeah, I, I made a nice boy, trip back boat. to Taranaki actually last weekend. Oh, in, in one of the Wellington sides. Yes, yes, in the Hutt Valley team, we had. Oh, I'm surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I made a nice little. I, I've, I gave up for about three or four years, and uh, the Nationals were in Wellington the area for indoor this in. year, and I thought I'd just play a little Come bit on, to buddy. keep the eye and for a bit of Good. fun. Well done. Well played hey, from the uh, Scott McKean. Yeah, it was another Taranaki ball. Second shot would be, I'd say. Jack Lowe. The, it's Jack Lowe. The bowl of, of uh, the Mural White. Bill Brunenberg, I imagine, would be shot. So these guys all... So they, you, you might know this, uh, Raymond, but there's been a bit of a rejuvenation of the Martinborough Club. Yes, oh, absolutely, and it, and it has been led by Gary and, and his partner Rosanna. Um, they they live out that way, and for their first years back in, when they returned to the country, they down, mate, you stay there. they did play bowls here Come in Nine and still do yeah. continue to play interclub and stuff here. But um, they've certainly attracted a few of the Wellington contingent over that way, and, and and attracting some good players and making the most out of their new facilities has attracted the other Wairapa players to that club as well, and it's. It's been great to see. So Gary get some of that grant money. <laughs> I've got no idea. Well, you've got fingers and a lot of pies. <laughs> but he's a great for bowls, Gary. He's uh, very, very committed and uh, has done it well when he was in North Harbour as well. Did a lot for the, did a lot for the sport and uh, a nice guy. Great guy, and, and loves the game, and that's what you do when, for the game you love, don't you? you yeah, and, and, do what and you both can. Gary and his wife do, don't they? Absolutely. Don't. Oh, good pole coming in here, getting the touch. That logo on those shirts, uh, Raymond, Bowles Paratutu, has certainly been some class out of that club over the years, isn't there? There certainly has. They must be uh, reluctant to change that uniform with all the history it has. It's been that. They've had that for a long time, that particular. Uh, but, you know, if one goes back through the years and your childhood days, um, uh, look, there's been, uh, there's been some outstanding players uh, out of Taranaki. And in saying that, some pretty... Very, very high achieving uh, representative honours as well, and the old, the old Rothmans and and other events, and and present greens of which they can be proud of. Yeah, yeah, you're you're never going to complain about the greens at Paratudu. Um, best greens, some of the best greens around the country, and and always 
not sometimes, always one of the best. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, and the other good thing about, yeah, sure you go out in the country and some of the clubs that may be a bit different, but if we talk about wanting to, I would say, enjoy a bowling experience, uh, it's, in New Zealand, it's pretty hard to go past what's offered at Taranaki, isn't it? Absolutely. I, yeah, no, you, you, you're travelling out, uh, you, you know, you, you've got four days of qualifying and you're at four different clubs. Absolutely. And uh, some, you know, some are in the city and some are, some you might frequent, but some of those are on the coastal clubs and uh, ones you have to travel a little bit north for that, you know, they really look after you and it's just great to travel around and really get to see the place. They shouldn't look after you, all right, those country clubs. Okada, uh, Rahudu and Tariki, those areas, they, they certainly do look after you. Nice little pikelets at Smoko, a bit of cream and jam. Yes, that's always, yeah. They, I must admit also that when we were down there doing the commentary of the Taranaki Open fours, the, the, the uh, ladies at Paratutu always get well well looked after, as we do wherever we go, to be fair. Uh, we, we, we get looked after pretty well. Really. So, on the mat is the Paratutu skip. And playing with that weight again, trying to get down to the, going to get the front jack. Well, everything was in a straight line, I suppose you could say, Raymond, wasn't it? And what the consequence is. I don't think it's worked out for him. No, because it won't have looking there. Got one. I got a text this morning from uh, Alan Batley. From uh, Paratutu. Yes. Good and, bats. Yeah, bats. Because he's the Taranaki selector. Yes. And. Uh, Stolly, you're coming around that front hole. Oh, Gary. Hi, Hick. Keep up the good work. I'll be watching our Paratutu boys this afternoon while catching up with Chooks. Two copper old boys coming. <laughs> Hamish, now, Hamish won the Paratutu triples on his last bowl. Uh, guess who against a selector who is, <laughs> who is Alan Batley? I'm surprised you still pick him then, Bats. <laughs> Can't do that to the selector. <laughs> so, yeah, he's watching, the, watching the, this here and very keenly watching uh, uh, the, also the, uh, what's going on at Vogeltown Park where two copper are playing old boys in the uh, playoff. <laughs> In Taranaki Rugby Final. Even I played for two copper as a kid, oh, no. Kevin. <laughs> I don't think I can remember the cast iron chicken dance. You can't, I can't quite remember that one. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting though, Roman, just go about Taranaki though, that the affiliation of which the rugby clubs, rugby players and bowls, oh, uh, yes. it's really strong, isn't it? You know that? Absolutely. Um, at Victoria, we actually used to run a, a rugby day where the two of the local rugby teams, Poneki and Maris and Pats, used oh, to... Oh, Wild's um, a lot there. Yeah, they, they used to come to our club and have yeah. a bowl off against each other. Yeah. A big trophy. Uh, and it was a great day out. But we used to have, in the old days in uh, Taranaki, uh, we used to have a star two copper, uh, we, and we used to have a bowls day uh, at, at uh, Paratutu. That yep. was the, and in those days, the star base... Um, was at Waimea, where when they had the grass greens there at Waimea, uh, which they don't have, but they had, uh, they had, the, uh, and two copper uh, have always had a very close Paratutu uh, affiliation, and you know there's a number of players at both West End uh, and uh, Paratutu who have done very very well on the bowling greens, who have been part of that ex rugby uh, fraternity. Absolutely. So Elmwood Park. Making life difficult for Kerry. Kerry, remember Elmwood Park already have qualified. 16's gone and there's Elmwood Park leading 10-2, 10-2. Foxton Beach needing it also to qualify uh, up against the Tolaga Bay side, Vern Marshall side. And of course the Tolaga Bay side, they can't qualify. Good ball coming here, going to get oh, the jack. Down. No, it won't. My goodness, we've got a great head starting three. here. Uh, three. Really good head, and it's the it's the uh, Tolaga Bay boys in front after six ends yeah, four three, in the Wanganui v Hastings game. And remember, it was Wanganui who cannot qualify, 
and Hastings, Dean Drummond's side, trying to get their way through the post section play. Seven ends gone, and it is the uh, Ray Park Wanganui side uh, leading 9 6 after seven ends. Upper Hutt, of course, who can qualify as well, up against Forbury Park, who cannot qualify, and it's Forbury Park leading 8 6 after seven. 8 6 after seven. And Tamuka, who have already qualified, up against Awamahoe. And, uh, of course, Tamuka have already qualified. And their neighbours, boy, they're giving it to them right now. Seven ends gone, 12-4. There we go. So, on the head, four apiece here. What a chance, buddy. Looks like the Waihe Beach team are going to run out to a little bit of a lead here. And they're holding three on this head. Oh, this is... That might be it's, a, it's another one in there, isn't it? I believe so. No, just the three. So, what shot do you play here, Raymond? Trying to, you know, will you get enough swoop around there to get to where those, you know, with the, the right weight to get into that uh, sort of cut the shot down area? Would, I, I definitely you reckon you can. I, I, to be fair, they're, they're in a little bit of trouble there. You're probably just looking to draw as close as you can. Cause, uh, Help you, Skip. <clears throat> they could well be looking <clears throat> at four down after... This next bowl of Kalen Hulli is, but that's going to be outside. Needs to, needs to work back now. Now it's working now. Couple of rolls gets inside clear. That will count. That will count. Well, so Gary Murray really has got to follow that line really down to try and get second, and get second shot off the inside of the bowl. Well, whatever he does, he has to be brave. And uh, and I think whatever he does, he has to do it twice. And it's, it's either drawing for second... And hoping you you know you never know might get lucky and draw the shot or you yeah, you go quick now and if you're wide hopefully you clean out a few of those other white ones that count. Uh, mirror white on the mat. Playing down on that backhand line, what seems to be. Wide on the sweep, really, Raymond, isn't it? I think if he has good weight, he will get back. So, for Hamish, the, the paratuity guy, hit him, skip. I'll play around the back. Would you? I think with this bowl, I would. And uh, I, I think in my head that Gary won't be driving. But if you put a bowl next to it, trying to just count. He'll he go might for, do it he then. So my opinion would yeah, be, well. let's just chuck one around the back and make him draw. Because Gary could actually play down, oh. get that middle bowl over the head and still be three down. Oh, absolutely. You know, without, you know, uh, and only been half a bowl off target, but he could go down through the port there, get his own bowl and still be three down. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what weight... Hamish has sort of got around the back area there. Certainly not set up Gary for anything more. So now it appears as though looking for Murawai to get They've got that bolt out on the side of the rink trying to get the swoop down there to get on that backhand to get down to the... Well, tight under the head, isn't it, Raymond? I think so. Something we talked about before. If you're a few down, you don't really want to be jawing. No, that's... Another metre. <laughs> no. No, that's so. This could be a significant opening for the Taranaki boys. Going to have a look. Well, one more counts, boys. That's really all you've got to worry about, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. The way they're looking at it, I'm wondering if that wing darker bowl is, might be the third the, shot. The, the one out to the side. Because I think if they're holding four, then they must be just drawing for five. But so you're right. That may be restricting the count. So really, he, he, if if that's in the sort of count reduction, really needs two turns on that ball, wouldn't he, to clear it right out of that? Well, we don't, one roll would get, be enough to get it. Probably. Um, myself, I think I'd be looking to draw uh, just to count for three well, with a small hope that if I roll my shot bowl over once, that may move the jack. Well, if you've got, you know, four... Well, the, the fifth bowl of the Paratuti side was played to where it's... Be, where, where, You've, you've actually drawn four around the head. Opposition have got none left. 
to me, the percentage is get another ball. Back your team, get another ball on the head, which will count. You'd be happy with three starting the end. Absolutely. So here is Hamish Carpi. Needs to be inside the bowl. He's going to be sit down on the inside of this and it will certainly... Oh, that did kick it out. Well, that's kicked it out. One would think that has made a difference. Boundary. Four. Yeah, just that one roll out the back of it. Well, for the, for the Paratuti side, that's a, that's a great end for them. Absolutely. And why he beats, they'll be smiling over here now. Just got that little mini break. Yep, 10-3 there. Oh, it is yes, correct. So, yeah, it's a, there it is up on the board for the the Waihe boys. That's a big break, isn't it? It is, it's, especially when you need it. Uh, does look like Bart's got a couple on the uh, jack there from lead. This bowl might be doing something about it. It's going to get the back of the jack. Oof, no. Buddy, that's good. Four foot. Big day in New Plymouth, though. Right? Two couple playing old boys, but it's, uh, it's, it's a big day. <laughs> and because the finalist, the winner of this, through to the the final. So yeah, it is a. No, oh, that was division. No, that wasn't the main one. There's just got a note from two copper, but it wasn't. That was the the, the curtain raiser game, not the the most important game. They certainly like their uh, their club at rugby down there in uh, Taranaki, don't they, uh, Raymond? They're very very parochial. Absolutely. Down there. So, Andy balls, mate. Well done. Very good. Yeah, another good bowl from. And it's about getting that effective bowls off those first few bowls, isn't it? Really, because we've got that head's got to change up there, that paratudu. Because that was, a, it's in fact, I believe it was a four. Was four. So paratudu leading eight four. So narrow on that, trying to get back to the jack here. And it is definitely Paratuti leading in this must-win match for them, and of course, must-win match for Waihi. One down that last one, mate. You follow that down. Touch is good. Hamish gives good, clear instructions, doesn't he, of what he's uh, what he's looking for. He, uh, Hamish, actually. Surprisingly, when we played the inter centre, uh, but he he ended up skipping the pairs with a very good player, Dean Alga. Oh, very good player. And uh, it was a little bit of a surprise to see him skip, but I think uh, that little bit of experience with Dean Alga at lead really has pushed him into you know really running the head a little bit better. Well, like watching him here and listening to him here, he certainly you know uh, he's got good control over the the shot selection and. Uh, I'm not saying that he thinks about what they're going to play. And of course, wanting this game is the Paratudu side. Is the got that one? <laughs> it's fair to say Scott McKenzie didn't like that one. No. One and look now, mate. Paper two. You draw there. On the backhand, it's the young. Kaylin Julia, of course, father, the uh, vice president of Bowls New Zealand. Mm. <laughs> and I believe did some of that with um, <laughs> Kevin Glidhill, I think, did some, covered a couple of games last night. There's the, it's the Hamish Carpe. Very fixed, determined 
wasn't it really focused as Scott Ooh, McKenzie. Yes. Right, mate. Oh, he's a player who knows uh, what he wants to do and that he can do it. He's been the wire a singles player for a couple of years. Oh, he, he got that. And got the bowl around the corner. And a talented lawn bowl <laughs> was uh, Hamish Carpe. Oh. Maybe uh, Scotty should have concentrated that hard for his first bowl. Yeah, and he got a chance of a two-shot result, isn't it? Honesty's key, right? The uh, Waihee Beach team uh, have gone a little bit away with the send as they go to crossover. Yeah, they certainly have, haven't they? There's uh, one, two, three that I can... Uh, That's their closest bowl now. Yeah, there's uh, Helen's for bowls. It's uh, level low and high, aren't they? Yep. And there's all, and the and the uh, other others uh, are all outside them. So on the draw is the Paraduti skip on his forehand, trying to cut the ball back, but it's going to run wide of the target, and just pushes one of the uh, wide apple bowls, one of the. Martin Borough bowls just through the head. Potentially giving him a few more seconds there. I think that was Martin Barra's yep. second closest shot. So, here, Helensville. There's Skip. Trying to get Ricky Howe, who just joined the PBA this year. And, and, and I'm pretty sure... If he has, I know he's played in one and perhaps two of the finals there, at, uh, so he's gone, uh, gone pretty good. Must do. <laughs> so it's pretty important here for Waihee Beach. I know they've got a 10-5 lead, but they're not get a ball on the head, don't they? Other, well, here's a chance. Here's the redeemer coming. Is it? Here's the redeemer, and we'll do so. We'll do so. Go. Devon Brooks, there's Skip. Oh, he's going with determined weight down. We'll need to be pulling back now. Not going to do so. It will stay but wide. That's that wide. difficult weight. That weight. That's so you either yeah because you can see the bowl. Yeah, if you start at a fraction wide, it just seems to hold just, out. Just holds you on that line. As soon as it gets close to that center line, she really starts turning. So, can the batter do to skip? Try to get down to this counting ball with the jack literally locked on top. Need, no, always out of the hand. You can see, played with extra weight. And uh, there yeah, went by, wouldn't it? You might, you're, you're, you're one of the younger generation, right? So, What's a Starbucks? What's what's Starbucks? <laughs> uh, let's just say it's a coffee shop. I well, know it's a coffee shop, but what, what's the, is that? Must be some special thermos. Thermos. Keep it's, your coffee warm. Yep, yeah, we'll go with that. We'll run with that. Or if you're going to car, uh, Starbucks, it might be a caramel frappuccino or something like that. Oh goodness gracious me! A cup of tea. <laughs> So five qualifiers through to post-section play tomorrow in the in the women's. Another one to Martinborough, 8-5. And, of course, Paratuti just want to make sure they just keep, you know, they need it. Just want to keep their nose a couple of shots in front, don't you? That's the... Absolutely. Um, whenever you're in front, you're always looking to... If you're dropping, you're dropping a one. And if you're picking Correct. up, you're trying to hopefully pick up a two. Well, that again, I'll go back to that Piers finals uh, last weekend. And if there was ever a lesson in being able to manage that, uh, was Leif Selby. And uh, sometimes the shots that he played didn't look as though, well, he's not going to score there. Well, he didn't really want to score there. He wanted just to make sure that the opposition weren't going to have an opportunity to score more than one. And, and, uh, 
and you know you've learnt yourself obviously now as a pretty well irregular skip now that as well as playing that the shots the game management uh, is equally important isn't it absolutely absolutely um, I think uh, a lot of us younger generation are always excited to score always absolutely. wanting to score and always wanted to play the big flashy shot but um, yeah that about. can even when you get the big flashy shot sometimes it doesn't seem to work out in the end. Yep. No, it's, right and it's Good always right. about, you know, to be fair, Raymond, you've got to duly give, you know, respect to your opposition as well, don't you? They're quite capable of of uh, playing, you know, the shots that you're capable of playing. Absolutely. Uh, they may not play them with the same consistency, but but everyone's got that opportunity, haven't they? That's, uh, and that's the great lever about this sport, isn't it? That, uh, uh, yeah, it just... It is a great level up. Uh, great bulk ball here. <coughs> See, Bart has uh, drawn a toucher on the, in the Helens of Hawaii Beach game. And uh, we would see if that one, that bowl or that jack gets moved at all this end. Well, the, the Waihe side, if the, the, to see how the result goes, I think can. Uh, uh, Make sure they buy the <coughs> skipper beer for what he did uh, on the ninth, the, the previous end here, because Absolutely. that was uh, the you know, the gate was wide open, wasn't it, for the Helensville side to uh, really fight back into that game. And yep. 58 minutes to go, and you know just not, uh, ball coming in here, just oh, just falling That's under. That level, the second shot. We might be having to buy that Waihe Beach two beers after this end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I think there's new innovation now of, well, Mark's, Mark Cameron's idea, this split screen. Good so, here, buddy. It's different. I love it, to be honest, Kevin, hey, as, a, as, a, as a watcher of bowls. Um, there are often uh, parts of a game where there might be 30 seconds or a minute with not much bowls have been going. But Correct. when that happens and you've got another game to watch next to it, I think it's fantastic. It's, it's uh, non-stop action. And, uh, well, yeah, we've got to, we certainly have to give Paul Giselle, you know, under the leadership of Mark Cameron and Tamara, Big kudos because they've certainly, I think, put together a, a, a viewing platform now, which is, oh, it's, it's first class, isn't it? Yeah. There was uh, talk of if we could do it one day, it would be great to uh, to be similar to golf. And you see someone who's about to play a bowl and you move over to the rink for a live stream. But uh, this uh, split screen is very similar to that and does a great job. Yeah, it's a, I think from... I think we're the first to do it, uh, but I can guarantee in three weeks' time they'll be doing it in Australia. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. With the opening, we've got this unique, <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep, uh, I think that Waihe Beach gets a second beer after that bowl. Certainly do, and you just, well, you're not going to give it, it it's... So it's now looking far from over, let's say 56 minutes left on the clock, but Waihe Beach just got that little buffer. Gary Murawite on the mat. How's the wait for the Waihe Beach man? Trying to get down is Devin Brooks. Pretty good attempt. Given himself two seconds, so he's certainly taken away the chance for Helensville to score a number. Murawai just going to more than likely shot, I would say. It is the Jack Level Bowl. Power of duty guys conferring there. I wonder if another good thing now from, from Paratuti's point of view, uh, as a club, Raymond, you know, they went through that phase where they did have a lot of young players playing at Paratuti and then 
they moved on or other things happened. In the last few years, it's become a wee bit of the more traditional, so to speak. But now a number of the younger guys, and a lot of that is due to John Murder, uh, yes. has encouraged them to come into town and, and play. And it's fantastic now that they've got these young guys uh, out on the track representing the club. And then, of course, up at West End, they've got players like Jordan Lynn. Yes. And another, another, well, he's another coastal boy. Uh, but certainly another player with uh, you know, similar ability, very, very good player. You know, Paratudu's lived on the years of, you know, let's say the Darren Goodens and, you know, they've been, and very, very good players, Roger Hassel. And, but there's just starting to get this new influx of a few of the, the younger brigade moving into Paratudu and... Uh, Oh, the other big thing in their favour is they're playing on very good greens, aren't they? Sure are. Well, Murawai here might get, might, well, maybe the ball stood up. I thought it was going to lay down. If it wasn't the shot before, he may have turned it in. That, that's correct. Yeah, an, an indication it is. One down. So... On the draw, it's the young Paratuti skip as we finish in eight. How's the line here? How's the line to the jack? Oh, it's a great attempt, isn't it? So, another quick update. What? It's intriguing here as well, and though Raymond, it, and I don't think there was a big time difference in starting. Score that, buddy. Eleven, eight. Yeah, well, the, there was that one kill from the Paratudu skip, um, but yeah, they they are slightly falling behind the. Yeah, uh, that the they time. are, and you know, 53 on the clock. You just dropped an end. Just uh, you just need to be wary of those six. So Elmwood Park, they're really you're spoiling the opportunity for the Kerry Kerry side. Remember, in Elmwood Park, that's the uh, side skipped, of course, by Nathan Glasson and Kerry Kerry needing this game to get through. And it is Elmwood leaning and leading now by 12 to 3. So uh, pretty up and challenge there for Kerry Kerry. Foxton Beach needing it to qualify uh, up against the Tolaga Bay boys. Uh, last time we were there, it was Tolaga Bay leading 4-3. Well, it's now the Foxton Beach side, 9 ends gone, <laughs> and they're leading 9-4. In the Wanganui game, up against uh, the Dean Drummond side, well, this is anybody's now. The Hastings boys have hit the front, 10-9 after 10 ends, so anyone's game there. Upper Hutt, who need it, up against Forbury Park, and it is Forbury Park who are leading 10-8, 10-8 after 10 ends. And the Tamuka game up against Amawa. Wow. When we crossed over before, it was 12-7 uh, to the Amawa side. Now 12-10 after 10 of the 15 ends. So they're certainly not home, they're not home run yet. So back to the action here. 8-6 Paratutu leading over Martinborough and Wahi Beach leading 11-6 over Helensville. And it is Paratutu Wahi, sorry, sorry, sorry. Martinborough holding shot. The white disc on the bowl. Just sitting jack level to the bowl. I'm hoping this Wahi Beach uh, skip was thirsty because <laughs> he's in yeah you're right in trouble again uh, he's uh yeah he's <laughs> uh, i see the boss is back chris lander just ar arrived back and around the bowl it's reed good boy mate well done Oh, there's another counter, Raymond, isn't it? 11-6, <laughs> and you're right, and Devon Brooks, the skip of the Waihee beach side. 
He's earning his Pepsi Cola, isn't he? <laughs> He's got drawn the, the shot in the second shot on the previous two ends. Well, he needs to be out past the front. He that well, he's got a big ball with his next uh, one. That's what you always say. He can't do it all the time, can no. he? <laughs> yeah, he's got some work to do now. And no doubt another counter will roll its way into the head here. Kaelin Hula. Yeah. Hulia on the mat. Wanganui boy, now part of Paratudu. Needs to get down clean past this to sit Jack Level on the dead draw to give it a shot. So here is the been the wonder man so far in this game. Devin Brooks, the skip from the Waihi Beach. Well, He's out on a wider line, Raymond. He's in the area. He's in the area. How far is he going to run? Have a look at this. Devin Brooks, ladies Have and gentlemen. Have a look at this, would you? Have a look at that. And Man. he just waved to his team. Yep. <laughs> Must be time for him to say, don't do that again, please. <laughs> yep. Well, how many shots has he scored, saved in the last three ends? I don't think they'd be in the lead if he hadn't. No. Yeah, and he, yeah, his first bolt. Played a nothing ball with his first bowl and then lines up and draws to the jack or draws to the shot bowl. It's good when you save it for your last. The opposition <laughs> can't do anything about it. So, still one here yeah, to Martin Burrup. So you'll be back at the Taranaki Open this year? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the team that I'm in, we we love playing together. And so it's the same great tournament. The same lot. We'll be the same lot again here. Yeah, we'll try it. Try it one more time. So, Gary Murawai on the mat. Holding the shot. Trailing 8-6. And how far is this going to come back? We'll stay outside, working back now, but we'll stay outside. Just that touch quick and doesn't allow the bend. So is the shot for Paratiti down to the bowl? I think so, absolutely. I see no reason why you wouldn't be just trying to remove that bowl with... Well, you've, got a clear, you like. you've got a clear vision to that bowl, Roman, have you? Whereas Absolutely. On the other hand, you don't actually have a clear vision to it, but there you have got a clear vision down to the bowl. So let's see what Hamish can do. And that looks like the direction he's heading to try and get down to that shot bowl. He's playing with weight to get down to the... Shot ball might get the jack, got the jack sideways. It's another kill. It's another kill. Sorry, mate. Sorry, it's another clock on the clock, too. But there we are. Another end that's. Uh, yeah, good ball, bud. 12 6 now, Waihi Beach. And certainly getting down to the back end of the game, aren't they? And remembering, of course, that. Waihi Beach. Needing this game to They qualify. need this game. So they're not sitting in a bad position right now, are they? With, wow. Well, in saying that, one end where the skip doesn't walk on water, perhaps it might. <laughs> Could do. Could change because he, he certainly has. So on the forehand is the lead for Gary Murawai, Bill Brunenberg. And he's been around the Wairapa scene for a while, hasn't he? Well, uh, he's signed up originally here at Nainai. Oh, really? Uh, he still plays bowls here at Nainai, I believe. Well, I think he's part of the brigade that uh, Gary brought over from the Wellington area. He's played out there for two or three seasons now. Ah. Is this the guy that used to play with a hat? There was a guy that came over, he was like, had like a cowboy hat type. Oh, it's quite possible. I think he actually started at Stokes Valley originally. Ah, that's the guy. Yes, yes he did. Yes. He played two or three seasons yes. at Stokes Valley. Yes, yeah, I remember him now at Stokes Valley. Yes, he four, did. Four at Nine Eye. So the shot being drawn immediately by Daryl Reed. 
Devin Brooks is finally happy. His number two's just drawn a shot. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been player of the day, and here's Bill Brunenberg, Brunenberg coming up to draw to the lower. The jack will get shot. I right. would say. And Daryl Reed, of course, the former New Zealand Navy man. Oh, you got, mate. Come on. He had a reasonably bad uh, bike accident. Yes, he did. Daryl. Yes, he did. It's great to see him on the green again. He did. He missed most of the season. Yes, because I know when I was down at the Taranaki Open, he was... Uh, uh, yeah, he's, he, he didn't get smacked around, didn't he? And I, I don't know what you saw the other day as well. Now, I, I'm going to get his pronunciation wrong, but one of those youngsters of your era of the kiddie hooks of yesteryear, uh, Sione, um, highly profile man in the New Zealand Navy now. Yes. Uh, on uh, TV with uh, leading one of the uh, New Zealand contingent uh, to one of the... I don't want to call them war practices, but <laughs> field exercise, is that what you call it? Yeah. So, so Andy's done very well in his... Uh, well, I mean, they are both counting. So you can draw down there, mate. Even if you're playing through to here, you know, like... Yep. You split your team, might get the shot ball. Yeah, he, uh, he got sent to Duntroon. So he certainly... Uh, and, of course, he played in those Kitty Hawk days, didn't he, as well? And, uh, sure did. You might see him on the green... Another May day. do. Um, and how's the weight on the line? Yeah, just going to dip on that. Probably a good weight. The minute, uh, there's no doubt about it, uh, Raymond. The minute you, you sort of like steer the bowl under the like light of the line, on the, you, you pay, don't you? The minute you, yeah, you know, steering is the killer, isn't it? Absolutely. So, Devon Brooks with his first is short, but there's a strong chance that... No, he's not going to draw the shot he's, with this he's one. He's having a break. He's not he's needed he's this having end. a breath. He's <laughs> not needed this in. He saves his big ones. Sure does. And tip of the bowl here from the Warrapa side. Well, the, it's fair to say the Paratuti side really, uh, Raymond... The, They've got to do some yeah, scoring, three, don't you they? Because yeah. the, the Warrapa yeah. side, the Martinborough side, are just done gnawing away at them one one ones, aren't they? Yeah. They are. And while reducing is great, you can't reduce forever. So out comes one in the... It's one to Helensville. So coming oh, down, trying to get some movement, get some movement on the things here, cuts it back to... Two. two it'll be to the Martinborough side. You can see that sun now, Raymond. It sort of really roars in across the... And you can see it on the screen and out in front of us here. It certainly... So does that make any difference to the pace of the green? When it, uh, I don't believe it does. Um, and if it does, it's quite minuscule. Um, it's more the temperature drop when that sun does go away that makes more of a change. But it is, it is awkward on the eyesight, especially when the jack's in there. Yeah, so I can imagine if the jack's sitting around the edge, it just would be a wee bit deceiving. Because I can remember being here the days when the ice, literally the ice was falling off the line. It's true. Still happens. Yeah, unbelievable. Val Smith, I remember, was standing in amazement. Couldn't believe it was this. It's raining indoors. <laughs> it's raining indoors. So... On the chase, on the Martinborough side, is that Mural has got a good bowl here, though, and he's going to get... The important thing is there, though, of course, oh, that Roman, he got past the jack, didn't he? Does past it, the jack. That's the key, isn't it, getting past the jack. Didn't help uh, Hamish Carpey at all. So Hamish Carpey has to draw down that line. Now, look at that. There's the same person on two screens. <laughs> Amazing. she in two places at once? It, that's in two places at once, it is. And that'll be wide on the way back. Won't get back from there. Needs to be inside that front bowl. Yeah, this becomes a big end now. Next, a very big end for the Martinborough side and equally as big, of course, for the Paratuti side because is that three, do you think? 
I'm picking the front white ball still third shot. I think it's two. Two, okay. But a little touch of the jack, and that could be three, four. But it's certainly putting the pressure on at this stage of the game, isn't it? You know, 40 minutes on the clock, you need to, you know, it's a... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Carpe, we keep you there. <laughs> it's tough being a mum with a little one. <laughs> so, Gary Murray, he played such a good bowl with his first. He's certainly got that bowl out wider. Yes. Raymond, I think it? that's on a wide line. Yeah, that's certainly out wider at Raymond. So now, it was the last oh, thing that... Down, that mate. Got one. Hay wow. Oh, that was... <laughs> it's the last thing that Hamish Carpe wants to do is crimp that green, isn't it? Because he'll just... I think he's being asked to play with more weight to reduce. All right. So, going to play with weight down through the bowls. How much weight, we don't know, but he's going to play the reasonable amount of weight to make sure that you hold up to that line down there. So here is the young Paratudu skip, of course, needing this game to qualify. So on a fairly good line to what he was looking for, needs to get it in the meat. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. Lock. He played the shot, didn't really. He did play the shot. That was actually a good call from uh, from Kalen oh, Hulia. Two. Oh. We're, we're all locked up. Well, there's, I think, the Muya measure coming out here. So Scott McKenzie likes their back on. Oh, no. It is two. Two it is. That back one of the first bowl of Gary Murray's did count. I was wrong. But unlucky though with the drive, really, uh, wasn't he? I, I thought he, I, I thought he had the connection. Uh, I thought he had it clean and would run with his bowl would run through, but uh, just everything went sideways. The difference an inch can make. Well, it is eight all now. Eight all. Taranaki boys still got a smile on their face. That's the main thing. And in the Very nice to see Joe Edwards noting on Facebook. Wish it, want to wish our Black Jacks and Para Jacks all the best at the up and coming Commonwealth Games. Safe travels, enjoy the experience. Give it to you, give it your all, leave nothing behind. Well, you know, that's a pretty good message from someone like Joe Edwards, isn't it? To Absolutely. Your, to, to your team about to uh, embark. Then we've got Mandy Boyd, the painter here as well. She's a, She's working today. I'm actually just trying to find that two copper old boys score. Fear. <laughs> clearly very dear to your heart, Kevin. Very much so. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been a part of one, the family for a long time. And uh, great club, two copper club. Well, they're all good clubs down there. So the no result yet. Clifton playing Stratford Eltham, two copper playing New Plymouth High School Old Boys. Stay off it, mate. Come, come down there. The local Vogel Town Park boys. Is it time for Devon Brooks to shine again for Waihee Beach? Oh. <laughs> it's playing in 13. The good relief for him, he knows. We haven't got long to go. <laughs> he must be getting tired. Yeah, well, he's down again. Johnny Macbeth there. Was he going to be down in a minute? He's going to get the inside. Oh, he's got that. He's done it again. <laughs> Sign him up. Uh, I'll play there with him. There you go. He was outside the line, wasn't he? Uh, yes, there certainly wasn't going to be too... Uh, he wasn't going to go too far, but he was outside the line. The shot. Just got the right side of the bowl. Bang, here we go. Now 13-7. Draw the shot, boys. Playing for the bowl is the Helensville player. Or Jack going by, getting Jack. Jack. Kill. Not sure. I'm not sure if that stayed alive or not. Well, <laughs> well mind you, the, the, if it's been killed, the Thames Valley side... No, it is a kill. They're not going to be too concerned, really, if it's the clock's running down. 35 uh, minutes left. Oh, no, they yeah, should no, finish they their should game finish. fine. These guys won't. Well, no more kills and they should still get their last end in. Down there, mate. We're one down to that, though. 
Had it, had it. What I will say, though, um, Raymond, is that call from Hamish Carpe is getting quite consistent. About we're one down, and but in, but in, but in saying that, if you can, the Taranaki boys, if they can just get one good head together, then it all changes, doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, saying that now, the score being eight all, the same could be said for either team. That's right. So this is the afternoon gin and tonic. You get. <laughs> I've still got a game to play myself. No, it's, it's, it's water, I can assure you. I don't know if I trust the bar lady. Oh, she's fantastic. <laughs> so, the Taranaki boys down on the head again. Studying this head. He certainly is. 12 7, hey, right hey, here, beats. There's the call. Just play down to the Daryl Reed bowl, get a turn on it. Now, from playing on the carpet here, uh, Raymond, I just saw the call from Hamish to play with it like this much weight. Is that challenging? Is that. How, is that oh, I think playing with a yard is okay. I think playing with a yard here is, is, is playable. Uh, it's not... Not uh, ideal. Not perfect, but uh, no, I think it's definitely a playable weight. Yeah, personally, yeah, I've been struggling with the ditch weight, sort of your yeah, slow runners. Well, I think they, they are the hard ones to get away. But playing with a yard here to sit a bowl, a couple of rolls, move the jack a couple of feet, that is certainly possible here. Because you certainly have to have that. Well, a different to, to to get two rolls on a bowl on this surface is a different weight to what you're going to play outside, isn't it? It's a, it is. Gary Murawai, very deliberate look from the former North Harbour player. Now Warrapper getting down towards the outside of the jack and will finish. Well, it's another bowl on the head on the opposite side of the head and. I like that air of confidence there from Hamish, which is, you know, don't come down here, touch the jack, get there. Um, and he's going, at least he's going back to the mat pretty clear in his mind. He knows what he's playing. What, what he knows what he's playing, so it's not a bit of this or a bit of that. Knows exactly what he's going to play, so... Um, yeah, you like, you run, that, run the jack. Helen's will very early on in the piece running the jack, uh, running the jack. I don't think he's getting under. No, it needed to be clean under there, didn't he? Uh, goes by. Does the Helen <coughs> Helen's will run shot? That's a sign of uh, desperation now, isn't it, uh, Raymond? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, the Waihe Beach team have finally decided to help their skip and chuck some around the jack. Yeah, this becomes a pretty big end as well, big end for the Paratuti boys because, you know, this is going to say, hold on to these, it's going to see the lead change. And there comes a time in a game whereby you, you, you've just got to play a big shot. Absolutely. And, you know, as we've said, there's nothing wrong with dropping ones. But uh, eventually you've still got to pick up ones and twos yourself. That's right. Right now, for Paratuti, it's, it's a, the consistency has been about four ends, hasn't it? They've, well, they've, they've dropped five shots in the last four ends, yeah. if this doesn't change. So, so, so here is the Paratuti skip on the mat. On his forehand. He's on a different line. Is he on a different line? I don't think so. Needs to get clean inside the port. I'll He's the one what. that needs the slice. Not quite. Not quite. One to Martinborough. One to Martinborough. We've got a new leader. So, and we're at half an hour. So, well, we've got the bowl. That's probably made it tougher for himself <laughs> if he's running the jack. Correct. Well, that's interesting. Saying to the white hit to uh, Devon Brooks. This is number two, Wayne Head. Get down the back here somewhere. 
Yeah, the Helens will skip there, just taking away the shot bowl only, still leaving himself a few down with nothing next to the jack to uh, well, sight him up. Well, possibly another one down, because that's not going to the back, is it? Going to sit on that bowl or just sit by? Somewhere around the back, but counting as well. Game bowl, this one, really, isn't it? See game bear jack. Oh, no, now. Oh, been on the conservative side and endeavouring to draw. Oh, that's unfortunate. Never easy to draw after a run shot. You're right there. Yeah, yeah. Andy's up, mate. Roll your foot. So a chance here for the Waihi Beach man for Devin Brooks to draw up another shot. He's not bad, is he? Oh, he's going to be short. But how uh, far is he going to get up? That's though? good enough. How far is he getting up? That's good enough. Looking at three or four there, and that potentially is good night shaking. The yeah, yeah, there it is. So I can we can confirm to you that yeah, the way he, way he beat side that led with Terry Scully leading Wayne hit at number two, and Devon Brooks wonder man skipping. Who well, how many shots did he save in, in that uh, that period, uh, Raymond? It was big numbers, wasn't it? Oh, it was numbers, absolute numbers. So Devon Brooks who drew drew the shot on three or four occasions, and to uh, really put why he beats in a strong position. And they have run out the winners over the North Harbour Helensvale side of Bart Robinson, Ricky Howe and Kylie Clark. And that gives us now another qualifier through. And we now await the outcome here, where it is Martin Burrow leading the Paratuti side 9-8 as we play in 11 of 15 with 28 minutes sitting on the clock. On the backhand is... Scott McKenzie, very deliberate, determined player on the backhand, coming down towards the, coming to away towards the commentary position, trying to get into this, trying to sit inside the port, turns the bowl over. Still one to Paratudu, but what a great hit! What a great hit! Martin Barrett, boys. They might short. It's uh, You're just looking to draw inside into this. Yeah, very good. Not a lot of room to move, is there? Is there? So, Kaylin Julia trying to get down in that port. Is it going to get in the back of the bowl? If he gets the back of the bowl and turns it over, he makes shot of it. And that was, and of course, the predicament that the Paratuti side have got is those two bowls in behind, isn't it? So they're trying... What's the shot to play here, Raymond, to get it? Because Paratuti are going to get a result. It's a hard one. It's well, That head's so tight, but it, I think you've got to do your best to, to just draw in between the, the two Martinborough bowls on that backhand, but you're almost hoping Martinborough plays a good bowl to make you do something. Opens well, it up for you. Dig. Well, that well, what might happen here is it might open that hole and sit the bowl oh, out. Wow, that is outstanding. <laughs> but saying that, it is a great bowl, but now we know what Paratuta are doing, I reckon. You well, got speed, mate. you got to hit that bowl. They've got to kill it, didn't they? Whack, whack and whack and hope. There's no, there's no draw for one there, is there? They've got to kill it. No. So, on the drive, trying to kill this end wide. Waiting. Wide. Oh, <laughs> took one out. At one the out. Well, the, well, out of the count, but still in a good position. That big ball, isn't it? it? Kills the game, isn't it? Well, sorry, if it's not killed, Power Two do have got with 26 minutes left. They're going to be looking at uh, five behind. At, say four or five behind. So Hamish has Hamish has got a good drive on him. Well, do you think if he drives the port, literally drives that port, he's going to get the sp spill right onto the outside of that bowl? Uh, you're, abs you're just looking to whack the bowls, and where the jack ends up, it ends up anywhere is better than where it is. So where does Muraway go? Block. Possibly. How's that for a call? Possibly. 
You don't want another counter in there, do you? Certainly you don't. There's no, no absolutely, point putting another. Absolutely no point in another counter in there. Here is Muraway on the backhand. My pick is he's coming around the back. That's certainly... There is a chance that the jack could go directly back. Yeah, there, is, there is a chance in there. But yeah. Charles Strawby hit, hit it hard enough. <laughs> it could even hit that uh, bowl behind the head and bounce up. So, the grim look on the face, just remembering, of course, that we have seen another qualifier come through, and that's the Thames Valley side. The Waihi beat side, Devon Brooks, Wayne Head, and Terry Scully, they've defeated Helensville. And they're now through into post-section play. Hey, Miss Cape from Paratutu on the on the mat. And on the drive is the bit wide out. Well, one egg at left. One more bullet. He certainly threw that with some velocity. He they? lets them go. He does yeah. let them go. They go pretty quick. All right, They're usually they? a little bit more accurate than that. Yeah, well, that was really quick. two foot off target on the way. You know, when you look at the width of the head, and, and he was outside the head, wasn't he? Yes. Be interesting. It looks like uh, Gary Murawa was being called to almost disturb the head a little bit here, possibly pop the jack back a foot. Well, because they've got the ball behind anyway, haven't they? So, they do. And, and straight away you take that you take the drive out of the armory, don't you? Straight away. So let's see what Murawai does. Coming down. I wouldn't be coming down to look for too long if I was you, uh, Hamish. Just make your mind up and see what you're going to play. Can't really afford to lose ours, eh? What? <laughs> yeah. Can't afford to lose ours is the call. Yeah, why not, eh? They're only bowl on the green, I suppose, but wow. at three down. <laughs> wow. Needs to get on. If he's going to play that shot, firstly, well, there's a lot. Go to the right weight. Let's go to the right green, and he's got to get the inside of the white disc yeah, to, get, to get to Richard's second shot. Otherwise, he's going to be outside and be three down. Yeah, he's looking to get the outside of that purpley speckled bowl. And possibly fall in. So, Very hard shot. Here is the Paratuti man coming down. By goodness, he's trying hard, Raymond. He sure is. He's trying hard, just going to get oh, the outside yeah. of the bowl and still be three down. I might have reduced the front, that line of the bowl that he rolled. I'm not sure. Three, Martin, bro. Three. Oh, three. Well, so I'm going to ask you. What was the difference, really, yeah. no, on the board? It, it's a tough one. Uh, you know, I can see where he's coming from. I suppose you you back yourself to reduce on the shot that he played, but... But even to reduce, it had to be, I'm not going to say a perfect ball. But very but, close. But very close to, didn't it, no? Had he lost the confidence in a drive? Possibly after his first one, yes. After his first? I think myself, I would have been saying it's too hard to draw and I'm four down with three ends to play. If I, if I miss on the draw, I'll back my drive. Well, you could even say that he could have been fortunate enough to dislodge a couple of bowls and still have the same result. Good opening bowl here, though, from Bill Brunenberg. And yeah, that started, that's pressure right from bowl one, isn't it, Raymond? That's Absolutely. Uh, and that's certainly, you know, the... the uh, the Martinborough side have just hung in, hung in, haven't they? One, 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 and it was eight four. Yeah, so you know, uh, it's, it's it's now eight nil. Yes, isn't it? You know, so uh, that shows that they have been tenacious, that they have fought their way through, and have been you know, at this stage rewarded accordingly. And I think those boys from um, Why He Beach, well, um, you know, from Thames Valley. They just, I bet they can have a beer. They'll be, del they'll be delighted and, and to qualify as well. Uh, great achievement by the team from Waihi Beach. Oh, well, they deserve it. You play the bowls and get rewarded. Oh, there's the on. One on, one nowhere scenario. So, right, mate, get off this one. 
Yeah, Imperative here, Zane to his lead, Daryl Reed. Come on, mate, you'll get it this time. So here is Reed trying to rest that he's not going to get here, though. Last thing you want at this stage of the game, he needs. And, and there's no doubt on the carpet, uh, Raymond, that bowl, that position on the head, you're, you've got a pretty good position going forward on the head, oh, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, any bowl now that's past the jack for Martinborough is clap worthy. Because yeah, that front is certainly, and he's the hero of the day, just walking past to sit there. I might get his autograph. <laughs> Devon Brooks is the man. Well, hand you for two, mate. Watch out for them tomorrow if you play. Yeah, well, those are the ones you don't yeah, want to yeah. play, aren't they? Oh, no you way. So, Paratuti really only 20 minutes to go. Got to score. Yes, have to score. Got to score. Don't try and play under the line. We'll hang around a little bit. Just going to sit Jack Level out to the side. But again, no, I mean, the problem is where they, once they sit on that line, trying to dislodge them, move them out of their head, it's, it's very challenging, isn't it? Absolutely. It's the, be, no, it's the best bowl on the track, I reckon, to start a hit off with because everyone's scratching after that to try and get to that bowl, aren't they? Well, everyone has that debate, does it? Would you rather a front toucher or a back toucher, Kevin? Well, well, what I've noticed on the carpet in you know, the last three weeks is where that bowl now is, is to me, is uh, uh, provided you're not getting wing bowl, bowl skirting around it, uh, leave it sitting there on its own, you're not going to get near it. Mm -hmm. Also, is it important now, though, for the Paratutia side to play with some weight to get to movement to that bolt? I, I might have been saying to Kaylin, let's drive this early. We might yeah, be able to yeah, edge it off, it's, yep. or we, you put it in the ditch, and I've got two to draw close. And, and there's some room, isn't there? Yeah. Because there's no question, you can't, the chances of getting onto the top of the bowl for the jack to go back under the short bowl is your weight's got to, it's got to be pretty precise, doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Hamish now is almost committed to the drawing himself. I'm just hoping to dead draw it. Well, because his own bowl in the front there is actually his own worst enemy for that, that shot, really, isn't it? So, Gary Murray White. A very deliberate player out of the Martinborough Club. Of course, plays Wellington as well, formerly North Harbour. And he's in the wine. He's got a vineyard or something? Or? Yes, yes. He bought a property with a vineyard on it. I heard there's a vineyard in... And so, Martin Burrow is very well known for their work. Certainly are. So it's a commercial sort of great wine, whatever they call it. Great. I can't tell you to be. I, I believe it's just his and what he chooses to do with it. Whether he gets to hire people in to sort that out or does it himself. The Paratunia boys now are in big trouble, aren't they? They're in real big trouble. Yeah, unfortunately, they haven't really built this head very well. They haven't built a head for a long time, to be fair, Raymond. They've no. been, you know, you you spoke before about the number of ones that had gone on, and and really, you could say that they didn't really put pressure on the head. They didn't really put pressure on the shot opportunities, perhaps, and, and no. you know, one, 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 and uh, a couple of missed opportunities or unlucky opportunities. So here is. The Paratuti skip. Let's see what weight he's going to play here. This is dead draw. Oh, this is a hard shot. That was very smooth delivery, though. Smooth delivery out of the factory. Mine's yeah. close. Needs to come now, though. 
needs to come now and won't. Just the one though, it'll be great effort, but great um, effort. Only a foot pass. Well, we're now the, the fortunate thing is, 15 minutes to go, they're going to get to 14, aren't they? Uh, depending on how they play their heads, they could sneak the jack up on the last end. So even with four, you, you, five, you're not out of the game, are you? Oh, no. no. Well, we've you already know. seen them pick up a four in the game. Yep. So, you know, get a three, whatever, you're, you're certainly you're in it, aren't you? Absolutely. So... Quarter to five, they'll be starting to move into the bars of Wellington to move down the road to the big game. Just for all those who want to know this result, it's exceptionally important. Two Copper 37, Old Boys 23. Well done, Two Copper. And Clifton, Clifton, I think, uh, Clifton, I think we're also the winners which means the final of Taranaki Rugby will be, there we go, 34-13 yeah, to Clifton over Stratford Eltham. So the final will be between the mighty blue and whites, the Chooks and Two Copper, versus the freezing workers of Watcher at Clifton, at Clifton side. And that'll be, no doubt, a very keenly fought final. Well, when you're chasing uh, shots, you know, the, the, the uh, lead for the uh, Bill Brunenberg certainly is, is making it difficult, isn't it? To get he has been, in. absolutely. Last yeah. few ends, but Darryl's to get numbers. a good one here, though. On the backhand is... The former naval man, and it's now it's important for the Paratudu side that they're going to get some bowls. If they don't get the shot, get some bowls just in over the head to give themselves a scoring chance. On uh, or over. It, because the danger is that you try and force yourself to the dead draw and you finish a couple of feet short. Um, you're better to be a couple of feet over. Colin wins the prize again today for the hat of the day. <laughs> He's got that. <laughs> the last thing you'd you'd like being the Paratutu team is the opportunity yeah, to play a shot and finding Darryl. you have one unfortunately just in the way. That's correct. So that's why you have gotta be that mindset, isn't it, that you you're either drawing it or you just you you're through the head. You yes. Definitely this is Pretty well, this is at the point, can't be short. Come on, mate. Drawing in is the young, kind of just skip by the jack, but that's fine. Yes. That's absolutely fine. It just shows where that line is down through there. And it trails on down through there, as we just saw. So no doubt uh, Scott McKenzie will be endeavouring to cover that that trail that sits there at, mo at the moment for the Paratutu side. Don't know if he likes this one. Well, Gary Murray, well, no. Change the thing, buddy. Same ball. So here's the chance of Paratutu, isn't it? This is, the, this is when you play it right now. Yep. Don't leave it till you change over. Play it now. Three, shot, three shots to the jack. Three shots to the jack. Oh, might not get the jack, but this should Come count. On. Gets inside, is shot. Very good, buddy. That shot. Now the trail's on with comfort, isn't it? Absolutely. And potentially even being a little bit wide with the trail could land that uh, one of their counters out to move that second shot of uh, Martin Burris. <laughs> so you're right, Raymond, as well. Time they mock may not go against them. 11 minutes on the clock. Right. I've only got to deliver the jack. That's right. Last end just, to got to get it, just got to get it out of the hand. Yes, yeah, everyone's doing it. See that, Mrs. Murawai sitting there. Great follower. So here is 
Gary Murawai endeavouring to get down to that shot bowl. It's not on a bad line. Is it going to sit inside the bowls or outside? Well, good and bad. I'd be happy with it in a situation. You, you would, but I think what it does do, because remembering that, that, that uh, the advantage which Hamish has got, of course he does have two bowls, does it then make that trail that we were talking about into the... In just, he's only got to move it. No, it's only got to go a foot. And he's, he's looking at four. And, yes. and Gary muriway has got one left, so then it becomes... And that's certainly the shot you're going to be looking for, isn't it? That Absolutely. So... On the mat is the Paraturi skip, trying to get down, get some movement. On its way. I have a feeling he likes it. He's certainly stalking it down, trying to pull it back, trying to pull it back, trying to pull it back, gets the jack. Well, that's made two of it. He's kept them in for sure. So... Let's see what happens here. 13 8. Holding two. Gary Murawai. Endeavouring to draw to the head on the forehand. Gives it that real stare of the bowl under the line. So, I'm going to ask you now, Raymond. It ain't going to be over the head. So, the trail's a shot to play now. Five shots. I, I believe it's a draw. Okay, yeah, let's draw. say it's a draw, and if you've got a, the bonus is absolutely the bonus is a nine, to, a six nine inch movement of the jack. Yep, I mean potentially even sitting Gary Murray's closest bowl out might bring in one more as well. So drawing, reaching draw. So you're not deliberately playing with, let's say, super weight to get down to the jack. You're taking that as a as a bonus, but making sure that your bowl's got weight that you're going to count. Absolutely. Well, you just draw a counter here and you're two behind with two to go. How wide is that? For a draw line, that's in the area. Coming back now, needs to get in front of this bowl. Set it going out. Going to do so, set it out. Don't think that's brought another one in. But three's three, good. that's fine. So we go to 13-11, uh, as you rightly said, two behind. We've got the clock in our favour, I think, of uh, both ends being uh, this jack roll and the next one. Seven minutes 40. Should get up with the jack for the last end. Well, I'm sure it makes it those paratitia boys, especially if they're holding on this end, they'll be looking. I'm going to get this down there, boys. <laughs> Interesting here as well. Uh, I look, Raymond, is that... We've certainly gone to a longer length. But, of course, we, it's been predominantly the the Wairapa side who have had ownership of the jack the last few wins with their singles, isn't it? So certainly have. Gone right down longer to the two metre. There's this first bowl of Daryl Reed. That's, well, it's over the head right to the number. <laughs> it is this longer length that can get can get you. <laughs> get you all right. <laughs> and the, the wide upper side just got to maintain that. And as we know, Bill Brunenberg is certainly more than capable player. And he's coming down on a good line to the jack here. There's a good opening bowl. Going to finish. Well, the, the good thing is in the Paratuti side, uh, very good bowl, but it, it does give... Visibility clear to the jack, Raymond, doesn't it? It's not, yeah, it didn't cover it up. Uh, it's not closed it off. That's the big thing. Gives a clear line down to the jack. So, Daryl Reed, he's under the line here, surely, as he needs to hold up. It'll start to move now, oh, moving towards the jack. Is it going to hold up long enough? Good no, time, it mate, won't. Just sits low of it, but not far away. Score is definitely 13-11 uh, there. Oh, yeah, it's 13-11, because that's confirmed on the on the board as well. 13-11 to the uh, wide upper side. So, on the mat. He's 
Wide up, holding. Change of hand. Why? Because <laughs> there's clearly some bowls in the way, I guess. That's how they feel. Well. What's that old saying, Kevin? Change your hand at a yard? Yeah, absolutely. Stay positive down there, mate. Come under that bowl. Play to me. You're sitting the bowl through. Pull the jack. Good call. Get yeah, because there's a chance here to get into the jack. Don't be frightened of weight. Get down and give your bowl a chance to move back. To move back. And if he's got the weight. He's handy. It's not a bad line, I tell you. Now, if he gets through the port and gets back behind, good, well, mate. it's Real not good. bad. It's handy. not bad at all. Could it's have done handy. with another yard, though. Yard away, could have been. But at least the uh, Paratutu team are building ahead here. Again. They are building ahead. And... From the Paratuti side, no doubt they would uh, like to see the head altered with this next bowl. How far is this going to come back now? Because it's outside the bowl. Well, look at that swoop oh, back. That's good weight. Probably the third shot so over the mate. head as well. You can afford to be a bit more positive if you like. So here is Kaylin Julia trying to get down to the jack. Needs to get clear of this bowl. He's had the weight all right. That's going into the, into the ditch. But, you know, chance. Or if you're the Paratuti side, you say, look at the clock right. We've got to score a one and that's, you know. Any shot to score, that's, yep. Absolutely. In other words, not look for the multiple to go ahead, but just if we can get one. Yep. Skips change over. There is three minutes on the clock. And that's enough time. Oh, as long as there's nothing silly, absolutely. Yeah. And remembering very shortly at the completion of this round, you go to the Bowls New Zealand website and you'll see the qualifiers for both the men's and women's champion of champion, Somerset's champion of champion triples. And of course, <clears throat> the draw for post-section play, uh, which will get underway here tomorrow morning. And it will also tell you what that starting time is. Here's Hamish Carpet now. This isn't a bad line, is it? Needs to work now, though. Feather needs to work. Needs to work. Oh, Needs to work. That'll do for the shot. <laughs> There's one. We've got two minutes on the clock. <laughs> Don't take too long, Gary. Uh, Gary Gary would not be the, he'd be the last player, I think, of to ever do something like that. I think Scotty is telling him, still come behind. I'm still worried about the jack moving. So, here is Murawai on the mat, on the backhand. We're going to the wire here, boys. Hamish, you haven't got time to come down and have a look. Minute 30. You haven't got time to have a look. You've got to draw another. Sh what a great response here from Gary Murawai. What a great response. It's, we've just got to draw one, doesn't he? Very hard, though. He... Playing through their bowl. Don't waste too much time thinking okay. about it, Hamish. I think I'd be, I'd be throwing this bowl away. I'll just go a little bit quicker. That's all. Is that okay? I don't think you should be playing with weight, Hamish. I'll just go a little bit quicker. Okay, Hamish. We'll be quick because you got, haven't got much time left. Minute on the clock. On the back end is the Paratuti skip. Hold him one on the head. Said he's going to play with a bit more weight. Well, what's that going? No, he's walked away from it. Well, that was a poor call, really, wasn't it, Raymond? I think he was pressure-timed. Time, time pressure. Uh, good that. sportsmanship there from Gary Murawai. So give me a shot real quick. Knowing Murawai that he wants to get this end in, 
There, it's on its way. Gary Muir always delivered. Matt's going to be lifted. Let's see what happens. Paratudu holding one. Is it going to come back from there? I don't think so. Don't though. think so. There's timber in front. Trying hard. Trying hard. Not going to. Quick, boys. You've got 18. Don't muck around. D get it up. No, Martin Burroughs, fair play. Nothing uh, silly there. And we have <laughs> We're six all on. seconds. <laughs> there we go. Well, you, you said ages ago that they would get the, that they would get the jack up, and you were right within four se five seconds. That's pretty good, mate. Very good, Raymond. Here we are. Won the difference last end. So really, Hamish really, with that, I would say strangely selected <laughs> shot. He did really try his last ball away, didn't he? Because he did. Yeah, yeah. And that wasn't a bad option. Yeah. I, I do believe he was a little bit pressured by that clock running down and wasn't sure what to play. So, won the diff, and of course, the Paratuti side needing this to qualify. Could we have an extra end, Kevin? Possibly. Possibly. We had one last week, I think, in the, uh, in the, in the pairs. Well, there's the line. He's got jack level, so... Knows where he is. What time's your next cricket game, mate? Um, Six p.m., mate. Six p.m. What are we? Yeah, how are we? I know oh, it's only down the road. It's five o'clock now. Five. Oh, you Enough got a, time for a warm up, and we'll be good to go. <laughs> so, looks a good out. How far is it going to go by the jack? It's down to the centre line. We'll go past the two metre mark. Still, the jack level bowl. Will be shot. Well, we know that won't remain the shot. We you never know. <laughs> but you never we, know. You'd certainly yeah. expect not. You, you wouldn't expect it to, Raymond. No, absolutely. On the back end now is the the lead for the Paratudu Club. Just holding on, better hold themselves alive. You're only as good as your last bowl. So let's see how good his last bowl is. He's got a different line, and he's got different weight, Oof. and it's. Going past quickly on the all the way to the there, pitch, all the way. So we're playing with well, it's it's a it's a one shot game anyway, isn't it? So it is. <laughs> sure, Paratud would be hoping for a two, but I'm sure, <laughs> given the option, they'll take one right now. They'll take one right now and run the extra end. That's for sure. You know, it's a. So I'll destroy you. Don't want to be adventurous looking for numbers and finish up with nothing, do you? No, you got. At the, at the moment, we've got a situation whereby the Martin Borough side have to beat, doesn't matter where the bowl is, they've got to beat the the uh, Paratuti bowl. Absolutely. So, Kalen Hulia, well, he's out on that, I would say, generous drawing, drawing side, but how far is it going to run? Very handy. Needs to, well, right on the two metre mark. And... I don't think we've played this length, Raymond, the whole ga game, have we? Most of them have been further up. I don't think we've played to this mark. So, a very, very intent-looking Scott McKenzie on the backhand. Of course, they can't qualify the wide upper side. Is this going to come back? Coming back now. It's got dead weight. It will no, it's not going to. Well. Same ball, mate. <laughs> Room. Absolutely. Big ball here from the young Paratudu number two. Squeezing the hand. How far is this going to come back? Looks a bit on the quick side going by to me. He's added a little. Good. More options. Backus bowl. Never know. Backus bowl. Never know. So, what a great uh, way to finish this day two of the Somerset National Champion and Champion Triples here at Nine Eye. Pretty well pointed. You might have heard that through the microphone. That bowler Scott McKenzie is certainly on a different line to what those Paratutu bowls were. Making its way down towards the Jacks. Is it going to sit or go by? And a sit or go by sits on the bowl. What do we do now? Draw the shot. I think so. I think draw with your first. Didn't see what happens, room. isn't it? You're happy that you got the shot, but there's still a lot of room there. Absolutely. 
So does ha Hamish endeavour to play the open side or try and come down under the blue, which is going to sit him? I think you're trying to dead draw the shot, so I'd okay. be picking the open hand. Right, so there you hit. You've heard it from one of the best. One of the best going round. New Zealand title holder, part of the high-performance New Zealand squad and very successful PBA player. And you're right, Raymond, that uh, that is the option here for the Paratutu skip for Hamish Kapi. Trying to firstly draw the shot. Then let's see what happens. Here he is on the forehand. And I think he likes it. He liked it out of the hand. I like it on the line. I like it here. Oh, no. I like it here. Goes through the port or falls. Hang on to one, mate. Just close. <laughs> so what's the next shot? Well... That's a tough one, Kevin, because he might be trying to manufacture the two rather than the one. Correct. So let's see where this bowl of Gary Murawais goes. This will probably make his mind up, this bowl. Because he was definitely told by uh, Scott McKenzie. Oh, Gary. It's not going to come far enough, Gary, is it? No, it's not now. So what do we play now? Ugh. Do we play down, sit the bowl, get got to? I think the, the position of Gary's last bowl has probably forced him to it's reach and change hand. Close that hand off on that draw, isn't it? Yes. So down under the blue, get to the jack possibly, yep. move the jack three, sit the bowl three. Absolutely. Reach it. And even if you're a touch quicker than you want to be, you remember Kalen's last bowl is right at the back. It's there, correct. Close it's to down, the just down under the number. So there's lots of chances here for the... The, the Paratuti side who need this to stay alive for post-section play. And he wasn't far away with the draw with his first bowl, was he really? Hamish was just, well, he got one bowl, one roll too far, oh, wasn't right. it? We did hear that he won the club championship with his last bowl in got Paratuti. It, we got a text to us today So <laughs> here's the repeat. Alan Batley, are you watching? <laughs> Two copper of one, you should be happy. on the mat playing as we talked about uh, Raymond get backhand more than likely a couple of shot options deliberate on the mat former Okato player now out of Paratutu very deliberate out of the hand how tight is that line how tight is that line? Is he getting the bowl? The jack oh. got nothing. Got nothing. He was half a bowl away from two results, and they were both the perfect results. How unlucky is that? How unlucky he was. He was on line for the jack. He was on line to get in the shot bowl as well, wasn't he? Yeah, well, no, no. well, well done to the uh, the side from Martin Borough, who who. Uh, Really, they climbed back into the game, didn't they, in the mid-stages? They, 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 they were behind, they climbed away, one and one. Paratudu were struggling. The last three years, the young fellas, to me, showed their class. Uh, and really, if you think about it, we don't know, of course, what Gary Murawai would have done with his last bowl, but we nearly saw, nearly saw Hamish Carpi turn that into a... Inch either way, isn't it? Yeah, an inch either way into a winning head. So that's us for today here at the uh, Champion and Champion Tribbles, the Somerset to Champion and Champion uh, Tribbles. And just to confirm, I can tell you the qualifiers that we have got through to date is Sheldon Bagley, Halia Gore, Ricky Cook of Elmwood Park, Sam Morton of Tamuka, and really the giant killer, uh, the team, the Devon Brooks from Waihi Beach, who was uh, outstanding in his game uh, earlier on. So we know to date we've got four qualifiers. We've got five qualifiers uh, for the women. Uh, we'll be back here tomorrow morning with all the live post-section play action. If you shortly go to the Bowls New Zealand website, you'll see the full list of qualifiers and you'll see the draw for tomorrow for post-section play here in the Somerset uh, National Champion of Champion Tribbles. My thanks to Raymond Martin. been great to have you here, mate. You've been, you've been fantastic. And, and fortunately, we've got a magnificent game to, uh, to close the day out. It so was. My so uh, Thank thanks for being me. here, Raymond. And we'll be back here live tomorrow morning from uh, the club here at the 9 Nine Bowling Club at 9am tomorrow morning. This is Kevin Hicklin and Raymond Martin signing off.